Block 1, Audiobook Title, Remnants King Volume 01 to 07 Chapter, Completed, by Axe the Rat 04, Part 001, Remnants King Volume 01 to 03 Chapter, 01 to 36, by Axe the Rat 04, Prologue, About 20 Years Before Ubi Rose, Question Mark, Colon Dr. Serizawa. I must inform you that the general would like to know if you had finished your work, an Atlas soldier told the doctor. The doctor was wearing black jeans, a long sleeve white button up, with a dark brown vest over it. The man sighed and looked at the Atlas soldier at the doorway and sighed. Sir Aizawa. Unfortunately sir, I have not. However do tell Ironwood that it will be finished soon. The soldier nodded and left the doctor's lab leaving the man alone with his thoughts. Even if this is for the protection of Atlas, this weapon is too dangerous for simply defense from the Grim. It could ruin our ecosystem and destroy our world's balance, just by it being used. What the man was tasked with was to create a bomb that could eradicate all life forms within a two-mile radius. The doctor hated this. Having his intelligence be used for something so barbaric, he wanted out of this whole operation. He's been planning to leave for months now, but escaping Ittles is one thing, and escaping Ironwood is another. He grabbed a flash drive and began to download all his work from his computer to his flash drive. He took his flash drive and put it in his pocket before beginning to destroy all of his physical work and blueprints. He thus started to run out of his lab and got onto the nearest bullhead to Vale. Once he arrived at Vale he got on a cruise towards Menagerie. Currently he was on the cruise writing on his scroll confirming his plan once he arrives to the island. It's a good thing I went to medical school, the doctor thought. Once he put away his scroll and began to head to his room, the cruise began to shake. Everyone on the boat looked in horror as a sea dragon grim began to emerge by the boat. He as well as many others were frozen in place by the sheer size of the Grim. He came back to his senses when a person with a blue hood covering their body jumped into the water. Everyone ran to the edge of the boat to see the person swim deeper until everyone was blinded by a blue light. Once Sir Aizawa's vision came back what he saw changed his life. A large scaly creature emerged from the water and bit down the Grim's throat. The creature also had thereos of dorsal plates going down its back and it had a long spiky tail. Its back began to flash blue as more blinding blue light came out of the monster's mouth, and blasted the Grim. The Grim fell back and shot a yellow beam at the monster leaving a large gash on its shoulder. The monster roared in pain before grabbing the dragon Grim's jaws and began to shot a blue beam down its throat, which caused the Grim to burn from the inside out. The Grim turned into dust as the monster roared in victory. It turned its attention to the boat. Many people fearing an attack ran away. However Sir Aizawa stayed. The monster was engulfed in blue flames, before the creature began to shrink size and fell back in the boat. The hood that was on the person came off revealing just what it was. It was a female faunus, but not just any fuanus, an extremely rare breed. The Godzilla faunus. The women look up at the man, the two made eye contact. She had long like spiky hair and yellow colored eyes. As well as a long tail, she still had her dorsal plated from her Godzilla form. She tried to get up, but fell back to her knees, they both realized she still had a gash on her shoulder. Sir Aizawa, H hey hey, slow down, follow me I know where the medical supplies are. He helped the women up and began to walk to the nearest first aid kit. What's your name? Question mark Kolonuk. It's Gojin. The woman muttered. Sir Aizawa. No last name? Gojin, no. What's yours? The Godzilla Faunus asked. Ishido. Ishido Seraizawa, others just call me Dr. Seraizawa. Ishido placed Gojin down on a chair as he grabbed the first aid kit. What happened to your aura? Gojin, Godzilla Faunus tend to have weak auras, due to our high regenerating. But because I haven't been sleeping well, my regeneration has slowed down greatly. She explained. Ishido rubbed his chin before pulling out my first aid kit and placing it next to her. Ishido, I see. Alright just hold still, it may sting but this will keep the gash from bleeding anymore. He told her, the woman nodded as he began to apply the bandages around her shoulder. When he was finished the two smiled at each other before the boat continued heading to the island. The two quickly became friends. As Ishido insisted he was going be spending a few nights at an inn. Gojin practically forced him to live at her house. He takes care helps pay for everything and he could live with her. 
the two would say it's a relatively nice arrangement they have, and that Ishido would say he doesn't regret living here, especially since he has the support of the White Fang for him living here, mostly due to Gojin being a member, as he's the prime example that humans and Faunus make coexist. Over the years the two began to grow closer together. Eventually the two began dating, then the two got married. Everything is going great, as they also had a child. Gojira Seraizawa was their son's name. Due to having a baby, Gojin decided to leave the White Fang under the permission of Gira Belladonna, the current leader of the White Fang. As Ishido and Gira were good friends, it was a no-brainer he would let him leave as Gira had a child of his own with a woman named Carly, and they had a daughter named Blake. The two couples would normally set up play dates between the two children. And much like Gojin, Carly and Gira left the White Fang to focus on their child, leaving the White Fang under a new leader. Five years later, Gojira was currently six and was playing with some race cars in his room, with his dad in the kitchen washing the dishes and his mom out in the ocean hunting some fish for dinner her family. Everything was like normal until there was a knock on the door. Goji's puff. Papa, hey bud can you check the door? I'm a bit of stuck at the moment. Papa asked me. Gojira I got it. I told him as I head towards the door. I wonder if it's Blake. I opened the door to reveal two men in white fang uniforms. Hello? I said to the two as I tilted my head. Did you need anything? Question mark colon nothing. Is your father home? One of the men asked me. Gojira. Yes do you want me to call him? I asked the soldiers. Question mark colon no need. We'll leave you alone now. Have a nice night. One of the soldiers said with a smile. For some odd reason I felt like something bad was gonna happen. I should tell Papa. Papa hey Goji, who was it? Gojira. It was the White Fang Daddy. Papa's eyes widened, he ran to the door and began to lock it as well as closing all the windows. Goji. I need you to go back to your room, and call your mum. Gojira. Oh okay. I never seen Papa look so scared before. I ran to his room and used his scroll to call Mama. It took a few minutes for her answer. Mama yes honey? What is it? Did your father break something Ajahn? I swear if he did I'll wrap my tail around his throat and... Gojira. Mom, the white fang was here and dad is scared. Right. When I said that I heard the scroll fall from the other end. Just when he was gonna tell his dad, I heard glass shatter and flames roar. What's happening? I ran out of my room to see the living room in flames. Gojira Papa. The house was covered in flames. I could barely breath as the smoke would enter my lungs. Gojira, pee papa, cough papa. When I ran out, I saw papa under rubble with his back being stuck. I ran over to papa, only to get the air kicked out of me. I looked up to see a white fang soldier standing in front of me with a pistol in the man's hand. Question mark colon I'm sorry kid that you have to see this, but humans can't live here. The crazed Faunus yelled. The Faunus laughed as he pointed the gun to his father. Papa, Goji. I run, bang, Gojira pee papa, I was shaking as blood was now all over the floor, and a hole at the back of papa's head, the man pulled out a dagger and began to walk slowly towards me, however he was interrupted as a blue light was flashing through the flames, mama ran in and slammed the spikes on her tail against the and knocked the man into the fire, she grabbed me, the only family she had left as the eye into her shoulder, mama picked me up and began to run out of our house, as it was engulfed in flames. One year later, me and the mama have been wandering around Remnant. Currently the two were on a small island called Patch. At least they're arriving. Mama had taught me how to transform into my Kaiyu form, as all Kaiyu faunas speak the same language when they're in Kaiyu form. But I learned how to use my genetic abilities such as the atomic breath. And because I'm still small, I haven't unlocked my aura or semblance. So anyway we're swimming towards the shore. Gojira. Mama are we almost there? Mama, almost honey, see the shore is there, we'll be there soon. Mama told me, they kept swimming until Gojin stopped and noticed something swimming towards them. Gojira, Mama what's that? Mama, oh no. Summer Puff, Ty and I decided to take the girls to the beach, with me holding Ruby's hand, who is only five, and Ty holding Yang's, who is seven. We were walking along the shore when, Tai noticed something. Tai what the hell is that? I looked to what he was pointing at, as a large object slammed onto the ground a few yards in front of us. We ran behind the rocks away from the object. Summer. Yang watch Ruby and your father, I'm going to check what that was. I told my oldest daughter. I got out my scythe as I went to check the object, but when you went to check it out, 
There was nothing but a small crater. I looked what was inside and I saw a small boy. He had small dorsal plates going down his back, and a black lizard-like tail. What type of faunus is he? Was the only thing going through my mind. As I picked him up, I heard an earth-shattering roar. I saw a leviathan grim fighting a giant monster, but it looks nothing like a grim. I noticed something else. The dorsal plates, it's similar to the boys. I looked back at the battle. The leviathan bit onto the monster's arm. The monster used its free arm to pry open its mouth. But once it got its mouth open, the leviathan began to shoot fire from its mouth onto the monster's face. The giant lizard then began to glow blue, as it then erased what looked like blue flames at the grim, heavily injuring it. It seemed to be going well, until out of nowhere, in the clouds a green light could be seen coming closer to the two giants. Is that a bum? I quickly began to run to my family while holding the unconscious boy. I ran over to the rock and placed him in Ty's arms. Summer who is this? What's happening? He asked me. I was out of breath and simply pointed at the ocean. We walked out from behind the boulder to see the missile hit the water. The missile exploded and all we could see was a flash of green lights. Once the light cleared, the grim was nothing but dust, but the monster was roaring in pain as the water bubbled and steamed. It looked over at the boy who Ty was holding as the kid woke up. His eyes widened from what he was witnessing. The boy kicked himself off of Ty and tried to run into that water, but I used my semblance to stop him. Summer, what are you doing? Don't go in the water, I told him. Tears began to fall down the boy's face, and I was shocked from what I heard next. Question mark colon mama. Mama, he cried. I looked at the monster as it let out a pained roar before sinking in the water, with nothing but steam coming from the water, the boy kept crying as he hugged me, that, was his mother, time a skip, we all went back home, as everyone was extremely tired, we brought the boy, whose name is actually Gojira Seraizawa, because he told me that creature was actually his mother in her kaji u form, and that he had no other family left, but that's all he told us, he was just silent the whole way back, with nothing but tears coming from him. I sat him down on the couch, as Ty set the girls to bed. Summer, can we talk? I asked him as I pulled him into the kitchen. Ty, sure what is it? Summer, it's about the boy. He has no family left, that creature fighting the Grim was apparently his mother, I'm guessing it was her semblance or something. But he just witnessed his mother die in front of him, and he lost all of his family from what he told me. So, Ty, sure. My husband replied, Summer, wait what? Ty, you want to adopt him? So I'm saying sure, he's been through a lot, and I think, we could help him. So as long the girls are okay with it, he can be part of the family. He told me, I happily embraced him as I ran upstairs to ask the girls, if they're okay with it. I knocked on the door and walked in to see the girls still awake. Summer, hey girls, how would you feel about having a brother? I asked the two. Immediately Ruby ran up to me and grabbed my hand, while Yang grabbed my other. Ruby I'm having a brother. Ruby screamed. Yang, wait for real? Was all Yang could say. Summer, I was going to ask if Gojira would like to join the family, if that's okay with you? The girls don't say anything, but just give me two beaming smiles. Okay, follow me then. We walked down the stairs. As I see Gojira still sleeping, I nudged him a bit for him to stir awake. Hey Gojira? Gojira, why yes mom? Summer, you have no family left right? I asked him. As I sat next to him, the boy just gave a saddened nod. I sighed and gave him a heartfelt smile. Okay, we wanted to ask you if you would like to be part of the family. I want to adopt you, if that's fine. Gojira, I I, I don't know. I, I just miss my mommy. He curls his tail around his legs and starts to shake. Summer sits next to him and starts to rub his back as he cries mourning his mother. Summer, I won't force you. You could tell me some other time. Okay? We all just want to help you deal with this. So you can stay here as much as you like. You can leave whenever you want. Just know you'll have the Rose and Xi our long family to support you. The young boy looked at the women and began to cry again. But this time... It wasn't for anything terrible like before, these tears were of joy, he was grateful that this woman was willing to help him, so he held on tight as he hugged her, the two shared a hug that lasted for a lifetime, and this is where Gojira's story begins, Ruby Rose, it was dark and the streets were empty, a group of men were walking towards a dust shop called from dust till dawn, 
The men walk in. A red-haired man in white suit and hat approached the store owner. Crime boss, do you have any idea how hard it is to find a dust shop this late? One of the henchmen pulled out a gun and pointed it at the shop owner, causing the old man to raise his arms. Old man, please just take my arm and leave. Crime boss, SHH, calm down, we're not here for the money turns to henchmen grab the dust. The men began to steal the dust from the store. As one henchman noticed a girl and boy in the back of the store reading magazines, the henchman pulls out a red sword and began to walk towards them. Henchman, all right kids. Put your hands where I can see him. However they couldn't hear them as both of them had their headphones on. While listening to music on blast, the girl with black hair with red tops, and silver eyes as well a red hood, was listening to this will be the day while the boy with black hair and orange eyes, with black hoodies and jeans with dorsal plates sticking out his back and tail out of his pants, was listening to Emperor New Clothes. Tay girl in red is named Ruby Rose. And her brother is named Gojira Rose. Henchman. Hey, I said hands in the air, you got a death wish or something. He grabbed the two kids by the shoulders turning them around. He points to his ears signaling to take of the headphones which both of them do. Ruby, yes? Henchman, I said, put your hands in the air, now. Ruby, are you, Gojira, robbing us? Henchman, yes. Ruby slash Gojira, oh. The two teenagers narrowed their eyes at the man. Back in front of the store, the henchman from earlier crashes into the wall with a trail of blue smoke coming off from his chest. A henchman tries to attack them however he is kicked out through the window by Ruby. Gojira jumped through the window and pulled out his black katana, as Ruby pulled out her crescent rose. Crime boss, okay. Get them. The man yelled at his subordinates. One of the men goes to punch Ruby but she spins around her scythe and delivered a kick to the man's face. Whole another man swings his blade at Gojira, only to it to clash with his katana. The two swords disconnect. The man goes to swing Ajin. However Gojira ducked and slammed the henchman with his tail launching him out of the fight. Ruby on the other hand is using the sniper compartment of her crescent rose to zoom around slashing, and slamming at them with her scythe. She used her scythe to knock four of the men away. As one landed at the crime boss's feet he shook his head. Crime boss, you were worth every cent. Truly you were. He looks up at the two teens and sighed. Well Red, Spiky, I think we can all say it's been an eventful evening, and as much as I'd love to stick around. The man raises his cane for the bottom of it open up to reveal a crosshair. I'm afraid this is where we part ways. He shoots a firework-like blast from the cane, at Ruby and Gojira who quickly dodge it and the rubble. When the both get up they look around to see the man is gone. Gojira looks at the buildings to see the man climbing a ladder. He points it out to Ruby. The two were gonna chase after him until Ruby turned to the old man from the store. Ruby, is it okay we go after him? Old man, aha. Uh -huh. Gojira just rolls his eyes and chuckles at the fact his little sister had to ask. The two jump up the building, Ruby using her sniper blast, and Gojira using his tail and leg muscles. Ruby, hey, she yelled as the two corner the man. Crime boss, persistent. The two ready their weapons, before an aircraft rose behind the man. The man jumps in the aircraft. He turns around and pulls out a red crystal from his pocket. End of the line red and scaly. He throws the crystal at Ruby's feet. Gojira notices this and begins to run at Ruby. However the man pulled up his cane and fires at the crystal. Luckily Gojira made it in time to cover his sister, but when he noticed he was unharmed the two turned around to see a woman with blonde hair and green eyes holding a riding crop, as it seemed she had blocked the incoming attack the man panicked and yelled at the pilot of the aircraft, the women began to fire purple beams at the craft causing it to be pushed around in the air. Crime boss, we got a huntress, he and the pilot switch places. The huntress began to shoot ice at the aircraft before a mysterious woman, walked up to the door of the plane. The only thing noticeable is the glowing bits of gold on her dress and flames wrapped around her hands. She shot a fireball at the huntress who blocked it. However the bits of fire that hit the ground exploded causing the huntress to jump back. The huntress used the rubble to make a large spear-like object, and began to shot it at the plane. The woman on the plane however kept blocking the attacks and eventually destroyed the rubble letting them almost slip away. Ruby not wanting the bad guys to win tried to shoot the aircraft with her sniper rounds, but the women easily stopped the bullets from doing any damage. 
The ground below the three began to glow orange. Gojira notices and pushes his sister and the huntress out of the way of the blast. Once they got back up they noticed the aircraft closing and it already began to get away. Ruby, you're a huntress. Can I have your autograph? Ruby said with pleading eyes, while Gojira just face palmed. Time skip. The two were now in an integration room, with Gojira sitting next to Ruby, who looked extremely guilty, while he just played with his tail. Huntress, I hope you realize that your actions tonight will not be taken lightly. You two, you put yourselves and others in great danger. Ruby, they started it. Gojira, yeah we were just reading next thing we know, they want to rob us. Huntress, if it were up to me, you'd be sent home. With a pat on the back and a slap on the wrist. The woman slammed her riding crop onto the table scaring Ruby and Gojira. But, there is someone here who would like to meet you. The huntress stepped away revealing a man with grey hair and he had a green turtleneck with a black jacket over it. He was holding a plate of cookies in one hand, and a mug of hot chocolate in the other. Man, Ruby Rose, you have silver eyes. Ruby, um. Ruby shifted a bit in her seat. Man, and Gojira rose the last Godzilla fauness. The boy gave a similar reaction to Ruby's. Now where did you learn this? The man asked showing a clip of Ruby fighting the henchman. Who recorded that? Gojira thought. He then showed footage of Gojira using his katana against some of the henchmen. Ruby, S. Signal Academy. Gojira, homeschooled. Man, they taught you to use one of the most dangerous weapon ever designed. Ruby, well one teacher in particular. Man. I see. He placed the plate of cookies in front of Ruby, who would slowly grab one cookie, then at it, then another, then another faster than the last. Gojira, hey calm down cookie monster. Gojira chuckled causing a groan to come form Ruby. Man, and you homeschooled her? Huh? It's just that I've only seen one other scythe wielder of that skill before. Same with the katana, a dusty old crow, and ruthless raven. Ruby, mmm. Thrash mu uncle. Sorry. That's my uncle Crow, he's a teacher at Signal, I was complete garbage before he took me under his wing. And now I'm all like, hoo ooh which uh, Gojira, and that's my aunt Raven. She decided to teach me how to use the katana, since I used to be very weak, she took me under her wing as well, it was tough, but it was well worth it in the end. Man, so I've noticed. Turning back to Ruby who was still in her pose and what is an adorable girl, doing at a school designed to train warriors? Ruby, well I want to be a huntress. Man, you want to fight monsters? Ruby, yeah, I only have two more years at Signal and then I'm going to apply to Beacon. You see my bother here, and my sister are starting there this year. And they're trying to be huntsmen, and I'm trying to become a huntress cause I wanna help people. My parents always taught us to help others, so I thought, hey, I might as well make a career out of it. I mean the police are alright. But huntsmen and huntresses are just so much more romantic and exciting and really, gosh, you know. Everyone just stared at her due to the rant. Gojira was the least surprised though as he hears this every time they mention huntsman or huntress at home. But it doesn't get any less boring when you ask her due to upbeat energy. Man, do you know who I am? Ruby slash Gojira, you're Professor Ozpin. You're the headmaster of Beacon. Ozpin, hello. Ruby slash Gojira, hi. Ozpin. You want to come to my school? Ruby. More than anything. Ozpin looks at the huntress behind him, who merely scoffs. He then back to Ruby. Ozpin, well okay. The two siblings look at each other and Gojira smiles at his little sister knowing this a dream come true for her. Unknown to him, Ruby was blushing at the mere sight of Gojira smiling at her. Ever since he became part of the family she grew a small crutch towards him, due to him always helping her and protecting her through the early years of school. After all knowing the only reason he fights is to protect her and the rest of his family really makes her admire him. Time skip. Blonde girl, oh. I can't believe my baby sister is going to beacon with me. This is the best day ever. Gojira, I'm here to yang. Yang, that makes it better. Ruby, please stop. Yang, but I'm so proud of you. Ruby, really sis it was nothing. Yang, what do you mean? It was incredible. Everyone at Beacon is going to think you're the bee's knees. Gojira, yeah Ruby, what you did was amazing. If I wasn't there I feel like it would have been the exact same result, you would be here. 
You took the first action you decided to pursue the criminal because you wanted to stop the bad guys. So yes you are the bee's knees. Ruby, I don't want to be the bee's knees, okay? I don't wanna be any type of knees. I just wanna be a girl with normal knees. Yang, what's with you aren't you excited? Gojira, of course she's excited, she just got moved up two years. Quite the big jump, she didn't expect to be here yesterday morning. So I guess it might be a lot to take in. Ruby, thanks Goji but I also don't want people to think I'm special or anything. Yang, but you are special. Just then a news report began to play on a hologram, reviling the name of the criminal from last name Roman Torchic. It then cuts to a report if the White Fang. If anyone was paying attention to Gojira they would have noticed his back and eyes were dimly flashing blue out of the rage. Has he remembered his further being ruthlessly murdered in front of him? His thoughts were cut short however from a new hologram, of the Huntress from yesterday. Yang, who's that? Huntress, my name is Glinda Goodwitch. Yang, oh. Hearing this caused Gojira to giggle a bit. Goodwitch, you are among a privileged few who received the honor of being selected to attend this prestigious academy. Our world is experiencing an incredible time of peace, and as future huntsmen and huntresses it's your duty to uphold. You have demonstrated the courage needed for such a task, and now it's now our turn to provide you with the knowledge and training to protect our world. The hologram vanishes revealing a window showing the view of Vale from the inside if the bull head. Ruby, wow. Look you can see signal from up here. Ruby calls her siblings over. Yang, I guess home isn't too far after all. Yang wraps her arms around her siblings. Gojira, Beacon, Beacon is our home now. The moment was interrupted when a boy with blonde hair, ran past them to vomit. I'll go check on him real quick. I'll talk to guys later. Gojira waved to them as he walked over to the boy, the shining beacon. Gojira walked over to the boy who was currently hunched over a garbage can, and began to pat the guy's back. Gojira, hey man. You all right? Question mark colon why yeah. I'll be fine when we land thanks for asking though. What's your name? Gojira, Gojira. My name is Gojira Rose, but my friends just call me Goji, and yours? Question mark colon Johnny Ark, short sweet slip of the tongue, ladies love it. Gojira, do they? Johnny, eventually, they will. The blonde rubbed his nape nervously, the bull head began to shift, signaling it's about to land. Gojira, we're gonna land in a bit, so it's best as you just let everything out soon okay? I'll be next to you the whole time okay? Time mess skip. After the bull had landed Jane immediately threw up in a trash can that was outside of the landing area. After Johnny calmed down the two continued walking, until they heard an explosion in the distance. Johnny, what was that? Gojira, I swear to Oom, um, if Yang or Ruby broke something already. Gojira just sigh at the fact they can't go one minute without him before something bad happens. Johnny, who's Ruby and Yang? Girlfriends. Gojira, no they're my sisters. They tend to get in a lot of trouble when I'm not around so yeah. Let's just check it out. The two walked over to the source of the sound and just saw Ruby lying on the ground. Johnny, hey, I'm Johnny. Ruby, Ruby. Johnny grabbed her hand and helped her up. Gojira, hey sis, what did do now? Ruby, I just exploded. Gojira, sigh why am I not surprised? Johnny, so this is your sister? Gojira, yep. Ruby. Aren't you the guy who threw up on the ship? Tiny time skip. The trio were currently walking around campus, with the current topic being, Johnny, look all I'm saying motion sickness is much more of a problem than people let on. Ruby, sorry vomit boy was the first thing that came to mind. Johnny, oh yeah what if I called you crater face? Ruby, hey, that explosion was an accident. Johnny, well the name's Johnny Ark, short sweet, rolls of the tongue the ladies love it. Ruby. Do they? Johnny, no. Not yet. Gojira would stop this awkward conversation, but he's currently enjoy it too much, but the silence is broken when she brings up a new topic. Ruby, so I got this thing. Ruby pulls out Crescent Rose, and unfolds it, slamming the blade into the ground. Johnny, wow, is that a scythe? Ruby, it's also a customizable, high-impact velocity sniper rifle. Johnny, Gojira, it's also a gun. Johnny, oh that's cool. Ruby, so what you got? Johnny oh, I uh, got this sword. Johnny unsheathed his sword and shows it to his friends. Yeah, I got a shield too. He says turning his sheath into a white and gold shield. Ruby, oh, 
What do they do? She pressed the shield causing it to bounce around as Johnny struggles to catch it. Johnny, it gets smaller. So when I get tired carrying it, I could just put it away. Gojira, but, doesn't weigh the same? Johnny, yeah. Gojira, well anyway she's a bit of a dork when it comes to weapons. Sometimes I feel like she went a bit overboard when she made that. Johnny, wait she made that. Ruby, yell students at Signal make their own weapons didn't you make yours? Johnny, it's a hand-me-down, my great-great-grandfather used it in the Great War. Ruby, sounds more like family heirloom to me. Gojira, I like it, not many people have any appreciation for the classics these days. Johnny, yeah the classics. Anyway Goji what's your weapon? Gojira, oh yeah of course, I got this. Gojira unsheathed his katana and showed it to them. Actually Johnny, I guess I'm like you. This actually was a hand-me-down from my mother. It doesn't have any special abilities but what makes it special is what it's made of. Johnny, made of what? Gojira, first let me explain what I am. I'm a Godzilla Faunus, I have the ability to shoot what I call an atomic breath, and nuclear pulses, but one major special ability is transformation. I can't do it now as it would be too dangerous, but basically I turn into a giant monster. So most of my powers come from my genetics, I barely have an aura, and I have no semblance. But anyway my mom is similar to me. And because she can't transform all the time she needed a reliable weapon. So what's the strongest material she could use? She used her scales. She was able to get a giant scale and mold it into a blade like shape. So because it's this size I never have to worry about it breaking. Because if it could take three missiles point blank. Then I think this could kill a nurse. He explained to them. He then sheaths his sword. And puts it to his side. Johnny. Hey Goji. I actually wanted to know why did you help me back there? You know when I was sick? Everyone was just grossed out by me. Gojira, because what my dad used to say, be kind. No matter how difficult it can be, be kind. Never let anger or sadness take you and be kind. So that's what I did. I wanted to be kind and keep his mentality, so I wanted to help you. Well anyway we should head inside the speed H soiled happen soon. So where do we go Johnny? Johnny? Me? I was following Ruby. Ruby. I was following Big Bro. Gojira. Or crap baskets. The Shining Beacon too. Once the trio head inside, Yang called Ruby and Gojira over to sit down with them. Yang? So how was your time guys? Ruby, you mean when you left me? And I exploded. Yang? Yikes breakdown already? Gojira. No, she really exploded. Yang? You're kidding right? Ruby. I wish. There was girl in white. I dropped her stuff and I said sorry but, dash, question mark colon you. Ruby, a eh? Ruby jumped in the air and wrapped her arms around Gojira neck. Gojira, r, Ruby can you let go? Ruby's face turned as red as her cloak as she began to climb of Gojira. He looked at the girl who yelled at his sister. She was wearing pretty much all white, with her pale white skin, and her light blue eyes people would call her an angel, but all he could see was a shni. What's a shni doing here? Wouldn't you guys stay in Atlas? Whatever so what do you want with my sister? Shni, first off, my name is Vice Shni, heiress to the Shni Dust Company. And secondly your sister almost blew us off the campus. Yang, oh my god you really exploded. Vice, and lastly, sister? You look nothing alike, especially with some of those features. She says pointing at his tail. Gojira, I'm adopted tends to happen when dad is shot and your mum has a bomb dropped on them. And I'm aware of my odd features, but I like them a lot actually. After that Vice handed Ruby a pamphlet, and spoke so fast Gojira couldn't even understand it. Then Yang decided to step in. Yang, listen I just think we all got off the wrong foot. Why don't we all start over and try to be friends? Ruby, yeah, hi Vice I'm Ruby. Would you like to go shopping for school supplies sometime? Vice, yeah sure. We could paint our nails, and talk about cute boys, like tall dark and spiky over here. She said pointing at Gojira. Gojira, right here. Snowflake. Vice became beet red as she turned away from him. Ruby, really? Vice, no. Do you really want to make it up to me? Ruby says yes. Read this and never speak to me again. Just then they all hear a microphone turn on. As they look at the stage, they see Professor Rospin trying to get their attention. Ospin, I'll keep this brief. You have traveled here today in search of knowledge, to hone your craft and acquire new skills. And when you have finished, 
You plan to dedicate your life to the protection of the people, but I look amongst you, and all I see is wasted energy, in need of purpose. He notices all of the students whispering to each other with all of the having different reactions. You assume knowledge will free you of this, but your time at this school will prove that knowledge can only carry you so far. It is up to you to take the first step. He begins to walk off stage, as Professor Goodwitch walked to the mic. Goodwitch, you will gather in the ballroom tonight. Tomorrow your initiation begins. You are dismissed. Yang, he seemed kind of... off. Ruby. It's almost like he wasn't even there. Time Eskip Gojira was currently putting on his pajamas, which consist of shorts and now shirt revealing more scales on his side, and out away his equipment, so he could head to the ballroom and sleep. As he walked out the locker room and heard something. Question mark colon what the hell first, dogs, cats, and now bugs. Why are there so many of you freaks? Gojira goes around the corner to see a moth Fonus. She had white hair and large colorful wings. But the main thing was a guy with brown or ginger hair was pulling her wings. Seeing this angered Gojira, he walked up to man and tapped his shoulder. Question mark colon what do you want? He was cut short as he was punched in the face, sending him flying ten feet away. Gojira, leave her alone. Now leave. He ordered as his back began to flash blue. The boy crawled away from the two, leaving the two fauness alone. Gojira sighed and turned to the moth fauness. Hey. Are you okay? Moth, yeah. T thank you. The girl was a blushing mess. Gojira, my name is Gojira Rose, but just call me Goji. So, what's your name? He asked her with a smile. Moth, and Maria, nice to meet you. Gojira, do you have any idea why he was doing that? Maria, he just said I was a disgusting bug and that I shouldn't even be here. But when I told him I earned my place here. Then he started to pull my wings threatening to rip them off. Gojira. Next time I see him, I'll rip his balls off then. He grabbed the girl's hand causing her to get redder. Let's go to the ballroom, we have a big date tomorrow, right? The two began to walk towards. Back with Ruby and Yang the two were on top of their sleeping bags in their pajamas, with Yang looking at the boys in the room, and Ruby writing in her journal. Yang, it's like a big slumber party in here. Ruby. Still writing I don't think dad would approve of the boys, though. Yang, I know I do. She lets out a little purr as she sees several shirtless muscular guys. However she's completely turned off when she sees Johnny walk by wearing a bunny on Essie, waving at her, causing her to cringe. She then looks back at Ruby. So what's that? Ruby, a letter back to the gang at Signal. I promised to tell them about Beacon and how things are going. Yang, or, oh, that's so cute. However once she said that she was met with a pillow to the face. Ruby, shut up, I didn't get to take the my friends with me to school. It's weird not knowing anyone here. Yang, what about Johnny? He's nice. That's plus one friend. And 100% increase. Ruby, I'm pretty sure vice counts as a negative friend so. Back to zero. Yang, there's no such things as negative friends. You just made one friend and one enemy. She gets hit with another pillow this time looking like a dog. To the face. Look, it's only been one day, trust me. You've got friends all around you. You just haven't met them yet. Ruby then notices a girl in black, with a black bow and amber eyes, reading a book, while leaning against the wall. Ruby, that girl. Yang, you know her? Ruby, not really. She saw what happened this morning, but left before I could say anything. Yang, well, now's your chance. She grabs Ruby's arm and lifts her up. Ruby, wait. What are you doing? Blake looks over her book to see Ruby unsuccessfully struggling against Yang's grip as she leads her sister over to Blake's spot before letting go. Yang, singing hello. I believe you two may know each other. Blake tries to remember where she saw the girl from, then she remembered what happened that morning. Blake, aren't you? That girl that exploded? Ruby, ah. Uh, yeah, my name's Ruby, but you can just call me Crater. Smiles, embarrassed actually. You can just call me Ruby. Blake, she looks back in her book, clearly uninterested in the conversation. Okay, Yang, whispering to Ruby, what are you doing? Ruby, whispering back, I don't know, help me, goes back to smiling. Yang, so, what's your name? Blake, she sighs as she's distracted yet again. Blake, Yang, well, Blake, I'm Yang. Ruby's older sister. I like your bow. Blake. Irritated thanks. Yang, it goes great with your pajamas. Blake. 
Right. Yang, Ruby laughs uncomfortably nice night. Don't you think? Blake. Yes, it's lovely. Almost as lovely as this book. Ruby and Yang stand there. That I will continue to read. Ruby and Yang continue standing. As soon as you leave. Yang, turns to Ruby. Yeah, this girl's a lost cause. Ruby, to Blake what's it about? Blake, surprised huh? Ruby, your book. Does it have a name? Blake, well. I it's about a man with two souls, each fighting for control over his body. Yang, sarcastically oh, yeah. That's real lovely. Ruby. I love books. Yang and my brother used to read to me every night before bed. Stories of heroes and monsters. They're one of the reasons I want to be a huntress. Blake, laughing a little and why is that? Hoping you'll live happily ever after? Ruby, well, I'm hoping we all will. As a girl, I wanted to be just like those heroes in the books. Someone who fought for what was right, and protected people who couldn't protect themselves. Blake, that's very ambitious for a child. Her smile turns into a frown, unfortunately. The real world isn't the same as a fairy tale. Ruby, well, that's why we're here. To make it better. Yang, oh, I am so proud of my baby sister. She says, as she hugs Ruby into the air. Ruby, kicking out cut it out. The forced sisterly bonding evolves into a dust cloud of fighting limbs and flying stars. Blake, she starts laughing slightly as she watches the siblings. Well, Ruby, Yang. It's a pleasure to her. She was cut off as someone pulls the two siblings apart. Blake's eyes widened as she saw who pulled them apart. Yang, hey Ruby, I like to confirm my statement about the boys, I certainly approve. She purrs Ajin as she sees Gojira's bare chest. Ruby, hey Goji. Blake, Goji. Gojira, Yang don't tease me. You don't even bother to hide your feelings. Yang, whispering well I wouldn't have to if you weren't so dense. She said quite enough that he couldn't hear her, but Ruby definitely heard it, and grew a slight frown. Gojira. Anyway, I just want you two to meet a new friend of mine. He moves out of the way to reveal the moth fauness Maria. This is Maria, I met her on the way here. Ruby and Yang saw her and noticed how close she was holding on to Gojira and felt a tight felling in their chest. Maria, hi I, you're his stepsisters right? He told me about you guys on the way here. Ruby, yep. My name is Ruby Rose, and this here points at Yang is my big sister Yang. Yang, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Got to say I never heard of there being any moth fauness. Gojira, she's one of the rare breeds. Like the fact I'm a Godzilla fauness, and she told me that's apparently her fauness type are called Mothra fauness. Ruby, that's so cool. Oh right, Goji this is Blake. Ruby says, as she points to Blake who is still dumbstruck that. Her best friend when she was a kid is still alive. Gojira noticed that she looked to be on the verge of tears. Gojira, hey are you okay? Blake, Goji is that really you? She stands up and hugs Gojira, shocking everyone. It's me Blake, Blake Belladonna. Gojira, wait Blake, holy crap. He gives her a bear hug, it's been so long. How's your mum and dad? Ruby, ah, uh, Goji you know her? Gojira. Yeah she was a friend if mine from my old home before. Well you know. I told you about her in those stories. Blake, wait so you've been with them ever since the fire? Gojira, it's more complicated than that. I'll tell you soon. Hey Maria you wanna go to sleep? Maria, huh? Oh yeah. Gojira, alright it was nice to talk to you all, but I'm going to sleep with her to make sure nothing wrong happens. Ruby, okay good night big brother. Yang, night bro. Blake. Good night. Well, once Ajinet it was nice talking to you TW then she was interrupted Ajin as this time Vice walks up to the three. Vice, what in the world is going on over here? Don't you realize some of us are trying to sleep? Vice and Yang. They see each other oh, not you again. Ruby, SHH. Guys, she's right. People are trying to sleep. Vice, oh, now you're on my side. Ruby, I was always on your side. Yang, yeah. What's your problem with my sister? She's only trying to be nice. Vice, she's a hazard to my health. Blake, who rolls her eyes at the fight, simply closes her book, reaches over to grab her candle, and blows it out. The first step. Gojira stirred awake, as he felt something on his chest. He looked to see Maria on top of him. He smiled and pat her head. She began to wake up. Gojira, hey Maria, how'd you sleep? Maria, it was really nice thanks for asking. She then realizes she was on top of Gojira and jumped back. I'm sorry I didn't mean to be on top of you. Gojira, 
Hey cute it's fine, when you live with Yang it could be worse. Maria, worse how? Gojira, don't worry about it, come on let's get some breakfast. Maria, okay. The two headed to the cafeteria, as they grab they heard someone talking. Gojira and Maria look over to see a ginger haired girl talking to a boy with black hair, and a pink streak on his hair and clothes. Ginger, muffled through her food right. What was I thinking? But still, I hope we end up on the same team together. Slurps up the rest of her pancake. We should come up with some sort of plan, to make sure we end up on the same team together. What if we bribe the headmaster? No, that won't work. He has the school. Gojira, teams? Hey Maria? Maria? Yes Goji? Gojira, wanna be on the same team? Maria, why yes? She said a little too quickly as her cheeks were glowing red. Gojira, neat, I'm looking forward to it. Now come on I think it's best we get our equipment. The pair walk into the locker rooms, Maria told Gojira that she was going to her lockers, while he goes to change into his gear. The outfit from the picture. When he finished changing he began to walk to Ruby who was mid-conversation with Yang. Yang, oh, who knows. So, you seem awfully chipper this morning. Ruby, Yep, no more awkward small talk or getting to know you stuff. Today, I get to let my sweetheart do the talking. Strokes Crescent Rose, as she sighs happily. Yang, well, remember, Ruby, you're not the only one going through initiation. If you wanna grow up, you're gonna have to meet new people and learn to work together. Ruby, sighs in frustration you sound like dad. Shoves her weapon into the locker okay. First of all, what does meeting new people have to do with fighting? And secondly, I don't need people to help me grow up. I drink milk. Gojira, meeting new people improve social and communication skills. So on the battlefield it's much easier to communicate with your teammates. As for the milk part, I'm not complete sure if that works. Yang, yeah, plus what about when we form teams? Ruby, suddenly nervous some, I don't know, I, I'll just be on Goji's and your teams or something. Yang, Bringing her hair around her shoulder and stroking it maybe you should try being on someone else's team. Ruby, my dear sister Yang, are you implying that you do not wish to be on the same team as me? Yang, what? No. Of course I do. I just thought. I don't know. Maybe it would help you. Break out of your shell. Gojira, yeah, I'm already planning on pairing with someone I just met, and Yang tends to easily socialize with people. You on the other hand, you always stick onto me when we're around strangers. So I agree with her break out of that shell of yours. Ruby, what the? I don't need to break out of my shell. That's absolutely. Before she can finish, their attention is taken away by Johnny who seems to be complaining about something. Johnny, Ridiculous. He's suddenly walking in between the sisters, holding a map and looking lost. There's no way I put my gear in locker 636 yesterday. I would have remembered having to count that high. Why does this have to happen today? Gojira. Don't worry bud I'll help ya. Yeah. Come on. Johnny and Gojira passes Vice Shni and a woman with red hair and green eyes in Spartan armor. Vice. So, Paya, have you given any thought to whose team you'd like to be on? I'm sure everyone must be eager to unite with such a strong, well-known individual such as yourself. Paya, I'm not quite sure. I was planning on letting the chips fall where they may. Vice, well, I was thinking maybe we could be on a team together. Paya, well, that sounds grand. Vice, great. Vice then does a mischievous pose, that any stereotypical villain would do as if they were setting up a plan. Her thoughts are interrupted by Johnny who attempts to hit on her. Johnny, you know what else is great? Me. Johnny Ark, nice to meet you. And this is my pal Goji. He says pointing at Gojira who just has his arm crossed watching this. Vice. Irritated you again? Paya, hurriedly letting herself be seen nice to meet you. Johnny and Goji. Johnny, yeah, yeah. Pushes Paya aside and talks to Vice, posing slightly, while Gojira just gives her a sympathetic look so, Vice, couldn't help but overhear your fondness of my pal the other day. Vice, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Johnny, don't worry. No need to be embarrassed. So, been hearing rumors about teams. I was thinking you and me and Goji would make a good one. What do you say? Paya, getting Johnny's attention actually. I think the teams are comprised of four students each. So, Johnny, you don't say. Advances on his new target well, hot stuff. Play your cards right and maybe you could join up with the winning team. Gojira, Johnny, 
don't be rude. Sorry about that, and that's nice to know. Four people teams, you guess that would make for great combination of teams. Vice, Johnny and Gojira, is it? Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Johnny, not in the slightest, Snow Angel. Gojira, unfortunately no. Vice, this is Pyre. Pyre, hello again. Vice, Pyre graduated top of her class at Sanctum. The two boys tilt their heads in confusion. Johnny, never heard of it. Gojira, same here. Vice, scoffs she's won the Mistral Region tournaments four years in a row. A new record. Gojira, I mean that sounds impressive. Johnny, the what? Vice, she started waving her arms rapidly in anger. She's on the front of every pumpkin Pete's marshmallow flakes box. Johnny, gasping suddenly that's you? But they only do that for star athletes and cartoon characters. Gojira, I guess that sounds familiar. Paya, yeah, it was pretty cool. Sadly, the cereal isn't very good for you. Vice, so, after hearing all of this, do you really think you're in a position to ask her to be on your team? Johnny, I guess not. Sorry. Hanging his head. Paya, actually, Johnny, I think you'd make a great leader. Gojira, yeah. If you play your cards right, you could maybe be the leader of an elite team. Johnny, immediately brightening back up to, stop it. Vice, seriously, please stop it. This kind of behavior should not be encouraged. Johnny, sounds like Goji and Byers on board for Team Johnny. Spots are filling up quick. Now, I'm not supposed to do this, but maybe I could pull some strings, find a place for you. What do you say, Gojira? Actually, not to sound rude, but I already promised to be in the same team as someone else. But I wouldn't deny it sounds interesting. Vice. Alright. That's a bit too close. Pyre, a little help, please. Johnny looks back just in time to see Fire's spear strike him, sending him flying into a locker. Pyre, I'm sorry. Gojira. Don't worry Fire, it was completely called for. He a bit more forward than I expected. Fire, thanks. Gojira. Gojira, just Goji. That's what my friends call me. An announcement plays on the intercom system. Glinda, voice only. Would all first year students please report to Beacon Cliff for initiation? Again, all first year students report to Beacon Cliff immediately. Vice passes Journey as he hangs from the wall of a locker on her way out. Pyre follows her, grabbing her spear and dropping Journey to the ground. Pyre, it was nice meeting you too. Gojira, right back at you P. Journey slumping against the locker likewise. Ruby and Yang approach the two boys, and Yang giggles a bit at Johnny's trouble. Yang, having some trouble there, Lady Killer. Johnny, I don't understand. My dad said all women look for his confidence. Where did I go wrong? He accepts Ruby's offered hand and uses her to lift himself back up. Gojira, Snow Angel probably wasn't the best start. Ruby, come on, Johnny. Let's go. Ruby leads Johnny out of the locker room by supporting him and his damaged self-esteem. Small time skip. Everyone was now at a cliff above Emerald Forest. Maria was standing at the beginning of the line, with Gojira right next to him. Maria, are you ready? Ozpin, for years, you have trained to become warriors, and today, your abilities will be evaluated in the Emerald Forest. Goodwitch, now, I'm sure many of you have heard rumors about the assignment of teams. Well. Allow us to put an end to your confusion. Each of you will be given teammates. Today. Ruby. What? Oh. Ozpin. These teammates will be with you for the rest of your time here at Beacon. So it is in your best interest to be paired with someone with whom you can work well. Ruby. Groaning. Ozpin. That being said, the first person you make eye contact with after landing will be your partner for the next four years. Gojira looked over to see Ruby's with a shocked expression. It seemed that her whole world had shattered. Ruby, what? Ginger girl, to the boy see? I told you. Ozpin, after you've partnered up, make your way to the northern end of the forest. You will meet opposition along the way. Do not hesitate to destroy everything in your path. Or you will die. Johnny laughs nervously and then gulps loudly. Ozpin, you will be monitored and graded through the duration of your initiation, but our instructors will not intervene. You will find an abandoned temple at the end of the path containing several relics. Each pair must choose one and return to the top of the cliff. We will regard that item, as well as your standing, and grade you appropriately. Are there any questions? Johnny, raising his hand yeah, um, sir? Ozpin, good. Now, 
Take your positions. Everyone strikes a pose on their tile. Nora crouches low, Ren wields his weapons. Yang raises her fists, Ruby readies her body, and Johnny is still raising his hand. Maria spread her wings and pulled out two twin daggers. She turned to Gojira and gave him a sweet smile. Maria, I'll see you down there. She said as she was launched off the cliff she glided down. Gojira smiled at her, as he was launched off as well. He unsheathed his katana, as he got into the tree line. He stabbed his sword into the tree and began to slide down the tree, causing the tree to fall apart in two. Gojira, okay. Who do I know? Fears Maria who I promised. Fears Blake my childhood friend. Johnny. Then my sisters Ruby and Yang. So far I seem to have a good collection of options, he whispered. As he walked through the forest he heard wood snap behind him. He raised his katana and got in stance. Who was there? The Emerald Forest. Gojira, who's there? Just then a red dot appeared in the bushes. A Ursa jumped out of the bushes, and bit his arm, shattering his aura dot. The Grim had a tight grip, and began to draw blood from Gojira's arm. He planted his foot against the Grim's chest and kicked it off. His regeneration began to kick in and healed his wounds. He ran to the Grim and swung his blade at the Grim's head. The wing shattered its head and it immediately turned into dust. He took a deep breath and began to walk away, until he turned around to see six more pair of red eyes. He sighed and took stance Ajin as the Ursa pack rushed at him. He was able to get two clean hits eliminating one third of the Grims. However, one of the Ursas attacked his side causing him to be knocked into a tree. He used his katana to pull himself up. He regained his breath and rushed at a Ursa and slashed at its throat, decapitating it. Another Ursa roared at him. It began to run at him. But as it ran, the Ursa's back was hit by Gojira's tail knocking it down, before Gojira jumping onto its back and stabbing its nape. He rushed at the last two, he knocked one down by kicking the bottom of its chin. He used his tail to launch himself at the other Ursa and punching the Ursa straight in the face shattering its mask-like face. Before it could completely dissolve he ripped of its arm, and stabbed its claws into the last Ursa's throat. He took a deep breath before continuing his search for a partner. After a few minutes of wondering he couldn't find anything. Until while he was walking he heard a nearby bush shaking. He traced the bush and readied his katana. A bowwuff jumped out and was about to strike him until a scythe was thrown at the Grim impaling it. The Grim roared in pain as it tried to pull the scythe out. The scythe had a glowing red blade, and a black base. A woman with black hair and red streaks walked out. Sully focused on the soon-to-be-dead Grim. She had a black jacket and a white tank top, with bandages wrapped around her stomach. However the two most notable things about her are her red eyes, and her long red gloves. She grabbed the scythe and pulled it out of the Grim's chest. As the Grim fell forward she flipped her weapon transforming it into a handgun, and unloaded a bullet into its head. As the Grim dissolved in front of her she noticed Gojira and immediately pointed her gun at him. Gojira, wow wow. Calm down, there's no need for us to fight, we're partners now. My name is Gojira Rose. What's yours? The girl eyed him, still pointing her gun at him. She slowly put her gun down with hesitation, but ultimately put it in her holster. She sighed and crossed her arms. Question mark colon Mia, my name is Mia Spirit. Sorry if about that earlier, can never be too careful. Gojira, nice to meet you Mia, do you know which way to the relics? Mia, if I recall. The headmaster said something about them being up north. I was able to see it when I was launched, so let's go this way. Gojira and Mia continued walking north until they heard what sounded like a girl's scream. The two looked at each other before nodding to each other and head towards the sound weapons ready. They kept running until Gojira slammed into something and fell down. Mia stopped as she noticed her partner hit something, or well someone. Gojira looked to see what he hit as he saw Maria sitting on the ground rubbing her head. Gojira, ah. Oh crap, sorry Maria I didn't see you there. Maria, it's okay Goji. It was kinda my fault to I heard someone scream and instinctively ran away. The Mothra Faunus gave the Godzilla Faunus an apologetic smile. Mia, Gojira? Who's this? Mia asked her partner, as she eyed the white-haired girl. Gojira, she's a friend of mine. I met her yesterday caught some chbags pulling her wings. We promised to be each other's partners, but I landed a bit farther away than I expected. Speaking of partners, Maria this is Mia. She saved me from a bowwuff that tried to ambush me. Maria dusted herself off, and walked over to Mia to greet her. 
However she froze as she realized that she was much taller than her, as she is 5 feet 5 inches and Mia was 6 feet 3 inches, all while Gojira is 6 feet 5 inches, not only that Mia seemed to have a more mature figure, which just resulted in Maria puffing her cheeks. Mia, is she okay? Gojira, I don't know. Hey Maria I forgot to ask have you found a partner yet? Maria, a partner? Question mark colon there you are. A girl walked through the bushes she walked out with a black and golden cloak and dress, she has bright golden hair similar to Yang's, but she had dark golden almost brown eyes, you shouldn't have run out like that, you dropped one of your knives as well. We're supposed to be partners okay? Maria, sorry Anna, I panicked it won't happen Ajin. Oh Anna this is Gojira the boy I was telling you about, and this is his partner Mia. Anna, I see. She walks up to Gojira and puts her hand out in front of her. Thank you for helping her, she told me how you two met. Turns to Mia and of course it's nice to meet you I look forward with working with you. Gojira slash Mia. You two exclamation mark slash likewise. Gojira. Well I guess we should all head to the relics together. Mia, then let's get walking. Anna, there is actually no need for that. Everyone looks at her confused. GMM. What? Anna, no need. We can use my semblance. She pulled out a golden fan from up her sleeve and when she swung it, a black hole with a golden outline opened. It was warping and waving as if it was water. Anna, my semblance is called Goddess of the Void with it I can create many black holes and even portals. I wanted to find a team before we head to the relics. So now let's not waste any more time. Follow me. She says, as she grabs Gojira's hand and pulls him through the portal. Mariah is hesitant but soon follows behind, while Mia just sighs and walks in as well. Flashback 10 minutes. Yang and Blake have found each other, and grabbed the Black Knight relic, while the plan to look for another group, they hear that same girly scream from before. Yang, Blake, did you hear that? What should we do? Ruby, falling out of the sky somehow heads you 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 uh, uh, up. Just as she's about to hit the ground panicking, Johnny Ark comes flying through the air and crashes into Ruby, knocking her off course and sending them both into a tree to the left of where Blake and Yang are standing. Ruby is dazed by the rough landing. Ruby, ooh, what was that? The dizziness passes when she shakes her head. Johnny, ahem. Ruby looks up to see Johnny hanging upside down in a tree branch above her. Hey, Ruby, Blake, did your sister just fall from the sky? Yang, I. Before she can continue. Several crashing noises are heard in the forest ahead of them, and a nurse comes out, claws swiping, just as a pink blast of energy hits it in the back and it crashes to the ground, depositing its rider. Question mark colon ye -e -ho. A girl rolls off of the creature's back, then gets up and groans, saddened, or it's broken. She dashes onto its neck and observes the carcass as a boy comes up behind her. Question mark colon panting and leaning on the monster Nora. Please. Don't ever do that again. He looks up again and notices by the pink dotted outline of where his partner should be that Nora has run off again, and looks around frantically. Nora, now in the temple, staring at a golden rook relic, ooh. She suddenly grabs it, she begins to dance and sing with a chess piece, I'm queen of the castle. I'm queen of the castle. Boy, Nora. Nora, she stops dancing with the rook on her head, then salutes dropping the relic into her hand, coming, Ren, skips off to her friend, Blake, did that girl just ride in on an Ursa, Yang, I, she is interrupted once more as a screech is heard from their right, and Pia Nikos comes onto the scene as a scorpion creature uproots entire trees in its chase after her, Pia narrowly dodges its giant claws and keeps on running, Pia, Johnny, she calls for her partner as the last time she saw him, was him being thrown into the forest by the scorpion. Johnny, Pyre, Ruby, whoa. She says looking at the monster from the tree. She starts running off of the branch and landing in a roll. Johnny, whining Ruby. Yang, as Ruby stands up, back on the ground, her sister calls her as well. Ruby, Ruby, excited Yang, raises her arms as if to give her sister a hug. Nora, Nora, Nora tells, as she comes between the two and knocking them off balance in surprise. The scorpion Grim continues to follow Pia as she runs. Blake, did she just run all the way here with a death stalker on her tail? Yang, she starts getting angrier until she growls and erupts in a small burst of fire, eyes flashing red. I can't take it anymore. 
Can everyone just chill out for two seconds before something crazy happens again? The tick-tock of a clock counts down the two seconds of Yang cooling down, Ren running over to a ditzy Nora, and Blake and Ruby looking up. Ruby, um, Yang tugs on her sister's sleeve and points up above. Vice is revealed to be hanging on a talon the size of her entire body that belongs to a gigantic Nevermore. Vice, calling down to Ruby how could you leave me? Ruby, shouting up at Vice I said jump. Blake, she's gonna fall. Ruby, she'll be fine. Ren, she's falling. Johnny is finally out of the tree, panting until he looks up and grins at the sight of Vice falling through the air giving him the opportunity to jump off the branch with arms outstretched and catch her in a slow down moment. Johnny, just. Dropping in. Vice is speechless. And Johnny realizes why when they both look down, the two began to fall straight down with Johnny does a face plant into the dirt, limbs played out, and serves as the perfect landing spot for Vice as she falls into a seated position on his body. Vice, my hero. Johnny, my back. The Death Stalker is still hunting Pyre, but she manages to land on her side at the feet of the heroes. Yang, great. The gang's all here. Now we can die together. Ruby, not if I can help it. Yang, Ruby, wait. Ruby, still screaming, fires Crescent Rose and charges at the oncoming Death Stalker. When the two meet, the Grim swipes Ruby away and she is knocked back. Ruby, Gets up slowly Dido don't worry. Totally fine. Ruby turns back to the monster and shoots it in the skull, running away from it and sheathing her scythe as the death stalker now goes after her. Yang, Ruby. Ruby rushes towards Yang, but the Nevermore calls above them, flapping its wings and releasing lines of sharpened feathers with points that catch on Ruby's gape and prevent Yang from reaching her. Yang, Ruby, get out of there. Ruby, struggling with the cloak I'm trying. The Death Stalker approaches, raising its golden stinger above a scared Ruby and heading down on a helpless girl. Yang, Ruby. A white blur races past Yang and reaches the stinger just as it's about to pierce her, cutting the scene to black. Vice, you are so childish. Ruby opens her eyes to the sight of the stinger encased in ice and lowers her arms from their futile position over her head as she stares at her savior. Ruby. Vice. Vice. She continues to berate Ruby as she removes Mittnaster from the ice, and dim-witted, and hyperactive, and don't even get me started on your fighting style, and I suppose I can be a bit... difficult. But if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do this together. So if you quit trying to show off, I'll be... nicer. Ruby, I'm not trying to show off. I want you to know I can do this. Vice, you're fine. Ruby, she breathes a sigh of relief then closes her eyes and clasps her hands as she gratefully whispers normal knees. She gets up and stares at the Death Stalker as it struggles to escape with its tail trapped in the ice. Whoa. Yang rushes up to Ruby and gives her a hug, which Ruby grunts at upon receiving. Yang, so happy you're okay. The two stare at each other for a moment, then look up at the Nevermore still flying overhead and roaring. Johnny, guys, that thing's circling back. What are we gonna do? Vice. Look, there's no sense in dilly-dallying. Our objective is right in front of us. They all stare at the relics. Ruby, she's right. Our mission is to grab an artifact and make it back to the cliffs. Nods to Vice there's no point in fighting these things. Johnny, run and live. That's an idea I can get behind. Ruby goes over and grabs a gold knight and Johnny takes hold of a gold rook smiling at each other. The Death Stalker continues to fight its bonds shattering the ice. Everyone's eyes widened as it came dashing towards the group. They all got in stance until it froze in place, although not by ice. As for some reason there are three black holes above the scorpion grim. The group hears a voice say something. Anna, I forgot to mention. These black holes also can summon the void dragon to do my bidding. However you cannot see them unless you want to. Everyone turns to see Gojira, a woman in gold, a girl in black and a Mothrafaunus standing in front of a portal which quickly closes behind them. Gojira, show us. He says bluntly. The Golden Eyes girl nods and begins to show everyone what's really happening. Their eyes widen as they see multiple glowing serpents like creatures were coming out of the black holes. The serpent heads were latched onto the Death Stalker keeping it in place. Gojira, I'll finish it off. I'll bear right back just make sure everyone else is okay. The girls listen as they run to check on the others. Ruby, wow. What are those things? Anna, those are part of my semblance. Hello my name is Anna. This is Mia, 
And this is Maria. Do you know where the relics are, Johnny? Ah, uh, it's those chest pieces back there. Maria, hey guys let's wait till Gojira gets back, let's just watch them like you told us. Blake, wait you're gonna leave him alone? Ruby, big bro is crazy strong. He won't have any problem. Vice, yeah, even if he's strong there's no way he can fight that alone. Anna, technically he isn't alone. My Ghidorah heads are still with him as they are a part of me. Ruby, you, go what now? Back with Gojira. He ran at the scorpion, and stabbed his katana into its tail, he began to climb it as it did its best to try to shake him off like it did to Juane. However Gojira kept his grip, he was at the stinger when her stabbed his sword into the space in between the segments, the grim screeches Gojira dug his hands into it, he began to pull on it eventually ripping of the deathstalker's stinger. He dropped it on the grim's head stabbing it, but not killing it. He put away his sword and jumped down being to flip forward and slammed his tail into the stinger killing it. He stood up and walked over to his friends. Gojira, hey is everyone okay? Everyone stared in shock, as they just witnessed a man single-handedly kill a deathstalker. Well everyone except, Ruby, Yang, Anna, and Maria. While Mia, certainly to be that aggressive is from the short time she knew him he seemed to be pretty calm and kind everyone began to slowly snap out of it as nora speaks first nora that was totally wicked ren i agree that was certainly impressive fira we should definitely spar some time juane i didn't expect someone to ever be that strong vice i i while vice was just speechless blake goji how did you get so strong? Gojira, lots of training with my genetics. Having such a weak aura, and no semblance I have to be strong as possible. Especially if I want to protect my adorable sisters. He said the last part with a smile that made his ruby and yang blush. Come on guys let's grab out relics and we'll all get back to the cliff. Gojira and Mia grab a black king piece, while Maria and Anna grab the white king pay ice. The four make down with the other eight. Yang, hey guys. We might still have one more problem. A loud screech was heard from the Nevermore flying above them. It swooped down at the twelve of them, as everyone jumped out of the way. However that wasn't the only Grim around as the trees nearby began to shake a large Grim walked out and roared at the group. As well as a second death stalker. They began to run into the forest to give themselves some time to make a plan. Maria. We need to come up with a plan. Ruby. I got it. Goji do you how much energy do you have left? Gojira. What why? Ooh smirks yeah. I have enough for that, but I will need some dust for it. Everyone was confused on what they were talking about. Vice. What type? Gojira. An type. Vice hands Gojira a fire dust crystal, as she handed it to him. He crushed it and began to eat it. Everyone was in shock as they didn't expect that. Vice. What? What are you doing? You don't eat dust. Gojira. Actually Godzilla Faunus can, and we need it for us to use our abilities. Ruby. Okay, Goji, Anna, Maria and Mia, will deal with the Silver Tooth Grim. While Duane, Fyra, Ren and Nora fight the Deathstalker and everyone else fight the Nevermore. Everyone spread out as they deal with their respective Grims. Gojira, Anna, Mia and Maria all run towards the Silver Tooth. Maria flies past it slashing at its legs with its daggers, as well as Mia uses her scythe to slash at its back legs. Anna uses her portals to drop her and Gojira onto the back of the beast. Gojira brings his katana down to its right side, while Anna uses her Ghidorah head to pull Lot to the right. Gojira, Maria, Maria, yes? Gojira, I need you to fly as fast as you can and slam its right side. Mia, I need you to continue slashing at its feet. Mia slash Maria, understood exclamation mark slash got it. The Grim seems to notice their plans as it begins to turn and shake causing Gojira to lose his balance. As he falls the silver tooth, bit his tail and threw him, making him crash into multiple trees. AMM, Goji, Maria begins to fly at high speeds, and kicks the beast causing it to stumble as Mia slashes at its back legs. Anna uses her Ghidorah heads and pulls it making it fall to its left. Mia and Maria ran to it and were about to cut its neck until the creature's mouth began to wide and in instant they were hit with a large shockwave slamming them into the ruins everyone else had finished with their grims with Johnny and his group finishing of the Deathstalker similarly as the first one while we and the others decapitated the Nevermore they all ran back to check on the remaining four when they see the girls get tossed into the ruins as they struggled to get up 
Maria raised her head to be face to face with the silver tooth grin. It leaned its face forward and opened its jaws. Until a blue light beam hits its injured side causing to scream in pain and fall over. Everyone turned to see where that beam come from, as they see Gojira re-emerging from the forest line. Ruby, yes, that's my big bro. Vice, dumbstruck how? I though he said he didn't have a semblance. Yang, he doesn't. Apparently the energy from dust could allow him to use multiple abilities he had genetically, such as healing, and that beam you saw is what he calls an atomic breath. Gojira, get away from them, he yelled as blue flames fumed out of his mouth. His eyes, dorsal plates on his back and tail were glowing blue. As sounds of charging were heard he began to continue to blast the grim with the beam. He grabbed his sword, and ran at the injured beast, as he ran at it. The beast roared straight at him trying to use a shockwave to send him back but was instead met with an atomic breath to its face. The Grim was blinded by the blast, but by the time it could see, all it saw as a tail as its visor went dark Ajin. Gojira used his tail spikes and blinded the creature before raising his blade. It tried to get him off, but it was frozen in place. All the pain it received from the Godzilla faunus blinded it from the girls who have continued their plan, with Anna holding it in place and the other two practically cutting its legs off. The silver tooth's suffering ends however when Gojira stabbed its blade into its head killing it instantly. Gojira, huff good work guys. AMM, thanks. Time Eskip. Ospin, Russell Thrush. Card in Winchester. Dove Bronzing. Skylark. The screen of the auditorium shows each of their profiles as the boys are lined up for the applauding audience to see as Ospin continues. The four of you retrieved the Black Bishop pieces. From this day forward, you will work together as Team CRDL, led by Cardin Winchester. The audience gives one more wave of ovation, while four students walk up to the stage to take their places in front of the headmaster as their faces fill the screen. Ospin, Johnny Ark, Lyran, Pyre Nikos, Nora Valkyrie. The four of you retrieved the White Rook pieces. From this day forward, you will work together as Team JNPR. Amid the clapping from the crowd, Nora laughs and gives Ren a hug. Ospin, led by Johnny Ark. Johnny, huh? L led by Ospin, congratulations, young man. A grinning pie offers a friendly shoulder bump to Johnny, but her fine leader is knocked over and falls to his butt in front of the laughing audience. Ospin, Blake Belladonna. Ruby Rose. Vaishni. Yang Xiaolong. He motions over the four as they stand before him. The four of you retrieved the White Knight pieces. From this day forward, you will work together as Team RWBY, led by Ruby Rose. Vice looks to her right surprised, where Ruby is obviously in shock as Yang goes over to hug her sister. Yang, I'm so proud of you. Go Jira. You go Ruby. Mia, isn't it kinda ironic that the team name is literally her name? Maria, I think that's clever. Anna, it's probably just a coincidence. Ospin. And lastly, Anna G Maria Sora, Mia Spirit, and Gojira Saraizawa. This causes Gojira and his family to go wide-eyed from the mention of his family name, while everyone else, except for Blake, looked confused as they thought his last name was Rose. You four collected the Black King pieces, you will be known as Team Gam, Gamma, led by Gojira Saraizawa. Maria smiles and jumps on her leader's back. While Mia and Anna hug him as a way to congratulate him. Gojira would be ecstatic that he's the leader, however. The mere mention of his real family had him wondering. How did Ospin know? Ospin smiles amid the last round of cheers. Ospin, it looks like things are shaping up to be an interesting year. Elsewhere, before going into the night and seeing the moon through a window, providing a view to the outside for a shadowy room filled with shelves and a desk in the back where Roman Torchic is getting a call on his phone. The muffled conversation ends, and Roman angrily slams the phone down, sighing. He holds a cigar to his mouth and puts his symbolized lighter to the end, just as a man in a gray mask and black hood comes with a trolley. Roman holds out a collection of lean, which he places on the table and the man takes. Roman, open it. The masked man does so with a crowbar, revealing a large amount of dust crystals of varying colors, orange, blue, white, red, green, cyan, gold, yellow, and more. Roman picks up a blue gem in his hand and looks at the loot. Roman, we're gonna need more men. The first day after everyone were assigned teams, everyone headed to their new dorms. Luckily Team Gam were neighbors with both Team RWBY and Team JNPR. So finding their dorm was much easier. 
The group four walked into their new dorms. Once they got in they immediately began to pick beds. With there being a blue sheet bed at the far left side of the room, a gold on the far right side of the room, a black bed a few feet next to the blue bed, and a white bed a few feet next to the gold bed. Gojira. Alright I guess everyone pick a bed. I call dibs on the blue one. Mia. I'll take the black bed. Anna. I'll take the golden one. Maria. I, I guess I'll take the white one. The four were about to go to sleep until, Mia remembered something. Mia, Goji, do you mind standing outside for a second? Gojira, hm. yeah of course sorry. Gojira then walks outside of the room. Anna and Maria look at Mia expecting an explanation on why she did that. Maria, um, Mia why did you tell him to leave? Mia, are you seriously asking why? We were all about to change and we forgot that he was here. And if we didn't he might have peeked at us. Maria, but I don't think he's that type of guy, he's a gentleman, the first night we met we slept next to each other and he didn't try anything. Anna, he seems mature enough not to do that. Mia, I just think we should set some grand rules before we start actually living together. That's all. Anna, alright, let's call him in. However, we should change first. Maria walks over to the door and lets Gojira back in. Mia, okay Goji. Some ground rules when we're going to change you change in the bathroom, you cannot come out until we tell you we're done. Secondly, if you want to come into the room, be sure to knock first. Third, don't do anything. Weird. And lastly do not go through our stuff. She tells him. Gojira just tilts his head. Gojira, you guys are aware I lived with two sisters all my life and I had to share a room with them. So I already know those rules. Maria. See I told you he isn't that type of guy. Mia was as red as her gloves from the embarrassment of this whole conversation. While Maria and Anna lightly giggle. Gojira just sits on high bead and looks over at his partner. Gojira. But I understand why you had to clarify it. We've never met before. So you had perfectly good reason to be skeptical. Mia. Mutters thanks. Gojira. Anyway anything else you guys wanna say before we go to sleep? Anna. Ah yes. Thanks for reminding me. You said your name is Gojira Rose, correct? Gojira, yep. Anna, so then why did Professor Rospin say your name was Sarizawa? Gojira, he takes a deep breath and looks at them with a serious expression. Well if it wasn't obvious before I look almost nothing like my sisters. I was adopted. My real parents was an Atlas scientist named Ishido Sarizawa, and my mother was Gojin Sarizawa. My mom was a Godzilla faunus and my dad was human. Everyone's eyebrows raise. The concept of a human and a faunus having a child was certainly a surprise but not an unwelcomed one. Maria, what happened to them? She said hesitantly, almost scared of what happened to them. Gojira, I was about six at the time, my father was killed by the white fang. I don't know why, but one day they attacked the house with my dad and I in it. The house was set ablaze, my dad was killed by a white fang member, and when the man noticed me he was gonna kill me. But my mom showed up at the last second and shot him with an atomic breath. Anna, the white fang? And they wanted equality. Yet they killed a man who fell in love with a faunus. Mia, I'm honestly afraid to ask, but what about your mother? Gojira tries to answer her. But he suddenly felt the urge to vomit, and covered his mouth. His eyes started excess to tear up, as his back began to slowly flash. The girls quickly rush to him to check if he's okay. As Anna grabs a bottle of water and hands it to him. Maria, Goji are you okay? Gojira finishes the water and takes a few more deep breaths. Gojira, sorry, I'm just remembering exactly how it happened. Okay I'm good. My mother. She died a year after we ran away from our old home. We've been constantly moving via Kayu form. For some odd reason no one questioned him on what it is. But he just figured it was so he could continue his story. It's when us Godzilla faunas could change into our true forms in a way. We were heading to the island of Patch, when a Leviathan Grim attacked my mum. She. She tossed me to the island forcing me to change into my normal form. That's where Ruby and Yang found me. As my mum was whining the battle, a missile out of nowhere landed in the water and... It instantly distracted the Grim while my mum suffered and sunk into the boiling water. Later we went to check out the site I transformed and swam down there only to see her skeleton at the bottom. I cried for weeks, luckily that day Summer Rose adopted me into her family, and I'm glad for that. I wouldn't have met my uncle and aunt and more importantly my sisters. 
Gojira didn't notice that he had tears rolling down his face. The girls huddled around him and hugged him. Gojira, sniff tea thanks guys. It means a lot. Come on let's head to bed. So good night. A.M.M. Good night. Time has skipped to next morning. Gojira was the first to wake up. As he gets up from bed he grabs his new uniform and walks into the bathroom and quickly change. Luckily it was custom made for him in order to fit his tail and spins. He walked out and noticed everyone was still asleep. Now he could wake them up normally. However, he wanted to try to pull a move from Ruby. He cleared his throat and Gojira, rise and shine ladies. Maria screamed and falls over her bed, Anna remains sleeping, while Mia lunges at Gojira and tries to punch him which he immediately dodge. Gojira, whisper note to self, don't be like Ruby. Mia, irritated what? There. Hell. Goji. Maria. Goji why did you do that? She said as tears threatened to fall and her face was a blushing mess, possibly due to the embarrassment of falling off her bed. Gojira, yep sorry, realized it was a dick move to do that but at least most of you are awake. He walks over to Anna and slowly shakes her. She opens her eyes and gives a small smile to Gojira. To Anna come on get up. He turns to Mia and Maria. I'll leave you guys to change. But once you're done we'll head straight to class. It's currently 8.35 a.m., but it's better early than late. They all nod as he leaves the room. Once they finish they began to walk to class but once they walked past Team RWBY's room, they heard sounds of hammers and drills. Maria, should we tell them class starts at 9? Anna, I agree. It sounds like whatever they're doing they'll probably be late to their first class of the year. Mia, I say let them be late. Maria, Mia. Goji, we should tell them. Gojira, Maria. As much as I wanna be a good brother. Turns to them this will be payback. Let's go. Flashback. It was a Wednesday morning. Gojira didn't get any sleep the night before. So he overslept. Why was he excited? Because today his class at Signal are having a field trip to Beacon Academy. He woke up to the sun in his eyes and the sound of constant beeping in the background. He put on his uniform, and checked the time. His eyes widened when he saw he was a whole hour late to school. At the point he probably missed the bullet the class took to Beacon. He ran to his stepfather and mother who were talking G in the kitchen. It turns out Truby and Yang Lydon told them that he was sick and wants to stay in bed, and from that day forward he wanted to find a way to make them suffer. Flashback over, as they walked into class, they saw a man with grey hair, and a moustache with his eyes so squinted they looked closed, or they were closed he couldn't tell, and was wearing a red suit as well. Question mark colon R. Welcome you must be team Gam. Glad to see you here up and early. My name is Professor Port. I teach Grim Biology. Gojira. It's nice to meet you professor. I'll be looking forward to your lectures. Port. Ah you must be Gojira. Ospin has told me all about you. Is it true that everything you can do is genetic? And not a semblance? Gojira was shocked that Ospin knew that. He wondered was it from initiation? He knew his real name, so what else did the headmaster know? He wondered. Gojira. Yes that is very true, my team will go to our seats and wait for your lecture to begin. Team Gam go up to their seats and pull out their notebooks. After a few minutes the class started to fill up, and they noticed the only teams not present was Team RWBY and JNPR, and it's currently 8.59. As the bell rang, the two teams run through the door, all of them breathing heavily as if they ran a marathon. Port, ah just in time. Now everyone take your seats. As everyone sat down Port began his lecture. Port, monsters, demons, prowlers of the night. Yes, the creatures of Grimm have many names, but I merely refer to them as prey. Ha ha, the members of RWBY, seated on the front row, are in varying stages of interest. Blake and Yang are sitting up and paying attention, Vice is taking notes and Ruby has her head propped in her hand as she takes a quick nap until she is woken back up by Port's bad joke, which receives a cricket-filled silence as a result. While over at Team Gam, Gojira was trying his best to pay attention but in the end was playing with his tail. Maria was drawing in her notebook, Mia has completely fell asleep, while Anna was actually wide awake taking notes on anything remotely important. Port, you, and you shall too upon graduating from this prestigious academy. Now, as I was saying, Vale, as well as the other three kingdoms, 
a safe havens in an otherwise treacherous world. Our planet is absolutely teeming with creatures that would love nothing more than to tear you to pieces, and that's where we come in. Huntsman. Huntresses. He then gives Yang a wink, which she groans uncomfortably at. Individuals who have sworn to protect those who cannot protect themselves. From what? You ask? Why? The very world? Question mark colon raises his fist a yip. They stand like this for a moment as everyone looks at him strangely before sitting down. Embarrassed. Port. That is what you are training to become. But first, a story. A tale of a young, handsome man. Me. When I was a boy. His words fade into the background. Gojira looks over at Vice who notices Ruby is very focused on penciling the paper in front of her. Port. Despite smelling of cabbages, my grandfather was a wise man. Peter, he told me. The speech evolves into more blah s as Ruby chuckles at her creation and shows it to her teammates. A ball with limbs and a hair drawing of the teacher with stink lines coming from him and Professor Poop written underneath. Ruby blows a quick raspberry. Gojira laughs but immediately stops as he gives her a look and shakes his head. She puts her head down until she hears Blake and Yang laugh, making her proud of her creation agent. But Vice looks annoyed. Port. Ah hey hum. He waits until he has their attention again. In the end, the Bawaf was no match for my sheer tenacity, and I returned to my village with the beast in captivity and my head held high, celebrated as a hero. The teacher takes a bow as Vice slowly gets more and more frustrated with Ruby's antics. Gojira. This isn't gonna end well. Port. The moral of this story? A true huntsman must be honorable. Ruby is balancing an apple on a book with her pencil held only by her finger while making a silly face. Port. A true huntsman must be dependable. Ruby has fallen asleep again in the first class of the year. Gojira almost notices a vein popping from vice forehead. Port. A true huntsman must be strategic, well-educated, and wise. Ruby is not so subtly picking her nose, much to vice building anger. Port. So who among you believes themselves to be the embodiment of these traits? Gojira raised his hand, as Vice does as well. Vice. I do, sir. She noticed Gojira raised his hand as well and growls a bit but quickly calms down. Port. Well, then, let's find out. Gojira goes first. Step forward, and face your opponent. Gojira walks to the front of the class and gets in position. Ruby. You can do it big bro. Yang, show them what you can do. Blake. Good luck, Maria. Be careful. Anna, have fun. Mia, zzzzz. Gojira chuckles and quickly thanks them. He turns his attention to the cage on the opposite side of him, with red glowing eyes staring at him. It begins to shake violently. He looks over at Professor Port and gives him a nod signaling he's ready. Port raises his axe and cut the lock holding the cage closed and shattered it causing a Grim to jump out and running on all fours at Gojira. Gojira quickly dodges the Grim. Port. Excellent dodge. This is a Grim Goblin. Tough when dealing with multiple of them as their packs could go up to 20. However alone. They're quite doable. Gojira used a bit of his Kaiyu form and turned his arms scaly as well as graining claws. He rushed at the Grim, who would constantly jump around, avoiding his swings. Port. This was quite the agile Grim as it took a long time to try to get it still. So how will you hit it as you have no weapon? Gojira growls at the goblin, when he did he noticed the grim shake a little but it quickly continued jumping. This gave him an idea. Gojira. I'm supposed to defeat it. That doesn't just mean killing it. He remembered a trick his mother showed him during his training with his Kaiyu form. Gojira stopped chasing the goblin as everyone was shocked as the goblin now started to run at the boy. Vice. You dealt. What are you doing? Don't just stand there. Blake, to Yang and Ruby. What is he doing? Yang, we don't know, but I think it might relate to his atomic breath. Everyone looks at Gojira who was originally just standing there with the grim running at him. However it quickly began to slow down when it sees his back slowly flashing blue. With sounds of pulsing could be the only thing heard from him. Everyone looked in awe as they see him slowly approaching the grim, as the grim was shaking in fear and for once Professor Port was wider eyed Yang then whispers over to Maria who was sitting behind her. Yang, what's with the light show? Maria, it's an intimidation display. Ruby, consider us very intimidated. With the grim cornered it had no choice but to run back into its cage, and quickly shut its door. Professor Port snapped out of his trance and locked the cage up. He then turns to Gojira and smiles. Port, 
Excellent. That was outstanding. What was that? Gojira. It was an intimidation display. My mother taught to me during training once. It only works however when the Grim is smaller than me, so that's why she taught to me in my Kaiyu form. This basically works as a Grim replant sometimes. It also depends on the Grim's intelligence. Port, that is certainly interesting. Well good job. Now you may take your seat. Ms. Shni you're next. Yang, Gu, Vice, Blake. She starts waving a small flag saying RWBY. Fight well. Ruby. Yeah. Represent team RWBY. Vice. She has sword and looking over at her leader. Ruby. I'm trying to focus. Ruby. Looking sheepish oh. Um. Sorry. Port. Alright. Let the match. Begin. The professor swings down and breaks the lock, dropping the cage door and revealing the ball bait tusk inside which immediately charges at Vice. She uses Mittenasta to deflect its attack and roll to the side, readying herself for its next move. The Grim stands a distance away from its enemy, studying her. Port, ha ha, wasn't expecting that. Were you? Ruby, hang in there. Vice. Vice is now speeding towards the oncoming ball bait tusk, sticking her blade straight at its skull until they meet and Mittenasta is trapped in the beast's tusks. Vice is still hanging on to the hilt and is tossed around as she struggles to get the rapier back. Port. Bold. New approach. I like it. Ruby. Come on. Vice. Show it who's boss. Vice turns to glare at Ruby, only for the boar bait tusk to turn its head and rip the sword from her grip. Mittenasta lands far away from its master, who is knocked back by the creature's tusks. Port. Oh ho. Now what will you do without your weapon? Vice looks up just in time to see the boar bait tusk charge again rolling out of the way just in time to avoid getting trampled and make it crash into a desk. Vice rushes at her sword and slides to get it back in her hand. Ruby. Vice. Go for its belly. There's no armor underneath. Vice. Turning to Ruby stop telling me what to do. Gojira. She's trying to help you. He says loud enough to wake up Mia who was previously sleeping. All while Ruby looks hurt at Vice rebuttal. Meanwhile. The boar bait tusk leaps into the air and rolls into a ball spinning rapidly in the air and landing on the ground, consistently gaining speed until it launches itself at Vice. It comes closer and closer, but Vice activates one of her blue-white circles and blocks the roll, leaping up into the now black snowflake symbol and turning it blue again so she can drive the blade into the boar bait tusk's stomach. It squeals and falls silent while Vice gasps in relief. Port, bravo, bravo. It appears we are indeed in the presence of a true huntress in training. As Vice stands up at attention from her exhausted position and Ruby continues to frown, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Be sure to cover the assigned readings, and stay vigilant. Class dismissed. Vice glares and turns away, walking hurriedly to the exit past her teammates. Johnny, watching her leave, sheesh, what's with her? The remaining members of Team RWBY look at each other with the same question. Gojira, I don't know. But I hate it. Turns to Team U3 head to the dorm. I'll check on my sister. Outside the room Vice is still storming off, but Ruby turns a corner and manages to catch up with her. Ruby. Vice. Vice. What? Ruby. What's wrong with you? Why are you being? Vice. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be a leader and all you've been so far is a nuisance. Ruby, what did I do? Vice, that's just it. You've done nothing to earn your position. Back in the forest, you acted like a child, and you've only continued to do so. Ruby, Vice, where is this coming from? What happened to all the talk about working together? I thought you believed in acting as a team. Vice, not a team led by you. I've studied and trained, and quite frankly, I deserve better. She turns her back to Ruby trying to reach out but dropping her hand with the following words. Ospin made a mistake. She walks away as Ruby looks dejected. Gojira, you know, I should have expected that from Ishni. Ruby, looking doubtful, even on the verge of tears. Is she right? Did Ospin make a mistake? Gojira, laughing slightly that remains to be seen. Vice is still walking around the halls until she comes across a balcony where Professor Port is watching the sunset over Beacon Academy's rooftops. Vice. Professor Port. Port. Ah, Miss Schnee. And to what do I owe this fine pleasure? Vice. I. I enjoyed your lecture. Port. Of course you did, child. You have the blood of a true huntress in you. Vice. Smiling you really think so? Port. Most surely. He then notices Vice's small frown and lack of eye contact.
something's troubling you, Vice. Yes, sir, Port, dear girl. Confess to me your strife, Vice. Well, I, I think I should have been the leader of Team RWBY, Port. He was silent for a moment until he speaks. That's preposterous, Dash. Ruby, what do you mean? Gojira, I mean, it's only been one day. Ruby, being leader isn't meant to be all a sunshine and rainbows. I literally cried in front of my team last night, so yeah it's pretty tough. And I don't think he wouldn't make the mistake in leaving someone who can't handle it in charge. Do you? Dash. Vice. Excuse me, Port. I've believed in Professor Rospin for many years, and the man's never once led me astray. Vice. So you would just blindly accept his decision even after seeing how exceptional I am? Port. With all due respect, your exceptional skill on the battlefield is matched only by your poor attitude. Vice. How dare you? Port. My point exactly. I see a girl before me who has spent her entire life getting exactly what she wanted. Vice. That's not even remotely true exclamation mark dot 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 well. Not entirely true. Dash. Gojira then hugs his sister and looks into her eyes which causes her heart to beat faster every second. Gojira, being a team leader isn't just a title you carry into battle, but a badge you wear constantly. If you're not always performing at your absolute best, then what reason do you give others to follow you? Ruby looks thoughtful with Gojira words, then smiles at him. Dash. Port, so the outcome did not fall in your favor. Do you really believe that acting in such a manner would cause those in power to reconsider their decision? So instead of fretting about what you don't have, savor what you do, hone your skills, perfect every technique and be not the best leader, but the best person you can be. Vice smiles a little at the words of wisdom. Dash. Gojira, you've been burdened with a daunting responsibility, Ruby. I advise you take some time, to think about how you will uphold it. Ruby, with a last look of consideration, turns and walks away. She then comes to the balcony where Port is walking away from Vice and smiles a little at her partner. While Gojira was still standing in front of the class, and sighs. Gojira. I hope that was enough to help her. Ozpin, well, if it's anything, I wouldn't have said it any better. Gojira, Ozpin, what are you doing here? Ozpin, this is my school, I tend to walk around from time to time now. I assume you have some questions for me? Questions. Gojira followed Ozpin into his office. The two sat down across from each other, with silence between them until Gojira speak. Gojira, how much will you tell me? Ozpin, everything. Gojira, everything? No censorship. Anything as in classified information as well? Ozpin, if I must. Gojira, my last name? Ozpin, I did my research, I found a boy who had a runaway Atlas scientist as a father, and a Godzilla faunus as a mother. Then years later, they all go missing with the boy popping up Ajin with the unique first name but a different last name. Gojira, how much do you know about my parents? Ozpin, your father, was a scientist of Atlas, worked for General Lionwood. He was tasked to create something called, the Oxygen Destroyer. It was made to kill Grimm, but however he saw it as too dangerous to be ever used, so he got rid of all the notes, and took the digital copies from his lab. And when he escaped he put it somewhere hidden. A place hidden, and the only way to access it, is to burn it to the ground. Gojira, my house. Did the White Fang? Ozpin, all I know is that someone asked for her assassination. I don't know who asked however one thing for sure is. They didn't know about the bomb. Because a month later, Atlas military checked the site and found the bomb and took it, and decided to only used it for dangerous grim. Gojira, they used it on my mother. Ozpin, unfortunately from what I heard, some believed Kaiyu to just be another form of Grimm, or that Kaiyu have more potential for destruction than the Grimm. So they fired it. Gojira, I swear if I find the one who... Ozpin, you won't do anything. Gojira, but they killed my mother. Ozpin, I understand that, but you poo have to realize. You must prove them wrong. Show them that they were wrong about her. Show them that Kaiyu are here for a reason and shouldn't be feared. Gojira, Sai okay, I will. One more question. Ozpin, go ahead. Gojira, how do you know so much about Kaiyu and Godzilla Faunus? Ozpin, R. Well to be more specific I know a lot about Kaiyu Faunus in general. Such as Godzilla Faunus, Mothra Faunus, Ghidorah Faunus, Muto Faunus and the list goes on. The way I know about them is because I've been alive for a long time, and I've seen many things. 
I've even met your mother a few times. But how I how all about them is? Well, let's answer that with another question. What's your favorite fairy tale? Gojira, fairy tale? Ozpin, yes, a fairy tale. Gojira, I don't know I guess king of the monsters, mum would always tell me that one, and I like it. Ozpin, the king of the monsters. To put it short, the story says one day the queen of the monsters will have a child with a human and they would give birth to the king of the monsters, it is up to king to find a new queen once he does. He and his followers will fight and win a war to prove his rule. He fights the forgotten, the grim queen, then the one who is many, and lastly humanity's mistake. Gojira, okay so what does that have to do with me as a Kaiyu? Ozpin, do you know what made your species so special? The Godzilla species? They are currently the equivalent to a royal family. Your mother was the queen, and you are the current king of the monsters. Gojira, in disbelief king? Ozpin, yes. I'm afraid it's time for us to finish this up, I have a meeting with the Uther professors soon. Oh and Mr. Seraizawa, please do not tell anyone about this, especially your team. I know how open you can be with them. Gojira hesitantly agreed and began to head back to his room. Gojira, king, that's just not possible. If I'm a king, then I have to find a queen and have followers. Then I have to fight some mystery war. Ah oh, this is too much for me I need to take a long nap after this. He began to mess up his hair out of frustration. I hope he could tell me more about this later. He knocked on the door before entering. Mia was on her scroll, Maria sleeping, while Anna was reading over her notes. They all looked up at Gojira who looked almost sleep deprived and overall stress. Anna's eyes widened before she strangely returned to normal and continued studying. He began to walk straight to his bed before he felt someone grab his hand. He turned to see Mia holding his hand. She had face that was a mix between seriously concerned and a bit frustrated. Mia, where were you? Ruby went to her dorm about an hour ago. Gojira, I had to talk to Ospin. Mia, what why? Gojira, I'm sorry but I can't tell you yet. Mia, can't or won't? Gojira, can't. Now I need to go sleep. Good night. He tried to pull away from her grip, but she held on tight. Mia, just tell me when you can. We partners. Aren't we? Gojira looked at her in the A's and smiled, causing her to blush. Gojira. Of course. Now let's all head to bed. Juanitis currently teams at WBY. Gam, and the rest of JNPR, were attending Professor Goodwitch's class watching Johnny Spa with Cardin. Who Gojira snarls at as he looks over to see Maria holding her wings protectively. The two were fighting for a good five minutes and now it unfortunately seems clear who is going to win. Johnny looks at Cardin who laughs at his opponent's tiredness, and Johnny gathers his strength to charge forward and swing his blade at Cardin, only for him to jump out of the way. Johnny looks back, surprised. His mace sends Johnny's shield, and himself, flying back. Now only armed with his sword, Johnny tried to attack, but is blocked by the mace's hilt. Their weapons locked, Cardin forces himself up, towering over a struggling Johnny. Cardin, this is the part where you lose. Johnny over my dead. Johnny is cut short as Cardin knees him in the gut, making Johnny drop his sword and fall to the ground in pain. Cardin raises his mace and is about to slam it down on a worried Johnny just when the buzzer rings, the lights come back on, and Glinder Goodwitch's voice causes him to stop. Glinder, Cardin, that's enough. He relents and walks away as she comes onto the stage, tapping her tablet. Students, as you can see, Mr. Ox or Aura has now dropped into the red. In a tournament-style duel, this would indicate that Johnny is no longer fit for battle, and that the official may call the match. While Johnny still lays on the floor in defeat and Pia Nikos looks sad, Glinda turns her head to look at the losing warrior as he pulls out a smaller tablet with his low, blinking stats and that of his entire team. Goodwitch, Mr. Rock, it's been weeks now. Please try to refer to your scroll during combat. Gauging your aura will help you decide when it's appropriate to attack, or when it is better to move to a more defensive strategy. We wouldn't want you to be gobbled up by a bow wolf, now, would we? Cardin, speak for yourself. Goodwitch turns to the seated and standing students, such as Yang, who is punching the air in anticipation. Vice, shaking her fists with an excited smile. Lastly, Ruby Rose. Shaking her entire body with enthusiastic energy while squealing softly. Goodwitch, remember, everyone. The vital festival is only a few months away. 
It won't be long before students from the other kingdoms start arriving in Vale, so keep practicing. Those who choose to compete in the combat tournament will be representing all of Vale. Now we have time for one more match who would like to go? Multiple people raise their hands however, Goodwitch focused on two students who are currently whispering to each other. Gojira, you should go. You never really participate in this class. Mia, no, if I were to fight someone my semblance would end the match too quickly. Gojira, come on, it'll be fun. Goodwitch, Miss Spirit, how about you? Let's see what you can do. Mia, let's make this quick, but first let's add a wager. Gojira, a wager? Mia, yeah. You win I'll pay for you meals for the next week. I win you take me out veil this weekend. Gojira, what like a date? Mia, sure. Maria, Blake, Ruby, and Yang all heard that. Maria, no. Blake, is she serious? Ruby, big bro no. Say no. Yang, I swear to um, say no. Gojira, that's it? All right I guess, here I come free food. The girls all fall back simultaneously. Goodwitch. Is there anyone you would like to spar? Mia looks at the crowd and decides to fight the one who started this in the first place. Mia, hey partner, you ready? Gojira smirks and jumps down to the arena. Gojira, I'm ready. How about you? Goodwitch, like said before first one to lose their aura loses. Let the match begin. Gojira and Mia rushed at each other, with the blades of Gojira's katana and Mia's scythe clashing off each other. The two jumped back and Gojira's back started to glow, as Mia put a nice dust crystal into her scythe. Gojira fired an atomic breath while she she slammed the floor with her scythe causing multiple ice spikes to head towards him. The beam exploded the ice causing nothing but Miz to remain and engulf the arena. He could see something glowing red heading his way, only for a scythe to swing at him, with him barely dodging it. He swung his tail at her stomach, making her fall back. On the screen it shows Mia's aura to have fallen to 68%. She gets back up and sees Gojira about to shoot an atomic breath. She smirks and tells him, Mia, well you're strong, but in tournament rules, I always win. Her gloves began to flash red as his spins glue, then all of a sudden a large pulse came from her and all electronics shut off. Then five seconds later, everything turns back on. The bell rang and everyone looked at the screen to see Gojira's aura completely gone. Gojira, but how? You never hit me? Goodwitch, Miss Spirit. What was that you just did? Mia, my semblance. It shuts off all electronics for however long I please, as well as shuts off everyone's aura within a 100 feet radius. That's why I can't join tournaments, because of my semblance. This causes Ruby to scream from her seat as well as Gojira who has never heard of such a semblance. Gojira slash Ruby, that's so cool. Mia, giggle thanks I guess, but anyway you owe me that date. Gojira, sigh alright so this Saturday right? Mia, and you better save up, because I'll make you broke by the end of it. Gojira, um help me. The bell rings and everyone begins to head to the cafeteria. Once Gojira and Mia leave the room, Gojira was hit by a red blur, and Maria was hit by a white blur. Ruby. Big BRO why did you say yes? Maria, Mia what the heck? Gojira, what did I do? Time mess skip. In the cafeteria, Nora was telling a story to the entire table that consist of teams JNPR, RWBY, and GAM. Everyone seemed to be listening except for Mia who was just heating. However she kept feeling hateful gazes towards her. It's more like a sixth sense and she could tell it it was at least two people who were ready to punch her. And well she loved it found it hilarious actually, she knew it wasn't from Maria because that girl can't bring herself to hate anyone. Nor was it Ruby, as she knows she might think of her big bro more than just that, she has the impression that the girl is almost as innocent as Maria or just as. So that left two people. Nora, so, there we were, in the middle of the night. Ren, it was day. Nora, we were surrounded by Ursi. Ren, they were bewolves. Nora, dozens of them. Ren, two of them. Nora, but they were no match, and in the end, Ren and I took them down and made a boatload of lean selling Ursa skin rugs. Ren, sighs she's been having this recurring dream for nearly a month now. Paya, looking at her leader Jorni, are you okay? Jorni, snapping out of it, turning back toward them, huh? Oh, yeah. Why, Ruby, it's just that you seem a little not okay. Gojira, yeah man you've been kinda down since Goodwitch's class. Jorni, guys. I'm fine. Seriously. Look. He gives an unconvincing thumbs up while laughing nervously. 
until his attention is focused on the members of Team CRDL, standing around a girl with brown rabbit tears jutting from her hair as Cardin laughs at her. This causes everyone to frown, while Gojira growls at this, and surprisingly Mia as well. Paya, Johnny, Cardin's been picking on you since the first week of school. Johnny, who? Cardin Winchester, nah. He just likes to mess around, you know. Practical jokes. Ruby, he's a bully. Gojira, he's the human personification of a scumbag, and he's exactly what's wrong with humans. Johnny, scoff so, please. Name one time he's bullied me. Fira and Gojira look at each other and nod before name exactly every single time he's been bullied. From having his books knocked over to being flown out of the school from a rocket-powered locker. Johnny, attempts to laugh it off I didn't land far from the school. Paya, Johnny. You know if you ever need help, you can just ask. Nora, ooh. She gets up from the table and presents her diabolical plan with a not entirely sane grin. We'll break his legs. Johnny, guys, really, it's fine. Besides, it's not like he's only a jerk to me. He's a jerk to everyone. Gojira, that does not make it any better. They all looks over as the laughing grows louder, mixed in with cries of pain from the rabbit girl when one of her ears are tugged on by Cardin. Question mark Cola now. That hurts. Gojira growls and begins to stand up, followed by Anna Mia. Please, stop. Cardin continues laughing as he turns to his cronies. Cardin, I told you it was real. What a freak. He all of a sudden couldn't move, along with his teammates. They see many Ghidorah heads holding them in place. Mia had her red gloves flashing Ajin, while Gojira began to grow until he reached the height 7 feet 4 inches as his back and eyes glow blue. Mia used her semblance and the whole cafeteria went dark and all they could see was the glowing Ghidorah heads and Gojira's glowing back. Then the heads disappear. All the lights turn on and they see the entire team of Team CGR Relegiants. The wall knocked out with Gojira standing above them. Gojira, Anna can you teleport them to the medical center? And tell a nearby teacher what happened? Anna? Of course. Damn human scum. However she whispered the last part so nobody can hear her. Mia, I'll go with her. See later partner. Gojira nods and walks up to the bunny fauness. Gojira, hey. Are you okay? Question mark colon t thanks you um. Gojira, oh of course sticks out hand my name is Gojira Serizawa Rose. And you are? Velvet. It's Velvet. Thank you for stopping them. Gojira, it's no problem, us faunas gotta help each other out. Especially from racists like them. Gojira noticed her ear was still twitching from the pain he placed a hand on her ear and began to rub it causing her to let out a quiet yelp. I'm sorry but I noticed your ears might still hurt so I'm trying my best to ease it. I could stop if you want. Velvet, no no no. I it's fine. Gojira smiles at the girl. Eventually she tells him that she had to go to her team. As the two said goodbye he walked back to his table to notice everyone looking at him. Gojira, what? Fira, Goji what you just did was amazing. I was afraid for a second no one would help her. Ruby, yeah what you did was awesome. Nora, I feel like you still should have broke his legs. Ren and Fira look at her disapprovingly. Gojira, chuckles I'll remember that. Blake, thank you Goji for helping that fauness. He smiles at her while he still looks at her and thinks. Gojira, I wish she didn't have to wear that bow. Gojira looks over at Maria who smiles at him. Maria, thank you Goji. Thank you for helping her. You really are a nice guy. Time skip. The teams were currently in drive. Oobalex class. With him zooming around the room, giving a really fast-paced lecture. Oobalex, yes. Yes, prior to the Faunus Rights Movement more popularly known as the Faunus War he zooms up to the front of the class and the map covered in papers behind his desk. Humankind was quite, quite adamant about centralizing Faunus population in Menagerie. He then points at the map of said area with his stick then zooms off to the side for a sip of his coffee before appearing in front of the desk. Now, while this must feel like ancient history to many of you, it is imperative to remember that these are relatively recent events. Why? The repercussions of the uprising can still be seen to this day. He once again continues to zoom around the classroom more, sipping his coffee again before continuing to zoom and talk. Now, have any among you been subjugated or discriminated because of your faunus heritage? Some of the students raise their hands including Gojira and Maria. Velvet, after a moment, does the same. Oh Obelek, dreadful, simply dreadful. Remember, students, 
It is precisely this kind of ignorance that breeds violence, takes another sip of his coffee I mean, I mean, I mean just look at what happened to White Fang. Now, which one of you young scholars can tell me what many theorize to be the turning point in the third year of the war? Yes, Vice, the battle at Fort Castle. Oh, Obelek, precisely. And, who can tell me the advantage the Faunus had over General Lagoon's forces? Unseen by the professor, Curden flicks a paper football at Johnny's head causing him to wake up. Which Gojira saw and snarled. Johnny, hey, Oobalek, Mr. Ark. Finally contributing to class. This is excellent. Excellent. What is the answer? Johnny, you, the answer, the advantage, that the fullness. He looks behind Oobalek's focused face at Pyre, who coughs and the motions to her lips as she gives him the answer. He then sees Gojira holding up his notebook also saying the answer had over that guy's stuff. He sees Pyre cup her hands around her eyes and goes for the most obvious answer, before he said anything he noticed a glow to see Gojira blinking and pointing at his notebook, causing him to correct himself before answering. You, night risen. While Johnny looks pleased with his answer, Curden then tells Oobalek that Gojira gave him the answer, making everyone laugh at him. Pyre sighs and slaps a hand to her forehead as Carden pounds his fist on his desk while chortling. Oobalek, zooming back behind his desk very funny, Mr. Rock, Carden, perhaps you would care to share your thoughts on the subject. Carden, well, I know it's a lot easier to train an animal than a soldier. Gojira almost got up from his seat before Maria stopped him and shook her head signaling it wasn't worth it. Pyre, you're not the most open-minded of individuals, are you, Cardin? Cardin, what? You got a problem? Pyre, no, I have the answer. Like said before it's night vision. Many faunas are known to have nearly perfect sight in the dark. Cardin growls at the correct response. Blake, General Lagoon was inexperienced, and made the mistake of trying to ambush the faunas in their sleep. His massive army was outmatched, and the general was captured. Gojira. Perhaps if he'd paid attention in class, he wouldn't have been remembered as such a failure. This caused Mia to laugh out loud as well as many other students. Out of anger Carden stands up as if her was ready to fight. Oh Obelek, Mr. Winchester, please take your seat. When Johnny laughs at his tormentor's embarrassment, he's zooming up to him. You and Mr. Ark can both see me after class for additional readings. Johnny, shoulders slumping. Ooh, oh Obelek, now moving on. As the lesson ends everyone begins to head out. Half of Team JNPR head back while Fyra stays telling them she needs to do something. Gojira just shrugs it off as they head back to their dorm. Once they made it back, everyone began to do their homework silently until Maria speaks up. Maria, so what do you guys think? Mia, think about what? Maria, Cardin, how are we gonna deal with him? Gojira, I don't know. I hate him that's for sure, but I can't get in any more trouble. Even if you guys cleared up what happened in the cafeteria, everyone knows I attacked him first. Anna, I hate him. With a dying passion. Humans like him are the reason us faunas hate humans. Everyone looks at her, as she covers her mouth as she realized what she said. Mia, humans? Gojira, us faunas? Anna, hey, I sure am an idiot for letting that slip. Well that's too bad. I guess I should be fine as half of this team everyone knew were faunas. Maria. Wait what type of faunus are you then? Anna, remember when I said thighs heads were a part of me? I'm a Kayu faunus, more specifically a Ghidorah faunus. You can't see my features because of my void semblance but, I could undo it as you all know no. She stood up, and began to glow gold. As she did, two golden tails began to materialize, as well as two jagged large golden wings. Gojira, that's beautiful. This causes her to grow a slight blush but she quickly shakes it off. Anna. I thank you all for taking this so well. However Goji is it alright we can talk outside for a bit? Gojira. Of course. The two leave the room and began to walk around campus. It was silent tea, until they stopped next to a window with the moon shining through the window. Gojira, so, what did you want to talk about? Anna, I first off want you to know, about my semblance and abilities as a Ghidorah. Ghidorahs have a very limited physical ability, which is reading memories. We hardly use it as there normally no need to use it, but th most of them use it for deceiving someone, while others use it to understand each other. Gojira, wait. So why are you telling me this? Anna, because I hardly use it if not necessary. 
And yesterday when I saw you stress I wanted to figure out what was wrong. Gojira, sighed Amit. So you know. About what Ozpin and I talked about? Anna, yes, I do. I just want to know. What do you plan on doing as the current king of the monsters? Gojira, find a queen first, I guess. Anna, um, how do you go about that? Gojira, you saw me yesterday. I have no clue. As they were walking the noticed Fira standing outside alone with Johnny angrily walking back inside. But then he's pulled aside by Cardin. Gojira, that doesn't look good. Anna, indeed. We shall ask Fira what happened tomorrow. But let's go back to our dorm and rest. Forever fall. Team JNPR, except Johnny, was sitting in their rooms as Anna and Gojira walks in to talk to them. Nora, how come Johnny gets home so late? Ren, he's become rather scarce since he started fraternizing with Cardin. Nora, that's weird. Doesn't he know we have a field trip tomorrow? We need our rest. She proclaims this while twirling in midair so her back hits the covers. Pyre, angrily I'm sure our leader knows exactly what he's doing. Nora and Ren exchange glances, not knowing that Johnny himself is looking in through the crack of the door. Nora, MMM. I guess so. Gojira, I'm still not sure if he would do that by choice. After all why hang out with a bull who never changes their ways? Unless they want something. Anna? Fira you were talking to him last night, what happened, perhaps we can have assistance? Fira, I'm not allowed to say. Anna, then don't say it. I'll know. Gojira, no Anna, even if it's for the great or good. You can't, not without her consent. Everyone raised their eyebrows, wondering what they're talking about. Fira, what are you guys talking about? Anna, I'm not a human I'm a faunus. She begins to materialize her features Ajin. My features are hidden from my semblance but I'm mostly a special kind of faunus a Ghidorah faunus. They have the abilities to in general read minds. For me however I can see memories of a person. However I don't do it, unless I know someone isn't going to talk. Also Gojira is still mad at me for using it not him so I'm on probation from using it for the month, unless I have someone's permission. Nora, oh my god you're a fortune teller. Anna, ah, sure. Gojira, don't worry, you don't have to tell us. It's just, we're worried for the guy, I can't shake the feeling he's being forced into this. Johnny hangs his head and closes the door, just as a voice interrupts his thoughts. Ruby, hey, Johnny. This startled him greatly. Johnny turns around to see her in her pajamas, and she giggles at his reaction. Long time, no see. Did you lock yourself out again? Johnny, oh, ah, uh, nope, got it. Ruby, so, where have you been lately? Johnny, I, ah. Uh, he tries to come up with something, but just sighs and lowers his head. I messed up. I did something I shouldn't have, and now Cardin has me on a leash, and Pyre won't even talk to me, and breathes heavily through his nose. I'm starting to think coming to this school was a bad idea. Presses his back to his team's door and slides down to the floor in depression. I'm a failure. Ruby, nope. Johnny, nope. Ruby, nope. You're a leader now. Johnny, you're not allowed to be a failure. Johnny, but. What if I'm a failure at being a leader? She thinks about it for a second before answering. Ruby, nope. Johnny, laughs as she joins him on the floor. You know, you're not the easiest person to talk to about this kind of stuff. Ruby, nope. As Johnny leans into the door some more Johnny, maybe you were a failure when you were a kid. Johnny groans and sinks lower to the ground, and you might have even been a failure the first day we met. He groans and goes lower still. But, you can't be one now. You know why? Johnny, you, because, Ruby, because it's not just about you anymore. You've got a team now, Johnny, we both do. And if we fail, then we'll just be bringing them down with us. She gets up and places her hands on her hips as she speaks. We have to put our teammates first, and ourselves second. Your team deserves a great leader, Johnny, and I think that can be you. Unknown to them Gojira was able to catch a scent and could hearing all of this from the other side of the door. He told everyone inside he'll be right back and left the room and stood in front of the two. Gojira, hey, not bad kid. Johnny and Ruby look at Gojira who has a smirk on his face. Ruby's face began to red as a tomato, and she began to speak too fast for anyone to understand. Gojira, relax Rubes, I'm proud of you. And Johnny I knew you were here because of your scent. Everything she said is true, you can't afford to be a failure. Johnny, my scent? Gojira, 
Faunus remember? That's not the only thing I have to say however. Jorni looks worried for a second fearing what he might say next. Gojira, I know you're being forced to be with Cardin. I don't know how or why. But all know is you can talk to us and we'll help you. No one could get through bullying like this alone, and trust me this is coming from a fullness. So come on what do you say? Want to explain to us what happened? Jorni takes a moment to think, then he takes a deep breath and gives Gojira a determined look. Jorni? Alright I'll tell them. With new energy, Jorni pushes himself off the ground and faces the door, ready to turn the knob and face his team, but his scroll beeps and he pulls it off of his side to open it, seeing Cardin's contact relaying a message. Cardin, hey, it's your buddy Cardin. I know you're probably busy with the dust project I gave you, Bu you are time gonna need you to go out and get me a bag of rapier wasps. As this makes Jorni make a terrified sound in response and makes sure they've got some really big stingers. It's important, so don't screw this up. Jorni closes his scroll just when it begins to beep again. Gojira, let me guess. The prick sighing, and he wearily heads down the hallway and away from his room. Gojira then tells Ruby goodnight, and tells Anna to head back to the dorm as they have the field trip the next morning. Time mess kip. Everyone was now in front of a bullhead as they had just landed down at Forever Fall. Goodwitch, yes students, the forest of Forever Fall is indeed beautiful. But we are not here to sightsee. Professor Peach has asked us all to collect samples of the tree sap deep inside this forest. And I'm here to ensure none of you die while doing so. The group stops, and Johnny, grunting and carrying a large case with six empty glass jars on top, tries to catch up with them and ends up bumping into Cardin. The bully scowls at Johnny, who attempts to feign innocence by whistling tunelessly. Glinda, still instructing her group. Holding up a full jar of their objective each of you is to gather one jar's worth of red sap. However, this forest is full of the creatures of Grimm, so be sure to stay by your teammates. We will rendezvous back here at 4 o'clock. Have fun. While Yang and Ruby smile at each other, Jorni attempts to escape, and fails, from the grasp of, as Gojira says, the prick. Cardin begins to pull Jorni away by the back of his hoodie. Cardin. Come on buddy let's go. Johnny miserably looks up at his team, where Nora and Ren are already walking into the forest steps and Pia is staring sadly at the scene. Dropping his gaze, Johnny turns and follows CRDL, to the disappointment of a sighing Pia. Gojira pats her shoulder and gives her a small smile which helps her bring herself back up, before she continues on. Dash. Team CRDL is making themselves as comfortable as possible by leaning on stones trees, and the ground while Johnny returns to the group with six full jars, setting them down just as he collapses face down. The surrounding team gets up in response. Cardin, hey, great work, Johnny boy. Now that wasn't too hard, was it? Johnny, still on the ground I think I'm allergic to this stuff. Cardin, great, great, great. So, Johnny, I bet you're asking yourself, why did my buddy Cardin ask me to collect six jars of tree sap when there's only five of us? Johnny, nodding, still exhausted that is one of the many questions I have asked myself today, yes. Cardin, well, come with me, and you'll find out. Johnny moans and gulps in worry. Now perched on a hilltop overlooking the other students, Team CRDL, plus Johnny, squeezed between Cardin and one of his goons Russell peek their heads over the crest and watch as everyone is retrieving their samples of sap. Ren, kneeling to collect it from a tree, passes a full jar to Nora, who mmm. s at the gift as Ren trades it for the other jar in her care. He turns to Nora, now with an embarrassed smile covered in red and an empty jar in her hands. Near them as well is Team Gam, with Maria flying to the trees collecting her sap. Anna using multiple Ghidorah head to fill up up to three jars at once. Mia wasn't collecting anything and instead was just constantly tossing her gun in the air. And lastly Fyra and Gojira were collecting sap and laughing as they would both come tell each other jokes. Jorni, Cardin, WH what's going on? Cardin, payback. Jorni, widens his eyes in understanding Pyre and Goji. WH what are you? Cardin, pans his fist on the ground that's the girl. Redhead know it all thinks she's so smart, and that freak, thinking he's so tough when he had the help of two girls, alright, boys, 
He pulled out a buzzing cardboard box with a large W written on its sides. Last night, old Johnny here managed to round up an entire box of rapier wasps. And now, we're gonna put him to work. Russell grabs Johnny by the shoulder, who barely laughs in nervousness. Cardin, now, according to one of the essays you wrote for me last week, these nasty things love sweets. Pyre and Gojira are seen finishing their sap collection. I'm thinking it's time we teach them a thing or two. The members of CRDL get up. Cardin offers his hand to Johnny, only to painfully yank him up on his feet and shove the jar into his grasp. Cardin, and you're gonna do it. Johnny, do what? Cardin, hit her with the sap. Leans in close to Johnny's face either that, or I'll have a chat with Goodwitch, and you'll be on the first airship out of Beacon. Johnny looks down at the jar of sap in his hands and then up at the four grinning teammates waiting to see what happens. Johnny turns towards the group and aims his throw at an oblivious and smiling Pyre, as well with a joking Gojira, trying to steal his nerves and shaking hand to do the deed, but ultimately steals himself for what he's about to do. Johnny, no. Cardin, what did you say? Johnny, gripping the jar tightly I said, no. He turns and throws the jar at Cardin instantly recoiling his hands to himself as he looks at Cardin's breastplate covered in sap. The other team leader, however, just looks at himself and laughs darkly. Cardin, oh, you've done it now. Johnny humorously laughs to himself once more with his hands still raised in an attempt for defense as Dove Bronzing and Skylark grab Johnny's shoulders and push him to the ground. See, Arden picks him up only to boo ch him back down. Cardin, you know that wasn't very smart. Johnny boy. I'm gonna make sure they send you back to mommy in teeny tiny pieces. Johnny, I don't care what you do to me. Looks at Cardin with fury, but you are not messing with my friends. Cardin, what? You think talk like that makes you tough? You think you're a big strong man now? Johnny smiles in defiance. An enraged Cardin roars and raises his fist again. But just as the hit connects, a bright light shines from Johnny, and when the white fades from the screen, Cardin is crying out in pain as he holds his hand. Johnny, now back on the ground but completely healed, looks confusedly at his hands as they faintly glow white. While he stares, though, Skylark kicks Johnny in the back and gets him on his stomach, but he looks up and glares at the approaching Cardin. Cardin, let's see how much of a man you really are. Just as he says this, a low growl is heard, and a surprise team CRDL turns around and sees a large paw crash onto the scene belonging to a huge Ursa Major with dozens of jagged spikes sticking out from its wide back. It leaps forward and stands over the terrified students, lifting its head in the air to smell the sap on Cardin's breastplate. It lands back on its forelegs and roars at Cardin while his teammates heroically flee. Dash. Meanwhile, the roar of the giant Ursa is heard by the members of teams at WBY, JNPR and GAM, still collecting sap on the other side of the forest. Ruby, did you guys hear that? Maria, yeah, I heard that too. Suddenly, the remaining members of Team CRDL are seen running the other way from the roar through the other students. Russell, Ursa, Ursa. Yang, what? Where? Russell, back there. It's got Cardin. Pyre slash Gojira. Johnny. Ruby, Yang, you and Blake. Go get Professor Goodwitch. Yang and Blake both nod in response and heads for the teacher. Gojira, everyone join them. Pyre. To Ren and Nora you two, go with them, there could be more. Gojira, Fira, Ruby and Vice all run towards the direction Russell and the others came from. Once they arrived they see Cardin who is shaking on the floor in fear, and Johnny standing up to the Ursa Major. Vice was about to jump in until Fira stopped her. Pyre, to Vice wait. Gojira, let him do this, he needs to prove himself. Johnny takes the shield out from the Ursa's paw and slashes at its stomach causing it to lash out and try to crush him. He rolls out of the way and jumps over its swipe at his feet, but he is unprepared for when it launches a claw at him in midair. He lands far away, yet is immediately back on his feet and passing Cardin as he charges again. The Ursa knocks Johnny behind it when he tries for a leaping attack, and he looks at the scroll in his shield to find out that his aura level is in the red. He grows angry again and starts to run at the Ursa as it also begins to dash towards him. As they are just about to clash in slow motion, Pyre sees that Johnny has left himself completely open to the Ursa's attack, and lifts her hand out to him. 
gathering dark red energy in her arm. Just as the Ursa is about to hit him, the glow surrounds Jorni's shield and makes it lift up to block the swipe. Jorni uses the surprise defensive move to lean on the ground, push his shield back up, and swing his blade right through the Ursa's neck. The head falls to the ground as the body slams onto the ground. Ruby, you, what? Vice, equally amazed how did you? Pyre, well, Ruby has her speed, you have your glyphs. My semblance is polarity. Gojira, whispered am I wish I had a semblance. Ruby, whoa, you can control poles. Gojira, oh my own. Vice, no, you dance. It means she has control over magnetism. Ruby, still impressed? Whispering magnets are cool, too. Gojira, Ruby you have no idea how much I love your right at that moment. Ruby, RT thanks. Gojira chuckles and messes up her hair, while Fyra and Vice narrow their eyes, as they feel a hint of jealousy, which they didn't know they could feel. Gojira and Fyra started to head over to Jorni. Vice, wait, where are you going? Ruby, yeah. We gotta tell them what happened. Gojira, we could. Pyre. Or perhaps we could keep it our little secret. They walk away again as Ruby and Vice smile to each other in understanding and a bruised Jorni sheaths his weapon before going over to Cardin. Cardin, still covered in sap, looks up at Jorni as his savior offers a hand. Cardin smiles as he takes it and is lifted back up on his feet. Jorni just BB and looks at his bully with a frown on his face and with fire in his eyes. Cardin, holy crap. Jorni. Jorni. Threateningly don't ever mess with my team, my friends, ever again. Got it? Cardin looks intimidated, possibly even apologetic. With his order spoken, Jorni turns and walks away from a frozen Cardin. They all begin to head towards Professor Goodwitch and the others. Gojira walks up to Jorni and gives him a pat on the back. Gojira, you did good man. Jorni, what you saw that? Gojira, yeah we did and your team should be proud to have you as a leader. I know I would be. Time mess skip. Later that night, Jorni calls Fyra and Gojira to meet him. At the balcony. Pyre, no Cardin tonight? I thought you two were best buds. Gojira, Fyra don't tease him. It's clear he was forced to be with him. Jorni, Pyre. I'm sorry. I was a jerk. You were only trying to be nice, and I had all this stupid macho stuff in my head. Pyre, Jorni, it's okay. Gojira. Your team really misses their leader, you know. Fyra, you should come down. Ren made pancakes. No syrup, though. You can thank Nora for that. She turns to Gojira as they were about to head out. She pressed her fingers together as her face began to go red. Fyra, H. Hey would you like to join us? Goji. Gojira, of course I would love to but I think Jorni has something on his mind. Jorni, listen I, no I don't deserve it after all that happened, but... Would you still be willing to help me? To help me become a better fighter, and Goji could you help me too? Pyre turns around so a worried Jorni won't see her satisfied smile. She goes up to Jorni and suddenly pushes her leader to the ground. Jorni, whining hey. Pyre, your stance is all wrong. You need to be wider and lower to the ground. She offers him her hand, which he graciously accepts, and they continue to hold on to and grin at each other. Let's try that again. Gojira, oh and... He swings his tail dropping Jorni Ajin. Always be ready for anything. The three continued training throughout the night. A day with Mia. Gojira begins to get ready. Mia told him it would be a casual date so they'll just head out to a cafe and possibly some other places. He unfortunately remembers one thing. He's paying for everything. Gojira, sigh damn it. Mia, giggles, as she gives him a mischievous grin what? Scared for your wallet? Gojira, actually yes. Mia. Don't worry about it. If I goes well we might actually start dating, she said confidently as she looks over at Maria who was frowning the whole time. However she immediately gave Gojira a heartwarming smile when he wanted to tell her something. Gojira, okay. If anyone ask where we are tell them that we're out in Vale, and we'll be back in a few hours. Okay? Maria. Of course. Gojira, thanks. Alright Mia are you ready to head out? Mia. Of course I am. The question is are you ready for me Tilda? Gojira, remind me to not let you hang out with Yang anymore. As the two head out, Maria smiles and waves at them till the door closes. She immediately flies into her bed and screamed into her pillow. Maria, muffled it's not fair. Anna, Maria calm down it's not the end of the world. Maria, it is for me. I told you this already I am a Mothra Faunus, 
and I have to protect my king. That's the whole reason I'm here. And now some human decides to take him away from me. I loved him the moment he saved me, and now he's going out with a girl who probably doesn't even love him. All because of the bet. Anna? Exactly. Out of a bet. Does that mean he loves her too? No I don't think so and he was just complaining not too long ago. Maria. But he isn't complaining he's going out with her. He's fine with it. And I'm scared he's gonna end up loving her more than me. Then he'll forget about me. I'll never get to be his queen and I'll be forced to watch him goondatus than hey from Lil Limalanikanti all with Tat. Maria would keep going if Anna hadn't stopped her by covering her mouth. Anna, just calm down it'll be fine. Maria, we won't know that for sure. That's it I'm following them. She runs out of the room. As Anna goes to follow her they didn't know the exact same thing was happening in Team RWBY's dorm. Ruby and Blake were currently trying to calm down a raged Yang, while Vice, who had enough of the yelling just decided to take a shower. Yang, I, I can't believe he's actually going out on a date with her. Yang yelled as she punched her pillow, with her eyes were red and her hair was burning. Ruby, why Yang calm down? Yang? No that girl got to date him. I hate it and the fact she cheated in order to get him. Blake. Yang. I get you want to protect your brother. He was my best friend when we were kids. Now we barely talk since he's either training. Or with his team. Yang. I don't care. He shouldn't be dating her. He should be with me not her. Everyone was shocked at what she said. As well as Yang who just realized what she said. Yang. W what I mean is. Ah. Uh, Ruby. Yang. Do you like Goji too? Blake. Wait you both like him? Yang? W well. He is adopted. Ruby? Why yeah? There isn't anything wrong with it, right? Blake smiles at the two sisters. Blake? No, nothing's wrong with it. I guess it makes sense you guys grew up with him. Well longer than I have I guess. Yang? Sai so what do we now? We love him, but now that girl took him. Ruby? How about we? Before she can finish she hears something from the next door room. Question mark colon that's it I'm following them. The girls open the door, and see Maria running down the hallway with Anna trying to stop her. Blake, what do you think is happening? Ruby, I think they're going to spy on Big Bro and Mia's date. Yang, we're going with them. Yang yells as she grabs her sister and partner. Blake sighs and text vice they'll be out for a while. Dash. Back with Gojira and Mia. They were currently sitting outside of a cafe, with Mia drinking black coffee and Gojira drinking hot cocoa. They were currently telling each other stories. Gojira. And that's when I swore vengeance. Mia. Giggle you're really petty, so that's why you agreed with me that day? You wanted revenge. Gojira. Yeah, going to Beacon was my dream. Mia. Really? What made you want to join Beacon? Gojira. As a kid people thought I always wanted to be like my mother. Not my mom Summer. I loved her I can't deny that as she was she let me part of her family. But no, I mean my mother, Gojin. My father and mother told me stories about her, as she was known as the Lone Huntress. Mia. The Wandering Huntress? Wait. The Lone Huntress. Dude she's like a celebrity where I'm from. She's your mom? Well. Actually I shouldn't be surprised. I was told she was beautiful. I guess that's where you got your looks from Tilda. Gojira. Hey, right back at ya Tilda. Mia blushed as she wasn't expecting a comeback. Gojira. Chuckles. But yes, she was considered a hero. And I wanted to be just like her. My wish to do so only strengthened when my mother died. So I had my mom Summer and Aunt Raven to train me to become a huntress. While I kept training my Kaiyo abilities, such as my regeneration atomic breath and nuclear pulse. So I decided to enroll in Beacon with my sister Yang, and well here we are. Mia, speaking of your sister, that reminds me, everyone was pretty upset that I asked you out on a date. What do you think about that? Gojira. I'll answer that if you answer my question. She nods in confirmation. Well I think I might be wrong, but I think they might be jealous or something. I mean, I know Maria likes me, but Yang, She's always been overprotective with me. Hell that's how she unlocked her semblance. Mia, wait how? Gojira began to shiver as he recalls the day that happened. Flashback start. At this time Gojira was 13 his first year at Signal. And today was a very special day. It was Valentine's Day. Yang pulled an all-nighter making chocolates for Gojira. During class at Signal she waited for the opportunity to give him the chocolates. When class ended, she started walking towards him. Yang, H hey Goji. Gojira. Hey sis, what's up? Yang, so Goji. I was thinking. Would you be my Valentine? Gojira, 
Sai I know we do this every year with Ruby, but this girl asked me earlier and I already said yes. Yang was wide-eyed and she hung her head with her hair covering her eyes. She was completely silent and her shoulders began to twitch. Gojira noticed this and walked over to her and was genuinely concerned and placed a hand on her shoulder. Gojira, Yang are you okay? Yang began to grit her teeth. She raised her head her hair became a bright gold as her eyes were glowing red as tears began to flow out. She raised her fist and yelled, Yan, no girlfriend you're supposed to be mine. As she said that she trusted her fist forward. End of flashback. Gojira. I was lucky I already mastered my regeneration. Or I would have been in the hospital for a week instead of two days. Mia, holy shit your sister is a Yan dear. Gojira. Tell me something I don't know. Mia. Well I guess you answered my question. So what did you want to know? Gojira, you know why I'm at Beacon, but in want to know why you applied? Mia, oh oh right. Well, before she can continue they heard something hit the window. They look at the window to see Team JNPR, Nora waving happily, as well and Johnny and Ren giving slight waves, while Fira just gave a small smile. The group walks in and walk over to the two. Nora, hello we aren't interrupting anything are we? Mia. Yes you are actually, she whispered. Gojira, hey guys what are you doing here? Ren, we needed to restock on dust, and I needed to buy more ingredients for recipes I want to try. Fira, so what are you two doing? Mia, we were having a wonderful date. Everyone's eyes widen, Fira seems the most affected by that as she froze and felt something die in her. Johnny, wait you two are dating? Gojira, remember that battle we had where she showed her semblance? There was a bet. She won so we're having a date, but it's not all bad. Nora, oops well we don't want to interrupt you lovebirds anymore. We'll see you later. The team leaves Fira was the last as she looks back at the two and sighs before joining the rest of the team. Mia, I think Fira likes you too. Gojira, seriously? Mia, I mean I wouldn't mind sharing Tilda. Gojira just responds by putting his head in hands. Gojira, oh my um. Are you serious? Mia. Take sip from coffee well of course, I could tell Maria is very angry with this whole thing. She thinks I don't even like you, I would never ask someone out if I didn't have any interest in them after all. So I would let them share you, just to calm them down. Gojira, you make it sound like I'm an item, let's just talk about that after this date. I still want to know why you came to Beacon. Mia, well, I haven't been completely honest with you guys. And before I tell you. Jay want to make it clear you guys never asked me. Gojira, okay what is it? Mia, in. Also, a Akayu Faunas. Gojira, you too. Gojira yells as he stands up from his seat. Sorry, let's talk somewhere else. The two walked outside into the alley, where a group of girls noticed this and began to freak out. Maria, why are they going the alleys? Blake, this is just like a scene from Ninjas of Love. Yang, he's gonna have his first with her? In an alley, it's either he really changed, or she's forcing him to. Anna, calm down girls, there's no way he's that bold. And I doubt Mia would do that Yang. Yang, how would you know that? Anna, she's like you she's just a tease. Ruby, guys did you forget they were leaving? We lost them now. Maria slash Yang, dang, damn it. They continue to follow the pair. Gojira and Mia make it to the ally, and Gojira looks around before looking back at her. Gojira. You're a Kayu Faunus? But where are your features? Mia, I was gonna get to that. Just please don't freak out when you see them. Gojira. Of course. Mia began to pull of her gloves. Gojira's eyes widened from what he saw. Her arms were completely black like a grim. Her arms halfway would begin to fade into a tint of crimson red. Gojira. Wow. They look like Mia. Grim arms. I know that's why my kind was excluded from everyone. They all thought we were part grim. Gojira. I'm sorry to hear that. Really? Not to sound mean but what does this do with Beacon? Mia. One day. A group of bandits attacked us. We were able to get rid of them easily due to our semblance of getting rid of others auras temporarily. But in the end we still lost some lives. And due to that an overwhelming amount of negativity began to rise attracting. Gojira. Grim, Mia, a horde of Grim. Our semblance is perfect for killing humans and fauness, but it's useless for Grim. The horde pillaged everything, and left almost no survivors. Except for me, because I was with my mum at the time she locked me in the basement. And when I finally broke out, everyone was dead and the village was in ruins. Gojira, 
I'm guessing you don't want people to suffer from the grim mirror. Yeah, I want to make sure no one ends up like me. And I wear these gloves so no one knows. The freak that I am, to hide these disgusting horrifying arms. She was about to put on her gloves Eden until Gojira grabbed her hands. Gojira, you are not a freak. You aren't disgusting, you aren't horrifying. You're beautiful, Thesis arms are beautiful. They are a part of you. And you shouldn't hide the dot at least that's what I think about you. Mia smiles at him and puts her gloves away. This causes him to smile back at her. Mia, Goji close your eyes for a second. Gojira, what why? Mia, giggle just do it you dummy. He hesitantly complies. Once he closes his eyes he felt something wrap around his neck and something get pressed onto his lips. He opens his eyes to see a closed eyed Mia kissing him. He panicked for a split second before deciding to return the kiss and wrap arms around her waist. They kept kissing until they needed air and parted away from each other. Gojira, what was? Mia, you said you never had a girlfriend before right? Gojira, yeah. Mia, well, I guess I your first. She walked over to a nearby dumpster and put her gloves in them. Gojira, I had a great time. Thank you for this and everything you said. I'm really glad to be your partner. Gojira, of course. I would be lying if I didn't feel the same. Mia, yeah, you definitely enjoyed that last pop tilde. Gojira, rolls eyes. Come on let's go back. Mia, sure thing partner. The stray. It's been a week since Gojira and Mia's date. They have officially became a couple, not only that she revealed that she was a muto fauness. The reactions were mixed with the staff and her friends they were fine with it. However with some others they were definitely freaked out by her arms. But Gojira had explained exactly what she was to see Siax arm them down. That isn't all however, the two discussed in private, that if a girl likes him she has to make the move not him, in order to prove that he's faithful, as said by Mia. Maria seemed to support them, but in reality she hated it. She hated that her king now has his own queen and doesn't even know it. Similar to Ruby, she felt her chest hurt every time she saw Mia flirt with him so much. Luckily he told her that just because he is a girlfriend it doesn't affect the amount of time he'll spend with his sisters so that helped her. Yang. She hated Mia, but she didn't do anything as it would make her brother mad, so she tries to leave it. Blake, Fyra, Anna and Vice completely supported it, but they would feel at least a small form of jealousy at times. Currently Team RWBY and Gojira were around Vale that was being set up in preparation of the Vital Festival. Vice. The Vital Festival. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. Ruby, I don't think I've ever seen you smile this much. Vice, it's kinda weirding me out. Gojira, yeah, I agree you, feeling alright snowflake. Vice, how could you not smile? A festival dedicated to the cultures of the world. There will be dances, parades, a tournament. Oh, the amount of planning and organization that goes into this event is simply breathtaking. Yang. You really know how to take a good thing and make it sound boring. Vice, quiet. You, Yang, remind me again why we're spending our Friday afternoon visiting the stupid docks. Ruby, uck, they smell like fish. Gojira, I don't know why you're complaining it smells good. Plus of course it smells like fish were at the docks. Ruby, I almost forgot that fish was your favorite. Gojira, my my rubes I thought you knew me that isn't my favorite. Ruby, wait what? But I though. Yang. His favorite food isn't even food, it's dust. Blake, seriously? Yang, yep. Vice, ahem. Uh -huh. She catches everyone's attention once Adin and decides to answer the question given to her from earlier. I've heard that students visiting from Vacuo will be arriving by ship today. And, as a representative of Beacon, I feel as though it is my solemn duty to welcome them to this fine kingdom. Gojira, for some reason I highly doubt that. Blake. She wants to spy on them so she'll have the upper hand in the tournament. Vice, scoffs you can't prove that. Ruby, whoa. The team looks at a shattered window down the street and a door full of yellow caution tape of the Vale police force before walking over to the detective in front, who is writing on his pad. What happened here? Detective 1, robbery, second dust shop to be hit this week. This place is turning into a jungle. Yang, that's terrible. Detective 2. They left all the money again. Ruby, huh? Detective 1. Yeah, just doesn't make a lick of sense. Who needs that much dust? Gojira for some odd reason feels very uncomfortable considering the fact he tends to absorb 20 pounds if dust every week. Detective 2. I don't know. An army? Detective 1. You thinking the White Fang? 
Detective 2. Yeah, I'm thinking we don't get paid enough. Vice. HMPH. The White Fang. What an awful bunch of degenerates. Blake. What's your problem? Vice. My problem? I simply don't care for the criminally insane. Gojira. Vice only some of them are actually violent. It doesn't mean that they're all insane or something. Blake. Yeah, the White Fang is hardly a bunch of psychopaths. They're a collection of misguided fauness. Right Goji? Before he could say anything he was cut off by Vice. Vice. Misguided? They want to wipe humanity off the face of the planet. Blake. So then they're very misguided. Either way, it doesn't explain why they would rob a dust shop in the middle of downtown Vale. Ruby. Um, Blake's got a point. Besides, the police never caught that torchic guy Goji and I ran into a few months ago. Maybe it was him. Vice. That still doesn't change the fact that the White Fang are a bunch of scum. Those fauners only know how to lie, cheat, and steal. Yang. That's not necessarily true. Sailor One. Hey. Stop that fauness. As the team overhears the cry for help and rush over to investigate, a fauness with a golden monkey tail is seen running down the length of the boat and leaping onto the edge as the two sailors are about to apprehend him. Question mark colon thanks for the ride, guys. Sailor 2, you no good stowaway. Question mark colon hey. A no good stowaway would have been caught. I'm a great stowaway. Detective 1, hey, get down from there this instant. The monkey faunus drops the banana peel on the detective's face, who growls in return. The monkey-like faunus whirls up to crouch on the lamppost, laughs in amusement, and proceeds to leap off and run away from the detectives. As he runs past Team RWBY and Gojira, he winks at an astonished Blake in slow motion before time speeds up again and he continues to be chased by the officers. Yang, well, Vice, you wanted to see the competition. And there it goes. Vice. Quick. We have to observe him. Vice. Yang. And Ruby give chase. Blake stands still. Lost in thought. Then comes back to reality and follows her friends. The team rounds the next corner. But then Vice bumps into someone and trips. She looks up only to see Sun jump onto a building and disappear from her view. Vice. No. He got away. Yang. You. Vice. Vice finally sees that she fell on a smiling girl which startles the heiress and she hastily gets up. Penny, salutations. Gojira, hello. Yang, are you? Okay. Penny, I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. Yang, do you wanna get up? Penny, yes. Gojira offers a hand and pulls her up. My name is Penny. It's a pleasure to meet you. Ruby, hi Penny. I'm Ruby. Vice, I'm Vice. Blake, Blake. Yang, are you sure you didn't hit your head? Blake and Gojira hits her side. Oh. I'm Yang Gojira, and I'm Gojira Rose. It's nice to meet you. Penny then walks up to Gojira and began to eye him, and his spins before she springs to life. Penny, wow you look just like my friend Crew. Gojira, wait you know more gods in a faunus? Penny, yes in a way. I'm sure she would like to meet you. You look just like a male version of her with some other small differences like hair color. Gojira, yeah I definitely would. Penny, well it is a pleasure to meet all of you. Vice. You already said that. Penny, pauses so I did. Vice, well, sorry for running into you. They turn around and start walking away. Ruby, Gojira, take care, see your friend. Yang, she was. Weird. Vice, now, where did that faunist riffraff run off to? Penny suddenly jumps in front of Yang. Penny, what did you call me? Yang, oh, I'm really sorry. I definitely didn't think you heard me. Penny, no, not you. She walks through the group and leans her head down to Ruby and Gojira. You, Ruby. Me? I I don't know. I, what I, um, ah. Uh, Penny, you two called me friend. Am I really your friend? Ruby, um. She looks over Penny's shoulder while her teammates motion to deny her. Why yeah, sure. Why not? As the girls try to get up. Gojira. Of course. They fall over Ajin. Penny, sensational. We can paint our nails, and try on clothes, and talk about cute boys, like him. Gojira. Ah uh, thanks. Ruby. Oh. Is this what it was like when you met me? Vice. No, she seems far more coordinated. Yang, so. What are you doing in Vale? Penny, I'm here to fight in the tournament. Vice. Wait, you're fighting in the tournament? Penny, saluting I'm combat ready. Vice, forgive me, but you hardly look the part. Blake says the girl wearing a dress. Vice. It's a combat skirt. Ruby, 
Yeah. Vice holds out her hand and Ruby low fives it. Vice, wait a minute. Dot. If you're here for the tournament, does that mean you know that monkey tailed? Raps Callian. Penny. The who? She holds up a poor drawing of the criminal in question. Vice, the filthy fauness from the boat. Gojira, why do you have a drawing? Why is it so bad? And I recommend you stop saying that. Blake, yeah why do you keep saying that? Vice, huh? Blake, stop calling him a rapscallion. Stop calling him a degenerate. He's a person. Vice, oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to stop referring to the trash can as a trash can? Or this lamppost as a lamppost? Blake, stop it. Vice, stop what? He clearly broke the law. Give him time. He'll probably join up with those other fauness in the White Fang. Blake, you ignorant little brat. Vice, how dare you talk to me like that? I am your teammate. Blake, you are a judgmental little girl. Vice, what in the world makes you say that? Blake, the mere fact that you would sort that fauness boy with a terrorist group solely based on his species makes you just as much of a scoundrel as you believe him to be. Yang, um, I think we should probably go. Gojira, yeah. Let's just head to your dorm. Penny, where are we going? Gojira, Penny I just told you. Well anyway we'll see you soon. Vice, so you admit it. The White Fang is just a radical group of terrorists. Blake, that's not what I meant. And you know it. Small time skip. Gojira and Team RWBY were currently sitting in the team's dorm. Where Yang, Ruby, and Gojira are trying to calm Blake and Vice down as they're still fighting about the topic from before. Vice, I don't understand why this is causing such a problem. Blake, that is the problem. Vice, you realize you are defending an organization that hates humanity, don't you? The fullness of the White Fang are pure evil. Blake, there's no such thing as pure evil. Why do you think they hate humanity so much? It's because of people like Cardin, people like you, that force the White Fang to take such drastic measures. Vice. People like me, Blake, you're discriminatory, Vice, I'm a victim. Everyone's eyes widen while Gojira just raises an eyebrow, Vice, you want to know why I despise the White Fang? Why I don't particularly trust the fullness. It's because they've been at war with my family for years. War, as in actual bloodshed. My grandfather's company has had a target painted across its back for as long as I can remember. And ever since I was a child, I've watched family friends disappear, board members executed, an entire train car full of dust, stolen. And every day, my father would come home, furious, and that made for a very difficult childhood. Ruby, Vice, I, Vice, no, you want to know why I despise the White Fang? It's because they're a bunch of liars, thieves, and murderers. Blake, well maybe we were just tired of being pushed around. Silence drops down on the scene again. A surprised Vice backs away slowly, and Blake realizes her mistake as she looks around at her teammates. While Gojira slowly stood up. Gojira, Blake, Blake, I, I. She dashes out the door. Ruby, Blake, wait, come back. Gojira, Blake. She runs over to the door and calls to her down the hallway as Yang sits herself down and Vice looks down. Gojira stops at the door frame, his back started to flash blue. He raised his fist and punched the door frame completely destroying it. Everyone jumped from the sudden action. Gojira. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Vice why the fuck didn't you keep your damn mouth shut? You're just as bad as Cardin. You are just lied to the people at Atlas WHO killed my mum. Gojira begins to run after Blake. Ruby. I've never seen Gojira get so mad before. Yang. He's only like that when he's hurting. Especially when it's about his parents. Vice. W what did he mean by that? Dash. Over with Blake, she runs outside and arrives at a statue of an armored man with a sword and a hooded woman wielding an axe on an outcropping, staring at the bow of under the stone heroes in particular. She closes her eyes and slowly lifts her arms up to her bow and pulls the string to release the bow from her hair. She wipes away a tear away as the camera pulls up to reveal her fullness is on the verge of crying. She becomes startled when she hears a voice above her. Question mark colon I knew you looked better without the bow. Gojira, yeah you know I was starting to miss seeing those. She turns around and looks up. Time eskip. The next morning team RWBY and the rest of team GAM were searching for Gojira and Blake. Ruby, they've been gone all weekend. Vice, Blake's a big girl. I'm sure she can handle herself. And I can't believe he decided to take her side on this. Anna. I can. 
He hates them just as much as you. However he knows it wasn't all of their faults. He hates the people involved with his parents' murders, those who wanted their deaths, and the ones that took their lives. He knows not everyone is evil. Yang, Vice, come on. She's one of our teammates. Vice, is she? We all heard what she said. Ruby, Vice, Yang, maybe she is, maybe she isn't. Either way, she's missing, and we need to find her. Vice, a member of the White Fang. Right underneath our noses. Ruby, I just hope she's okay. Elsewhere, Blake is sipping a cup of tea and sighing. She looks up at the monkey faunus named Sun, who is sitting across from her and is holding his drink with his tail as his hand props his head up. While Gojira was sitting shoulder to shoulder with her holding her hand, and with the other hand holding a cup of hot cocoa, she takes a sip then puts her cup down. Blake, so, you want to know more about me, black and white son? Finally, she speaks. Nearly two days and you gave me nothing but small talk and weird looks. Blake gives son a firm look. Yeah, like that. Gojira. She needed to be ready to tell us, son. So we shouldn't rush her, Blake. Thanks for understanding Goji, Sunday. Are you familiar with the White Fang, son? Of course. I don't think there's a faunus on the planet who hasn't heard of them. Stupid, holier-than-thou creeps that use force to get whatever they want. Bunch of freaks, if you ask me. Blake. I was once a member of the White Fang. He promptly goes cross-eyed and chokes on his drink making him put it down and wipe his mouth as he holds up a hand to process this information. Son, wait a minute, you were a member of the White Fang? Blake, that's right. I was a member for most of my life, actually. You could almost say I was born into it, Blake. Back then, things were different. In the ashes of war, the White Fang was meant to be a symbol of peace and unity between humans and the Faunus. Gojira, yeah way different. My father was a human, and a doctor at Menagerie. He was respected. The all of a sudden someone wanted him dead. So they got the White Fang to do it. Blake, of course, despite being promised equality, the Faunus was subjected to discrimination and hate. Humanity still thought of us as lesser beings. And so, the White Fang rose up as a voice of our people. And I was there. Gojira, I would go to with my family till I was six. I would remember how passionate she would be. She didn't care about the fact I was a Godzilla Faunus but she put it aside and just saw me a normal faunus. She was a real sight to see back then. Blake, hey. Well I was at the front of every rally. I took part in every boycott. I actually thought we were making a difference, but I was just a youthful optimist. Then, I heard about the Serizawa family went missing. The only confirmed casualty was his father. I thought a human killed my best friend so I joined the White Fang. I was all going well. Then, five years ago, our leader stepped down, and a new one took his place. A new leader, with a new way of thinking. Son, what happened? Blake, suddenly, our peaceful protests were being replaced with organized attacks. We were setting fire to shops that refused to serve us, hijacking cargo from companies that used faunus labor. And the worst part was, it was working. We were being treated like equals, but not out of respect. Out of fear. Gojira, the complete opposite of what should have happened. It sounds like they lost what they were originally aiming for. Blake just nods and looks at her cup. Blake, so, I left. I decided I no longer wanted to use my skills to aid in their violence, and instead, I would dedicate my life to becoming a huntress. So here I am, a criminal hiding in plain view, all with the help of a little black bow. She wiggles her cat ears beneath the fashionable disguise to demonstrate. Son, so, have you told your friends any of this? Blake merely looks down in shame and says nothing, as Gojira rubs her back with sympathy. Dash. Ruby, Blake, Yang, Blake, over with Ruby, Yang, and Vice walking through town and calling in vain for their missing friends. Ruby, Blake, where are you? Yang, Blake, Ruby, why are you? You're not helping. Vice, oh, you know what might be able to help? The police. Ruby, uck, Vice, Vice. It was just an idea. Ruby, yeah, a bad one. Yang, Vice, I think we should hear her side of the story before we jump to any conclusions. Vice, I think that when we hear it, you'll all realize I was right. Penny, and I think Vice hair looks wonderful today. Ruby, ah, Penny, where did you come from? Penny, hey guys, what are you up to? Ruby, you, Yang, we're looking for our friend Blake, and Goji. Penny, ooh, 
You mean the Faunus boy and girl? Ruby, Vice, and Yang stare at Penny. Ruby, wait, how did you know that? Penny, Yuk, the cat ears. Yang, what cat ears? She wears a... Buh. The realization leaves them in silence as a tumbleweed blows through in the wind. Ruby, whispering she does like Tuna a lot. Penny, so, where are they? Ruby, we don't know. They've been missing since Friday. Penny, that's terrible. Well, don't you worry Ruby, my friend. I won't rest until we find your teammate. Ruby, ah, uh, that's really nice of you, Penny, but we're okay. Really? Right, guys? She looks over Penny to direct her question at Yang and Vice, whose blinking outlines are all that's left of their sudden departure from the company of the strange girl. A tumbleweed blows past them again in the quiet. Penny, it sure is windy today. Dash. Sun, Gojira and Blake are then seen walking down an alley. Sun, so, what's the plan now? Blake, I still don't believe the White Fang is behind these robberies. They've never needed that much dust before. Gojira, but what if they did? So far the only way to know if they didn't do it, is to a place they'll most likely do it again. Blake, the only thing is, I've no idea where that would be. Sun, well, while I was on the ship, I heard some guys talking about offloading a huge shipment of dust coming in from Atlas. Blake, how huge? Sun, huge. Big Shni Company Freighter. Blake, you're sure? Gojira. Then let's check it out. Dash. Yang. Thanks anyways. Size this is hopeless. You really don't care if we find her, do you? Vice, don't be stupid. Of course I do. I'm just afraid of what she'll say when we find her. The innocent never run. Yang. Yang looks down in thought. Dash. Penny, so, Blake is your friend? Ruby, yes, Penny. Penny, but you're mad at her? Ruby, yes. Well, I'm not. Vice is. Penny, is she friends with Blake? Ruby, well, that's kind of up in the air right now. Penny, but why? Ruby, sighs well. You see, Blake might not be who we thought she was. Penny, is she dating Gojira or is she a man? Ruby, no. No, Penny, she's. I don't know what she is or if they are dating they're just old friends. She didn't exactly talk to us before she decided to run off. Penny, I don't have a lot of friends, but if I did, I would want them to talk to me about things. Ruby, me too. Dash. Amidst the chirping of crickets and darkness of night, Blake and Gojira are laying flat on her stomach on the rooftop overlooking the shipment of Shnee dust containers. Son, did I miss anything? Blake, not really. They've offloaded the crates from the boat. Now they're just sitting there. Son, cool. I stole you some food. Blake, giving Son a questioning look. Do you always break the law without giving a second thought? Son, hey, weren't you in a cult or something? Blake delivers an angry glare at him. Gojira. Too soon Son. Just as he says this, the winds blows all around them, and they look up to see a bullhead searchlights flashing around for a landing spot descending in the middle of the cargo containers and extending a ramp for a black hooded individual with a metallic fanged mask to come out of. Blake, oh no, son, is that them? Gojira, yeah, it's them. White Fang soldier, all right, grab the tow cables. Son, you really didn't think they were behind it, did you? Blake, no, I think deep down I knew. I just didn't want to be right. She closes her eyes in despair only to open them suddenly when she hears a new voice. Roman, hey, what's the holdup? The soldiers look up at Roman gesturing widely and coming down the ramp. We're not exactly the most inconspicuous bunch of thieves at the moment. So why don't you animals try to pick up the pace? Gojira, it's Torchic. Son, who? Gojira, he's a known criminal around Vale. Ruby and I fought him right before we joined Beacon. But why is he leading them? Blake, I agree. This isn't right. The White Fang would never work with a human. Especially not one like that. She stands up and unsheaths the katana of Gamble Shroud before walking off the edge of the roof. Gojira quickly joins her and pulls unsheathed his katana and jumped off the building, leaving a crater once making contact with the floor. Son, hey, what are you guys doing? Blake falls to the ground in a crouch, then continues on to hide behind one of the containers. Peeking around the corner to see Roman berate a white fang member holding a coil of rope. Roman, no, you idiot. This isn't a leash. As he's looking around, Blake suddenly appears behind him with her blade at his throat, as Gojira points his blade at the white fang members. What the oh, breath, Blake, nobody move. 
The White Fang soldiers ready their guns and equip their swords in response. Roman, whoa, take it easy there, little lady, and is that scaly I see, I guess we meet Ajin. Gojira, shut it. As the White Fang closes in on them, Blake uses her free hand to go for her bow and remove it, causing the ribbon to fall away as her four nurses are shown to the world. Blake, brothers of the White Fang. Why are you aiding this scum? The White Fang members lower their weapons a little at this development, unsure of what to do, when Roman laughs. Roman, oh, kids, didn't you get the memo? Blake, what are you talking about? Roman, the White Fang and I are going in on a joint business venture together. Blake, tell me what it is or I'll put an end to your little operation. Suddenly, the air is filled with more turbines blowing the wind wildly around the hold up. Roman. I wouldn't exactly call it a little operation. Two more bullheads are hovering above the heist, and as Blake watches in horror, Roman smiles and manages to fire his cane at Blake's feet, resulting in a large explosion. Dash. Penny and Ruby turn around upon hearing the noise, seeing the smoke rise from the docking bay just a few buildings away. Ruby, oh, no. Penny, I will call for backup. Dash. Blake. Dazed but relatively unhurt on the ground, quickly rolls and runs out of the way of Roman's continued attacks, flaming missiles destroying cargo behind her as she retreats behind more containers. Roman. Here, Kitty, Kitty, Kitty. His taunt is interrupted when a banana peel lands on his head, causing him to look up and growl at the assailant. Sun leaps from the container above Roman and drops down on the criminal's face feet first, rolling up and readying himself to fight. Sun. Leave her alone. The bullheads open to let more White Fang members descend on the scene, standing by Roman as he gets up and surrounding Sun. Roman. You're not the brightest banana in the bunch, are you, kid? With that said, the White Fang charge at the monkey fauness, but he manages to dodge slashes and get some of the soldiers with his fists and kicks until he rolls out of the way, pulling out a collapsible red staff. He quickly uses this to beat down on each opponent that nears him falling each one in a single flaming blow when he twirls, even creating a scorching shockwave to beat the last of them. Blake peers around the corner of the container to watch Sun jump around and beat more White Fang soldiers, causing one to fly over Roman's head. The crime boss growls in annoyance and aims his cane at Sun, firing the shot that he defends himself from just when Blake leaps into the action. Blake, he's mine. Blake goes in close and becomes a blur of after images as she slashes both blades at Roman, who backs away and deflects each would be blow with his cane at unbelievable speeds. Blake continues to dash, hop over, and slide around Roman to try and find a weak spot, but her enemy, while barely deflecting the attacks, lands a few hits on Blake until one final beating with his cane causes her to go down. Just as Roman deals with one opponent, Sun appears right behind her and disconnects his staff in two spinning circles of flame-firing shotgun nunchucks that only slow down once to show the audience what they are before becoming twin arcs of offense again. Sun swings each gun at Roman while firing everything he has at him, but even with the rapid series of shots and flying bullets, Roman manages to defend himself against every bullet and hit until a millisecond-long pause allows Blake to get a slash in and knock him back. On his back, Roman notices a container hanging by a crane right above the two warriors, and gets up to fire his cane at its supports. Blake leaps behind it, but Sun barely misses when he jumps forward, ending up right below the nozzle of Roman's cane. Just as he's about to fire, Sun clutches his eyes preparing to take the hit, until he feels something wax him and he hears an explosion. Sun opens his eyes and holds his side as that's where he was hit, but not by the explosion by something else. He and Blake saw Gojira standing there in the smoke. His jacket and shirt were burned off, with most of his upper body bleeding. Gojira tried to step forward but immediately fell to his knees. Blake, Goji, son, he saved me. Gojira slowly began to heal, but it wasn't enough. Torchic began to walk over to the Godzilla fauness. He raised his cane preparing for another attack, until he heard a familiar voice. Ruby, hey. Ruby appears on the rooftop overlooking them. Crescent Rose extended and ready for action. Roman. Well, hello, Red. Isn't it past your bedtime? Gojira took the opportunity and started to charge up. However all he could do was fire a weak atomic breath at Roman, knocking him back. Gojira, painfully thanks Ruby. Remind me to get you some cookies later. 
But right now I need to get in the water. Gojira jumps of the docks and begins to swim deep down, until his backs began to glow and his body became covered in scales as he grew larger. Penny, Ruby, are these people your friends? Ruby, Penny, get back. While her attention is diverted, Roman holding his stomach gets up and snarls, firing his cane at her launching the young huntress in training back from the explosion's force and sending her scythe flying away. Ah, Roman gives off a professional level evil laugh at his attack on the young girl. Penny turns her head toward the criminal and gives her first glare, walking forward while Ruby tries to get back up. Ruby, Penny, wait. Stop. Penny, don't worry, Ruby. I'm combat ready. Her backpack mechanically opens up and from its dark depths comes a single sword that extends and multiples into several blades hovering over Penny's back. Leaping from the rooftop with the weapons acting as wings, she sends three of her swords to knock two white fang soldiers down before even landing on the ground, where she proceeds to fling the swords at one enemy, impale another to a wall, create a barrier of spinning steel against a running attack, leaping over a goon with her swords in tow and finally making a wheel that she throws to knock multiple fauness off their feet. Son, whoa, he says as he runs to safety. Eight more bullheads come from the skies and open fire on the battle, but Penny merely forms a shield and launches two of her swords into the wall behind her, which in turn pull their wielder back with their strings. When her swords swirl around her again, she commands them to open their points and build up a large glowing ball of green light, with a punching action. Several bright lasers crack the pavement when they fire at the transports and slice about three in half, causing several of the White Fang members inside to fall and letting Ruby watch as bullets fall in pieces behind her. Stunned, she turns back to Penny as she aims her swords at the remaining bullets holding the crate of dust and pulls back on their wires, tugging the aircraft with them. Ruby, whoa, how is she doing that? Seeing the bullhead's flight fall under Penny's control. Roman grimaces and turns to run towards the last transport. Penny, after her large green pupils dilate for a second, pulls with all her might on the strings, and the aircraft crashes into a stack of crates, causing an explosion as a result. Roman. These kids just keep getting weirder. His bullhead and four others began to escape until, a yellow beam destroyed two of the other bullheads. Everyone looked to see a woman wearing all silver. She had long silver and black hair and yellow eyes. She seemed to be wearing an Atlas military uniform, but three things made his special, the first two being her metal dorsal plates and a mechanical tail. Lastly she also had a sharp mechanical right arm. They all noticed that her mouth was steaming yellow steam. Penny, cr you finally came. Cr I got the distress signal. Of course I came. Ruby, she does look a lot like Goji, well minus the robot parts, the remaining bullheads including Roman stopped and all began to aim their weapons towards the cyborg, they were about to fire until, a large spiky tail smashed two of the three remaining bullheads. Everyone turned to see a giant monster standing in the ocean, it was a Godzilla, more specifically Gojira in his Kaiyu form. Roman, oh my um, get us out of here. He yelled at the pilot, the bullhead began to turn, but then Kri raised her right arm and shot a cable into the side of the bullhead. She raised her tail and smashed it into the ground locking her in place. She then turned to the girls watching her. Cr well kids fun just stand there, help. She ordered Ruby slash Penny, right. Ruby and Penny both grab onto the cable and began to pull. The bullhead struggled to escape, until Roman noticed the problem. He opened the doors and leaned out aiming his cane at the cable. He shot it destroying the cable. However he wouldn't be leaving as the Godzilla shot an atomic breath at the side making it crash land onto the docks. Gojira began to flash as he slowly walked to the docks, and fell over. Penny, I'll get him. Ruby and Krig grab Roman. The two nodded and headed to the crash site. They looked at the destroyed bullhead, but they couldn't find any signs of Roman. Ruby, dang it he got away. Ajahn, Krig kinda wished that Godzilla killed him. Speaking of which, do you know that Caillou? I was told I was the only one left or at least I was a remnant of one. Ruby, oh he's my brother. Or well adopted his real parents were killed so we adopted him. His name is Gojira. Chris suddenly got a headache. Ruby asked her what was wrong but she just said she was fine. The two went back to Penny who was holding a very bloody and knocked out Gojira in her arms. Ruby and Penny looked sad at his sight. However Chris for some reason was enraged. Short time skip. Later. 
A handful of police cars are at the docks, where Ruby, Blake, Sun, Crew, Penny and a sleeping Gojira are sitting on boxes in silence. That is, until Vice and Yang appear on the scene. Ruby, look Vice, it's not what you think, she explained the whole thing. See, she doesn't actually have a bow, she is Kitty is and they're actually kind of cute. Blake, Vice, I want you to know that I'm no longer associated with the White Fang. Back when I was with their Vice, stop. Do you have any idea of how long we've been searching for you? 12 hours. That means I've had 12 hours to think about this. And in that 12 hours, I've decided. Yang, Sun, and Ruby look on, worried. Vice, I don't care. Blake, you don't care? Vice, you said you're not one of them anymore, right? Blake, no, I, I haven't been since I was younger. Vice, ah ba 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 ba. I don't want to hear it. All I want to know is that the next time something this big comes up, You'll come to your teammates, and not some, looking at Sun behind her as she catches herself. Someone else. Blake. Of course. She wiped a tear away, as her teammates smile at her. Vice smiles and nods. The moment is serious for a second more until Ruby screams, Ruby, yeah. Team RWBY is back together. Vice. I'm still not quite sure about how I feel about you. She says pointing at Sun who just nervously laughs and we need to get Gojira to get some medical attention or else his team will be very mad at us. Blake, okay. I will need to talk to him after all of this though. Ruby, hey, wait a minute. Where's Penny? Dash. From the darkened back seat of a limo, Penny watches the group of friends reuniting with each other. Penny's driver, you should know better than to go running around in a strange city. Penny, I know, sir. Cr Penny, your time will come. Dash. Meanwhile, Ozpin is seen holding a scroll showing a live feed of Ruby at the docks. He closes the video and opens up a communication with Crow, whose team name and other information is left blank and his only message is, Queen has pawns. Ozpin, um, dash. Later that night Blake visited Gojir at the medical room where they've been told he'll stay there for the week as he used too much energy from taking that explosion, to using his atomic breath and transforming all while trying to heal, which caused him to fail using all of his abilities, so he has to rest before he could be back to normal and use his abilities freely. She was currently sitting next to him as he was still unconscious. She was holding his hand as tears threatened to drop. Blake, I'm sorry Goji, that you like this, because of me. I chose to let you guys come with me now. You might not even wake up for another week. She was about to get up and leave before she felt a grip on her hand. She looked and saw Gojira waking up. Gojira, groaned Blake, is that you? Blake was wide-eyed and immediately hugged her friend. Blake, oh my um you're okay. Gojira, yeah, but can you let go everything sorta still hurts. Blake, oh right sorry. Gojira, so where am I? Blake, medical wing of Beacon, you're gonna have to stay here for a about a week. You used up too much energy that you won't be even to use your regeneration or you aura. Gojira, I'm going have to ask Fyra if she can include me in Johnny's training then. Blake, hey Goji. Gojira, yeah? What is I? He was stopped as Blake put his hands on his cheek and kissed him. The kiss lasted about 10 seconds before they stop. Blake, I know you have a girlfriend already. But could you just give us a chance one day? I used to have a crush in you as kids. And when you disappeared those feelings never left, it felt wrong when I was in other relationships. Then when I saw you again, you have no idea how much I missed you, I'll have nightmares of you being taken Najin, because on how little we talk to each other because we're on different teams, and you tend to only hang out with your team. But, Gojira, but, Blake, but the past weekend has been the most fun I've ever had. Even if the last day were just on a stakeout, so please. Would you give us a chance? Gojira, Blake. I. Then the door opens to reveal Mia, with a smug smile on her face. Mia, okay. That's all I have to hear. Blake, ha I'm surprised you're the first one with the balls to confess to him even though he already has a girlfriend. Blake, eh Mia this is just a misunderstanding. Mia, be honest you love him right? Blake, why yes, of course I love him. Mia, okay then, we'll share him. Blake, share? Mia, yeah. Share you and I will date him. Oh and before I forget, she walked over to Gojira and kissed him on the lips. I just wanted to make sure this Godzilla was okay. Before she walked out she slipped Blake a pay ice of paper. Mia. I'll tell Maria and Anna that you woke up and, they've been worried sick. Gojira. 
All right, see you later. He looks at Blake. Where was I? Right, of course I would because I love you too, he said with smile. The two hugged each other and gave each other a quick kiss, before Blake had to leave. As she walked back to her dorm she had a small smile on her face and looked over the pay ice of paper Goji's other girlfriend gave her. It had a series of names and a note. Gather these girls together before Gojira wakes up, and talk to them about what to do with him. As I know these girls should have potential crushes on him. Ruby. Vice. Yang. Fyra. Maria. Blake looks over the paper in shock. Blake, they all like him. Best day ever. The owner of the dust shop from dusk till dawn is hanging a sign declaring its reopening. As he climbs down from his ladder, he stumbles and falls. A girl with mint green hair, red eyes and dark skin named Emerald Sustri appears next to him. Emerald, giggling excuse me, sorry. I'm not really from around here. She helps him to his feet. Would you mind pointing me in the direction of this shop? Emerald produces a piece of paper with writing on it and the shopkeep looks it over. Shopkeep. <laughs> Emerald walks away from the shop owner as both wave goodbye and passes Mercury Black at a corner. A boy with silver spiky hair. Mercury, I knew you were lost. Emerald, Mercury. I will seriously pay you to shut up. She produces a wallet with lean and waves it in Mercury's face. Mercury, that's not your money. Emerald but it can be yours for five minutes of silence. Mercury, MMM. No deal. Emerald, fine. Mercury, whatever, you want me. Mercury and Emerald continue walking through the city. Mercury, so, how much farther? Emerald, a few blocks. Mercury, ugh. This place is so dull. Emerald, A, eh, I kinda like it. Dull buildings, diverse culture. Mercury, and nice dopey people who are easy to pickpocket. Emerald stops. Emerald, that's every city. Mercury, ooh, Emerald. Master thief, please don't take my money. I barely have enough to get by. Emerald glares at him, groaning angrily. She then walks away from him. Mercury, ugh. You're no fun today. Mercury follows behind Emerald. The scene shifts to Emerald and Mercury entering a shop full of books. As they walk in Emerald overhears three people talking. Question mark colon Anna I don't see how getting him a book as a get well gift would work. Emerald sees a girl in black with grim like arms, which scared her a bit before calming down, talking to a girl in a golden dress with two golden tails and wings. Anna, Mia. You may be his girlfriend, but I know a bit more than you do when it comes to Gojira. He loves fish, which is what Maria is getting him. Dust, which I bought him and to read. Mia. So you're implying I buy him a book? Anna, he wasted too much energy at the docks, his scroll will die based off how much he uses it, and I've seen him asking Blake if he could borrow a book from her called. What was it? Mia, now that you mentioned it, I think it was something called Third Crusade, it came out a while ago, I think it's a sequel to a book or something. Anna, oh so you do listen to him? Mia, of course I would, I love him, wait are you jealous or something? If you are make your move then. I already let Blake be his second girlfriend. You should join I want to see how big his harem grows. Anna just rolls her eyes. She keeps searching for the book however it isn't there. Anna, let's go. They don't have it there. Let's try the bookstore Blake goes to. Mia, hey you never answered my question. The black and red girl said to her friend as they left the store. The shop owner can be heard humming a tune. Mercury stops near the door to look at books while Emerald approaches the counter and rings a service bell. Taxon, be right there. Emerald looks back at Mercury. The shop owner is seen through a set of double doors carrying stacks of books as he walks backwards and out toward the counter. Taxon, welcome to Taxon's book trade, home to every book under the sun. How may I? He turns around, he gasps and hesitates upon recognizing the two of them. Mercury is now holding a book. How may I help you? Mercury, just browsing. Emerald, actually, I was wondering. Do you have any copies of The Thief and the Butcher? Taxon, yes we do. Emerald, excitedly that's great. Taxon, would you like a copy? Emerald, no, just wondering. Oh, oh, what about Violet's Garden? In paperback? Mercury, he's got it. Hardback too. Emerald, ooh, options are nice. Mercury, a, no pictures. Hey, do you have any comics? Taxon, near the front. Emerald, what? About Third Crusade? Taxon, um, I don't believe we carry that one. Mercury, oh, Emerald, what was this place called again? Taxon, 
Tuxen's book trade, Emerald, and you're Tuxen? Tuxen, that's right, Emerald, so then I take it that you're the one that came up with the catchphrase? Tuxen, yes, Mercury, and, what was it again? Tuxen, Tuxen's book trade, home to every book under the sun. Mercury, except the third crusade. Tuxen, it's just a catchphrase. Mercury, it's false advertising. Emerald, you shouldn't make a promise you can't keep. Tuxen, I hear that you're planning on leaving. Moving all the way to Vacuo. Your brothers in the White Fang won't be happy to hear that. And neither are we. You know who we are, don't you? Tuxen, yes. Emerald, and you know why we're here? Tuxen, yes. Emerald, so. Are you going to fight back? Tuxen, yes. Tuxen produces claws from his fingers. Yarg. Tuxen leaps atop his counter in a threatening manner. Mercury and Emerald back up slightly and he leaps at Emerald and slashes at her, but she dodges. He looks forward and is surprised at Mercury as he raises one leg for a kick with his shotgun greaves. Mercury and Emerald exit. Tuxen's book trade. Emerald stretches her arms overhead. Mercury is carrying a comic. Emerald, what's with that? Mercury, I like the pictures. Dash. In the Beacon Academy cafeteria. Team RWBY are sitting together as Blake looks over the note Mia gave her. Yang then slides up next to her partner, which causes Blake to quickly hide it in her notebook. Yang, whatcha doing? Blake, nothing. Blake closes her book. Just going over notes from last semester. Yang catches a grape in her mouth. Yang, lame. Nora giggles as she continues to toss grapes at Yang with her spoon. Yang catches the fruit with ease, giving Nora the thumbs up. Ruby giving an enormous heave, slams a binder onto the table, catching everyone off guard. On the cover of the binder is written Vital Festival Activities, Property of Vaishni. This has been hastily crossed out with a red marker pen, and with the same pen, a new title, Best Day Ever Activities, has been written underneath. Ruby, clears her throat sisters. Friends, Vice, Vice, hey, Ruby. Four score and seven minutes ago, I had a dream. Yang, this ought to be good. She catches another berry in her mouth. Ruby, a dream that one day, the four of us will come together, as a team, and have the most fun anyone has ever had. Ever. Vice. Did you steal my binder? Ruby makes peace signs with both hands. Ruby, I am not a crook. Blake, what are you talking about? Ruby, I'm talking about kicking off the semester with a bang. Yang. I always kick my semesters off with a yang. Eh? Guys, am I right? An apple is tossed at yang and hits her in the face. She glares at Nora. Nora. <laughs> Question mark colon seriously. That's the first thing I hear when I recover. You really don't have the yang of telling jokes, huh? Team Ruby turns to see Gojira standing there in his uniform. Whitney tray of food. Ruby and Yang smiled at their brother's recovery. Ruby was about to hug him but somehow Blake beat her to it. The thing that shocked them was that Gojira kissed her on the cheek. Blake. Glad to see you're okay. Gojira. Yeah. Well I still can't use my atomic breath for the next two days. But somehow my aura seems to have gotten stronger. The doctor said it had to do with all the energy used for my Kyuva stuck with me or something. The two looked looked at the rest of the team who were still shocked until Ruby recovered. Ruby, what just happened? Why did you kiss her? Yang, yeah. I would like to know that too. Gojira, to Blake wait did you not tell them? Blake, I didn't know how. RWY, tell us what? Blake, the night Goji woke up, I confessed to him, and he felt the same so we became a couple. Vice, wait are you cheating in Mia? Gojira, no not at all, she was actually okay with it. She said she wanted his harem to grow or something. She's still my girlfriend. Blake, it's just I'm his second. We're sharing him. Ruby, I I. Yang, she's fine with it. Blake, listen I'll tell you guys soon okay. Vice, I don't want to think of this anymore. Ruby can you continue what you were doing from before? Ruby then snaps out of her daze. Ruby, look guys, it's been a good two weeks and between more exchange students arriving and the tournament at the end of the year. Our second semester is going to be great, but, classes start back up tomorrow. Which is why I've taken the time to schedule a series of wonderful events for us today. Vice, I don't know whether to be proud or scared of what you have in store. Yang, still glaring at Nora, picks up an apple and tosses it across the room. Off screen, an unfamiliar voice shouts hey, and Nora can be heard giggling. Blake, I don't know. I think I might sit this one out. Vice, 
sit out or not, I think that however we spend this last day, we should do it as a team. Nora, I got it, Vice. I for one think that Vice is interrupted by a pie landing on her face. Nora is shown to be the one who threw the pie. She sits down and points at Ren who has his head in his palm. Pia's hand is over her mouth and Johnny simply sits staring wide-eyed while covering his ear with his palm. Dash. In the hallway leading to the cafeteria Sun was talking to his teammate Neptune, about the events from the last couple days, specifically what happened with him, Blake and Gojira. Neptune, man, that's harsh. Sun, I know, we were fighting side by side. She was super fast and I threw a banana at the guy which sounds gross, but it was awesome. And the other guy took a bullet for me I owe him my life. Neptune, nice. Son, right? And the best part is, she's a fullness. But that's a secret, okay? Not only that I saw him turn into a giant monster, like the ones in those stories. Neptune, got it. Son leans in close in order to stress the importance of this secret. Son, and not a, I'm gonna go tell Scarlet the second son turns his back secret, I'm talking secret secret. Neptune, whoa, chill out, man, okay? I got it, I got it. Son, you better just don't want to screw this up, you know? The people here are the coolest. No offense to you guys. Neptune, none taken. Son, they're just in here. I'm really excited for you to meet them. So be cool, okay? You're gonna be cool, right? Neptune, Dude. Neptune's teeth gleam as he smiles. Son, good point. Question mark colon how is that a good point? They turn to see three girls, one with black hair with two large red streaks, red eyes and gloves that almost reach to her shoulders. Another girl, she had bright golden eyes and dark gold hair. She was wearing what looked like a golden dress and cloak. She had two golden tails coming out from under her clothes and the last girl was shorter than the other two had short white hair and bright blue eyes. She had two massive moth-like wings, sticking out her back. Neptune, why hello ladies he says as he does a short bow. All of the girls, nope. Neptune was taken back on how fast his rejection was. Son, sorry for him, I'm um, what are your names? He asked the three, the golden one spoke first. Mia, my name is Mia Spirit, and listen blue head, you're cute. But I got a boyfriend who is leaks better than you. Neptune once agent took a step back. Mia, the golden girl is Anna G and the short adorable one is Maria Sora. We're members of Team Gam. Our leader is Gojira Sarai Zawa Rose. Son, yo, you know Gojira? Anna, yes, how do you know him? Son, he saved me when we were fighting Torchic at the docks. Maria, he's always saving people, it's like first nature for him. He's so cool. Mia. Geez just kiss him already then, Maria, ah, well I can't because he's your boyfriend, Anna, and Blake's, son, wait Goji is your boyfriend and Blake's, Mia, yes, now I'm afraid we must cut this short as he just texted us to come, something about backup, the all head in the cafeteria to just hear, beacon student, food fight, many students are shown stampeding out the door past son, Neptune, and team Gam, the latter of whom is looking quite worried. Nora, ahahaha. Team JNPR are shown to be standing atop a tower of tables stacked in a ramshackle manner. Nora, I'm queen of the castle. I'm queen of the castle. Ruby, justice will be swift. Justice will be painful. Ruby crushes a carton of milk in her hand. It will be delicious. Team RWBY, raising their fists simultaneously. Yeah. Nora, off with their heads. Nora jumps down from the top of her tower and the food fight begins. Ruby, Yang, Turkey. Yang rolls over to the turkeys and sticks her fists inside them, proceeding to block and punch the melons as they speed toward her. After some fighting, Nora knocks Vice into a pillar. The impact knocks her out and Ruby holds her in her arms as the pillar collapses around them. Ruby, Vice, Vice, don't leave me. No. The fighting resumes. JNPR slammed against a cracked wall painted with soda and food. Team JNPR slides off the wall, leaving only their outlines. Son, I love these guys. Maria, wait where's Goji? Team Gam look around to see Gojira holding lunch tray with some food as he is hiding under a table eating. Mia, babe what are you doing? Gojira, seriously the day I recover and decide I want some food next thing I know a war starts. I need you guys to help me end this whole thing as fast as possible. Anna? Of course what do we have to do? Team JNPR stood up ready to continue the fight with a tired Ruby and Blake. 
Ter was about to start until Melon started to drop from the sky. They look up to see Maria and Anna both dropping melons like as if they were bombs, with it resulting of Johnny and Ren getting knocked down as Nora and Fyra dodge. All of a sudden they were knocked down by Gojira with his tail, and Mia with a loaf of bread. Thus end of the battle. The doors behind them open and Glinda enters the room growling. She proceeds to use telekinesis to reorganize the room. Glinda, children. Please, do not play with your food. Nora burps aloud as both Team JNPR and Team RWBY try and fail to compose themselves. A screaming Yang begins to fall only for a Gojira to catch her. Yang, thanks Goji. Glinda grumbles. Ozpin approaches and places a hand on her shoulder. Ozpin, let it go. Glinda, they're supposed to be the defenders of the world. Ozpin, and they will be. But right now they're still children. So why not let them play the part? After all. It isn't a role they'll have forever. Dash. Elsewhere in a not so abandoned warehouse, the White Fang are moving crates as Emerald and Mercury enter. Roman. Oh, look. She sent the kids again. This is turning out just like the divorce. Roman approaches the two from behind and wraps his arms around them in a group hug. Emerald, spare us the thought of you procreating. Emerald and Mercury pull away from Roman. Roman, that was a joke. And this. Just might tell me where you two have been all day. Emerald, what? Uh, Roman, I'm a professional, sweetheart. Pay attention, maybe you'll learn something. He holds up a piece of paper. Why do you have this address? Emerald, wouldn't you like to know? Roman, yeah, I would. Now where have you been all day? Mercury, cleaning up your problems. One of them, at least. Roman, I had that under control. Mercury, two packed bags and a ticket out of Vale said otherwise. Roman, listen. You little punk, if it were up to me, then I would take you and your little street rat friend here and question mark colon do what, Roman? A woman in a red and yellow appears on a platform above them. She steps onto an automated lift, riding it down to their level. She had black hair, with dom of it covering her left eye, which her eyes almost glow to amber color. Roman, I'd, ah, uh, not kill them, Emerald. Excitedly Cinder. Cinder, I thought I made it clear that you would eliminate the would-be runaway. Roman, I was going to. Emerald, he was going to escape to vacuo. Mercury and I decided to take it upon ourselves to kill the rat. Mercury, I think he was some sort of cat, actually. Emerald, what? Like a puma? Mercury, yeah, there you go. Cinder, quiet. Did I not specifically instruct you two to keep your hands clean while in veil? As Cinder speaks. Roman points a finger at the pair while laughing in agreement. Emerald, I just thought. Roman uses his fingers to mime having a slit throat. Question mark colon don't think. Obey. The four seer women walk out of the shadows who was just as intimidating as Cinder. She had long black hair and had a golden crest on her head, resembling crown, as well as some crystals on the side of her face. She wore a dark blue and red dress, with crystals on the shoulders. She had a long tail with crystals sticking out of the tail, as well as her back. Her name was Astrid. She was sitting on a levitating throne made of gems. Emerald. Yes ma'am. It won't happen again. Astrid. And you. Why wasn't this job done sooner? Roman. Ah. Uh, a. 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 Sorry if I've been busy stealing every speck of dust in the kingdom. Mercury, you're an inspiration to every punk with a gun and a ski mask. Emerald laughs at the remark. Roman, look around, kid. I've got this town running scared. Police camping out at every corner, dust prices through the roof, and we're sitting pretty on an old warehouse with more dust crystals, vials, and rounds than we know what to do with. Speaking of which, if you guys wouldn't mind filling me in on your grand master plan, it might actually make my next string of robberies go a little smoother. Cinder, oh, Roman, have a little faith, you'll know what you need when you need to know it. Besides, we're done with dust. Roman, oh, okay, then what now? Cinder, we're moving, have the white fang clear out this building. I'll send you details and coordinates tonight. Roman, coordinates? Astrid, we're proceeding to phase two. Cinder, Astrid. Mercury and Emerald begin to walk away. Roman attempts to light a cigar, but realizes Emerald has stolen his lighter. She turns back to face him and sticks her tongue out defiantly. As they walk away no one notices Astrid looking at her scroll, with an article of a giant monster destroying bullards at a docking bay, as well as a family photo, two parents holding a four-year-old girl with a small crest, and a newborn boy. Astrid, I'll find you little brother.
It'll make them regret forcing you to forget me. Once I finish with this I'll get you away from these pathetic creatures. She thinks as she swipes the photo revealing a familiar looking boy hugging a girl with red and black hair and silver eyes as well as a girl with yellow hair and lilac colored eyes. I'll get you back. Welcome to Beacon. Ozpin and Glinda were currently in Ozpin's office looking at the window as they see a fleet of Atlas ships arrive at Vale. Glinda, Ironwood certainly loves bringing his work wherever he travels. Ozpin, well, running an academy and a military makes him a busy man, but yes, those are a bit of an eyesore. A chirping beep sounds repeatedly. Ozpin turns to see a hollow message access requested on his desk. Come in. The doors slide open to reveal Ironwood as Ozpin approaches to greet him. Ironwood, Ozpin. Ozpin stands at attention. Ozpin, hello, General. Ironwood, please, drop the formalities. It's been too long. And Glinda, it has certainly been too long since we last met. Glinda, oh, James. I'll be outside. She walks away. Ironwood, well, she hasn't changed a bit. Ozpin, so, what in the world has brought you all the way down from Atlas? He picks up a mug and a kettle, pouring as he speaks. Headmasters don't typically travel with their students, for the vital festival. Ironwood, well, you know how much I love Vale this time of year. Besides, with you hosting, I thought that this might be a good opportunity for us to catch up. Ozpin, I can certainly appreciate the quality time between friends, however, a small fleet outside my window has me concerned. Ironwood, well, Concerned is what brought them here. Ozpin, I understand that travel between kingdoms has become increasingly difficult. Ironwood, Oz, you and I both know why I brought those men. Ozpin, we are in a time of peace. Shows of power like this are just going to give off the wrong impression. Ironwood, but if what Crow said is true. Ozpin, if what Crow said is true, then we will handle it tactfully. It's the vital festival, a time to celebrate unity and peace. So I suggest that you not scare people by transporting hundreds of soldiers halfway across the continent. Ironwood, I'm just being cautious. Ozpin, as am I. Which is why we will continue to train the best huntsmen and huntresses we can. After all your bomb lost us what was our only chance in beating her. Ironwood, and I have told you we considered bombing her but decided not to. But we're hacked and the bomb was launched anyway. After all she isn't completely gone. Ozpin, well. Wait what do you mean she isn't completely gone? Ironwood, we brought her back. We gave her a mechanical body, using her bones as structure. She doesn't have any memories of the past however, but everything she asked us we gave her nothing but the truth. So she will be the best chance we have after all. She is the only remnant of Kyofornus left. Ozpin, Unfortunately General you're wrong. Ironwood. What do you mean? Ask he asked that. The elevator door dings and reveals a boy with dorsal plates and a long scaly tail. Gojira. Professor why is there Atlas ships outside? Gojira's eyes twitch when he saw General Ironwood, but he quickly calmed down. Ozpin. Ah Mr. Rose, this is General Ironwood of Atlas. Ironwood this is Gojira Sir Isal Rose. He is the LA's leader of Team Gamma Team of all Kyofornus. Ironwood, Kyofornus? Wait Sir Aizawa. Gojira, so you were the one who ordered for my mother's death? You use the oxygen destroyer on someone defending themselves from a grim? Ironwood, I see you're Gojin's kid. Well I want you know I didn't give the order for her demise. Gojira, then who? He yelled at the general. Ozpin and the general were intimidated as Gojira was unconsciously growing and size's scales began to grow in him. Ironwood. It was a hacker. He pulled out his scroll and handed it to Gojira. Gojira looked at it to see a series of orders by Ironwood from that day. It had many orders with sending drones to the battle. However theirs was an order specially saying do not interfere with battle, as in notes says they have found out the monster is known as Godzilla and that it's in fact a fauness. Gojira, Sai did you ever find the hacker? Ironwood, no, we're however able to pinpoint where it happened. But once we arrived the person had already left the scene. All we know is they had to out someone from inside the military to get access to the bomb. Gojira, damn it, when I find them I'll make them pay. Ironwood, if we weren't ever to find them, so how can you? Gojira, first not if I will find them, because I have something they all lack, a grudge. But anyway, why did you bring a fleet to Vale aren't we in a time of peace? Ironwood. That's classified young Ma. Ozpin, do you remember that story I told you? 
Mr. Rose? Gojira, yeah, I meant to fight some war or something. Why? Ozpin looks at Ironwood then backs to Gojira. Ozpin, I want you to tell your team about it. Then report back to me. When I call you. Gojira, sir are you sure? Before you told me not to tell anyone. Ozpin, yes well you're aware one of your teammates already know. It's best you tell the other two. Gojira, alright, I'll see you then professor. Gojira enters the elevator and the doors shuts. As he leaves Ironwood turns to Ozpin. Ironwood, Oz are you sure this the best option? Ozpin, yes, he's our best chance at beating her. And it seems he already has followers whether he knows it or not. So then the battle is sooner than expected. It's best they know completely what they're getting themselves into. Dash. In the Beacon Academy Library, Team RWBY are shown playing Remnant. The game. Vice was going over notes. Yang was waiting for Ruby to make her move. Blake who is obviously distracted. And finally Ruby, who has been contemplating her next move. Ruby. Um, alright. Alright. Yang see how long. Prepare your kingdom for battle. Yang, bring it on. Ruby, I deploy the Atlesian air fleet. She slaps her car down on the table. Yang feigns a look of shock. Looks like I get to fly right over your ursi and attack your walls directly. Yang, you fiend. Ruby, and since Atlas is part of Mantle, my repair time is only one turn. Yang, pretty sneaky, sis, but you just activated my trap card. Giant Nevermore. If I roll a seven or higher, Fatal Feathers will slice your fleet in two. Ruby, but, if you roll a six or lower, the Nevermore will turn on your own forces. Yang, that's just a chance I'm willing to take. Team JNPR and half of Team Gamma are shown as Yang and Ruby banter on about the game. Ren and Pia are studying, and Nora's snot bubble inflats and deflates as she sleeps. Gojira and Maria were both going over types of Grim from her trusty Grim biology book. Ruby, no. My fearless soldiers. Yang. A, most of them were probably androids. Ruby, goodbye my friends, you will be avenged. Yang, not until I draw my rewards. Which are double this round thanks to the Mistral trade route. Ruby, bah. Nora, she snores and talks in her sleep. Oh, have pancakes. Yang, off screen, oh, and what's this? The smugglers of Wind Path. Pyre clears her throat and then confiscates a comic book Johnny is reading, trading it for a textbook. Ruby. Ba ba, I say. Yang, I say. It looks like I'm taking two cards in my hand. As Pi reads Johnny's comic, a Nevermore player piece is tossed over Johnny's shoulder. Another piece bounces off of his head. Ruby, have you no heart? Ruby collapses on the table, groaning. No. Yang, well, Vice, it's your turn. Vice, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Yang, look, it's easy. You're playing as Vacuo which means that all Vacuo based cards come with a bonus. Vice, that sounds dumb. Yang starts looking through Vice cards. Yang, see? You've got Sandstorm, Desert Scavenge. Oh, oh. Resourceful Raider. See? Now you can take Ruby's discarded air fleet. Ruby, no. Yang, and put it in your hand. Vice, okay. Yang, and since Vacuo warriors have an endurance against natural based hazards, you can use Sandstorm to disable my ground forces and simultaneously infiltrate my kingdom. Just know that I will not forget this declaration of war. Vice, and that means. Ruby, you're just three moves away from conquering Remnant. Vice, why yes. Fear the almighty power of my forces. Cower as they pillage your homes and weep as they take your children from your very arms. Yang, trap card. Vice, huh? Yang, your armies have been destroyed. Vice slumps in her chair cries and whines. Vice, I hate this game of emotions we play. Ruby hops into Vice lap. Ruby, stay strong. Vice, we'll make it through this together. Vice, shut up. Don't touch me. Yang. All right Blake, you're up. Blake, oh, um, sorry. What am I doing? Yang, you're playing as Vale, trying to conquer the kingdoms of Remnant. Blake, right. Gojira, Blake don't force yourself the only person to have ever beat her is me. Vice. Then why don't you play? Gojira looks up at Vice. Gojira, retired. Apparently I am too cruel or destructive or something. Ruby, you were. It was scary seeing you play. Johnny, hey, can I play? Ruby, sorry Johnny. We've already got four people. Vice. Besides, this game requires a certain level of tactical cunning that I seriously doubt that you possess. Yang, Yuk, 
You attacked your own naval fleet two turns ago. Journey, bring it on, Ice Queen. I'll have you know that I have been told that I am a natural born leader. Vice, by who? Your mother? Journey, a by Goji and Pyre. Pyre, hello again. She says while Gojira waves his tail still focused on the book. Journey, come on. Let me play your hand for a turn. Vice, I'm not trusting you with the good citizens of Vacuo. Journey, why not? You've trusted me with way more important stuff before. I mean, you told us all that Blake is secretly a far pyre, fun-loving person, whom we all admire and respect. Everyone looks nervously at Blake who looks obviously annoyed that her secret is out. Gojira, Journey what the fuck? Journey, ah uh, sorry, right. That. Ladies. Enjoy your battle. Son, sup losers. Gojira, hey man. Ruby, hey son. Son, Ruby, Yang, Blake, Gojira, Maria, Ice Queen. Vice, why does everyone keep calling me that? Son, I never got a chance to formally introduce you to my old friend. Neptune, you aren't libraries for reading? Ren slash Gojira, thank you. Nora, pancakes. Son, shut up. Don't be a nerd. Neptune, J, 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 J. Intellectual, okay? Thank you. He turns to everyone. I'm Neptune. Vice. So Neptune, where are you from? Neptune, Haven. And I don't believe I've caught your name, Snow Angel. Vice. Um, I'm Vice. She said as she averted he gazed to Gojira, as if she was asking for help. Gojira got up and walked over to them. Gojira, my name is Gojira Serizawa Rose. I'm Ruby and Yang's stepbrother. And I'm also the leader if Team Gam. Neptune. Pleasure to meet you, son, to Blake I never took you as the board game playing type. Blake, as she speaks, she shoves Sun aside and leaves the room. Right, well, I think I'm done playing actually. I'll see you guys later. Gojira, I'll go check on her. Maria, can you go back to our dorm, and tell everyone he'll be back in a bit, he says as he leaves the room as well. Nora, women, dash. Blake was alone in her dorm reading until someone knocked on her door. Gojira. Blake, you in there? Blake, yeah, you can come in I'm just reading. Gojira walks in, and sits next to Blake before giving her a kiss on the cheek which causes her to go red. Blake, you didn't have to do that. Gojira, yeah well, a while ago you gave me a kiss without my permission so we're even now. Blake giggles a bit. Blake, yeah. I guess so. Gojira, Blake, I noticed you've been a bit more distant with your team. Is there a reason why? Blake, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Gojira. Blake. Don't lie to me. We shouldn't be lying to each other. I just want to know what's wrong. Please I want to help you. Blake. It's. Just. It's about Torchic. We failed to stop him and now he's out there. And I don't know how everyone could be so calm. Gojira. Um. Well I guess it's because we can't do anything right now. Blake. What? Gojira. Well I can't. Those bastards have been stealing so much dust, the prices have tripled, so I can't eat any more dust, so I'm much more weak than normal. As well as my team, we all need dust to use our abilities even if it's genetic. But you guys, you're different. Blake, different how? She says, as she crosses her arms. Gojira. Hey I mean that in a good way. You're determined. Too determined at times, but that won't stop you I know it. So talk to your team about this. You four might be able to do something about this. And Blake. Blake. Yeah? Gojira. You know I love you, so don't hesitate to call if you need any help telling them okay? Blake. Thank you Goji, and I love you too. The two kiss before Gojira stands up. Gojira, I'll be next door. Ospin wants me to tell my team something. Blake. Okay, I'll see you soon then. She kissed him on the cheek, which caused him to give her a wide grin. Gojira. Of course, Gojira left the room to the rest of Team RWBY coming back. He waves at them before heading back into his dorm. When he walked in he saw his teammates sitting on their beds. Mia was on her bed watching videos on her scroll. Maria was drawing a picture of a moth, and Anna was reading. Gojira, hey Maria, Mia I need to tell you guys something. Anna looked at Gojira confused before piecing everything together. Anna, wait are telling them? Gojira, yeah. As a team of Kyufornis I think they should all know. Mia, know what? Gasp are you two dating too? Maria, what? Anna slash Gojira, what no? Anna, this is actually important, plus I don't plan on dating anyone yet. Mia, yet. Anna, stop this is serious. Mia, oh then what? Gojira, 
What's your favorite fairy tale? Short time skip. Mia. Oh shit. Anna, I accidentally read his memories, and yeah apparently a war is coming. Maria, I knew it. Gojira, wait. You knew Maria? Maria. I in a way, yeah. I did. Anna, it was the whole reason she was sent here. Gojira, what does she mean Maria? Maria. The Mothra Fauna's whole purpose is to find the king of the monsters and serve them as the queen of the monsters. I was told the king was sent to Beacon, and when I saw you I just knew it was you. I wanted to be with you as your queen but I guess someone beat me to it. Gojira, beat you to it? Oh I see, so we were right. You like me too? Maria, why yeah. But Mia and Blake are with you already, so I can't be the queen. Mia, wait. So I'm the queen of the monsters. Maria. In a sense, in order to be a queen you need to be the king's partner and you have to be a Kaiyu Faunus. So yeah, you are. If you aren't any one of the two you're just considered a follower. Gojira notices Maria's mood goes down and he puts his hand on her wing and began to rub it. Gojira, you like me right? More as just a friend right? Maria, yeah. It's just, I. Mia, can there be more than one? Maria, what? Mia, queens, can there be more than one? Maria, I don't know, there's never been more than one before. Mia, okay then you'll be different. Gojira, you really think I wouldn't like you back? Especially because I'm dating Mia and Blake. Maria, yeah. I'm sorry. So does it mean? Gojira, chuckles Maria. Would you like to be my queen of the monsters? Maria's eyes widen and she started shaking. Tears began to flow. As she jumped from her bed and flown straight into Gojira's arms, she just cried tears of joy into his chest. Maria, yes I would love to. Mia, I know it's a big deal, but geez you made it seem like he just proposed. Anna, he did. Gojira, I what now? Anna, you married her in a way. I never heard of a king having a queen temporarily, and I don't think you wanna destroy her life purpose do you? Gojira, so I just married her and Mia? Maria, you're not upset by that, are you? Mia, nervously yeah, are you? Okay with this? Gojira was shocked since he hardly ever sees Mia this nervous. He just laughs and grabs both of their hands. Gojira, I'm perfectly fine with it, as long as we can be together. Mia and Maria smile and kiss him on the cheek until they were interrupted by an uncomfortable cough. They all turn to see Anna who is still. Anna, ahem. Well as much as I wouldn't hate to interrupt this. Mia, that's bull, and you know it. Anna, I'm just happy that Gojira was able to get that off of his chest. However, we did just get a text from Professor Rospin to meet him at his office. Gojira, I guess let's go then. Gojira, Mia, and Maria began to walk out of the room, until Anna stopped them. Anna, what are you doing? Gojira, are we leaving? Anna just sighs before lifting her arm, creating a black portal. GMM, oh. The four enter the portal, only to appear at Professor Rospin's office. Gojira. You needed to see us sir? Ospin, yes. He noticed Maria and Mia holding Gojira's hands, and he gives a small smile. I see you found your queens, and just time. Gojira, hey yeah, I guess I have. Wait, why do you mean just in time? Ospin, well the reason I called you for is I have a mission for you for. Gojira, wait already? Ospin, yes, see it as an extracurricular activity. That's the only way I could present it as of now. Moving on do you remember the enemies I told you, you would fight? Gojira, yeah, the forgotten, the grim queen, the one who is many, and humanity's mistake. Anna, wait, what did you say, the one who is many? She didn't get an answer as Ospin continued speaking. Ospin, we have reason to believe one of them had surfaced. There was an energy spike a few days ago in Vale. Mia, so you want us to check it out? Ospin, yes. From what we father from one of my sources, they're indeed a Kaiyu Faunus, and possibly. He pauses and looks at Gojira, and then he get up from his chair and took a sip of his coffee before continuing. It's a possibility that it's a mutation of a Godzilla Faunus. Maria looks up at Gojira and noticed his face smile but quickly dimmed. She tightened her grip on his hand. Gojira noticed this and smiled at her before looking back at Ospin. Gojira, we'll do it. If they are a Godzilla Faunus I'll try to talk to them. And, if they don't want to I'll be willing to fight. Kayo Bio. Gojin Seraizawa. Family. Ishido Seraizawa husband. Astrid Seraizawa daughter slash older child. Gojira Seraizawa son. Abilities. Atomic breath. Nuclear pulse. Transformation. Regeneration. Aura level. 
low semblance supercharge this makes her body glow blue and her strength is nearly tripled as well as her power of her atomic breath is doubled looks weapon godzilla form team gam gojira seraizawa rose old family ishido seraizawa gojin seraizawa astrid seraizawa adopted family summer rose mother taik xiao long father yang sister ruby sister raven bramwin aunt crab bramwin uncle race Godzilla Faunus Abilities Regeneration Atomic Breath Nuclear Pulse Kaiyu Transformation He could use all the abilities however if he uses too much energy he will be knocked into a coma, and may not be able to use abilities for up to a week. Only say to gain energy is to constantly eat, or eat dust, or a level. Low Semblance Combat Armor Looks Gojira's Katana Kaiyu Godzilla Form Anagi Race Ghidorah Faunus Abilities Memory Reader Flight Exert Electricity from Arms and Mouth Transformation Soon Aura Level Medium Semblance Goddess of the Void Can allow her to create portals Summon her Ghidorah Heads The Ghidorah Heads can be invisible to the naked eyes if needed. She can also see from Trahead's perspectives and her eyes would glow. Ghidorah Heads can't be harmed. However if the opponent is too strong or she uses it for too long she will pass out. Looks Ghidorah Heads Weapon Is Golden Ghidorah Form Maria Sora Race Mothra Faunus Abilities Wing Scales Can Heal Can Only Heal Others Can Sense Emotions Transform Soon Flight Wing Scales Can Also Deflect Dust Based Attacks She Can Also Sense Aura Levels Aura Level High Semblance Gone Rays Her Wings Will Shine A Blinding Light can kill Grim within a 20 foot radius. Looks, weapons included Mothra form, Mere Spirit, Race, Muto Faunus, Aura Level, Medium, Abilities, Transformation Soon, Semblance, EMP, All Mutos have it. Can shut off any electronic devices in range for 10 seconds. With this ability, can also deactivate a person's aura for a few seconds. But opponent will regain aura in a few seconds if it isn't a low level. She must slam her hands to the ground for a larger blast cutting off multiple targets. As well she can direct impetacts with her hands. Looks without gloves her arms resemble a grims. With her arms slowly gaining a red tint in her hands. As well as crimson red nails. Her arms would flash red if she's about to use her imp. Weapon. Muto form. The mission Team Gam went down to Veil by taking a bull head. Apparently Anna's portals could only take them so far, as they walk through Veil. Maria was trying to use her aura sensing abilities, from her Mothra side, but she wasn't able to pinpoint any energy that's similar to Goji's yet. Anna was being carried by Gojira as her eyes were glowing as she was using her invisible Ghidorah heads to search for anything odd. So that causes her to be blind in her current body till she swaps perspective. Mia was looking through her scroll to see if anything odd happens, and Gojira is trying to use his, his sense of smell for any Godzilla Faunus scent. However he wouldn't sense anything as he's too distracted by the thought of there being another Godzilla Faunus, and this didn't go unnoticed. Maria, Goji, Gojira, yeah? He replies not looking at her. Maria, are you okay? You've been kind of spaced out since when we were dot on Ozpin's office. Gojira, I'm fine. Let's just worry about the mission. Mia, we are. You're part of this mission remember? So what's wrong? And don't lie to us. Gojira. Sigh all my life I thought I was the only one, the last of my race. Next thing I know, there's a possibility there's one left, but that they might also be my enemy. So imagine that, you find out you're not alone, only to have to fight them later. Mia, yeah, I guess that would suck. She says, as she imagined it happened to her with a muto faunus. Maria, maybe they aren't your enemy. You're the last two, so you guys wouldn't want to hurt each other. I'm sure we can go through this. Gojira smiles at his Mothra queen and kisses her on the cheek resulting in her turning as red as Mia's gloves. The four continue to go down the street until they heard an explosion in the distance. Gojira gets a call on his scroll, which he asks for Mia to answer. Mia's eyes open wide before ending the call. Mia. It's Team RWBY. They went after Torchic who is currently in a mesh. Anna's eyes stopped glowing. She looked up to see Gojira holding her. She grew a slight blush before shaking it off and poking his chest. Anna, Goji let me down. He nods and as she got off of Goji's arms, she opened a portal. Anna, I found them. They're near an abandoned warehouse. 
the four step through the portal to see Team RWBY attacking a mesh. The mesh was about to swing at the mesh until it was stuck in place, only to see three Ghidorah heads holding it back. Torchic, what the hell is going on? Gojira, sup redhead? Gojira said as he stood in front of the mesh. Mia then released a focus DMP only shutting off the mesh. RWBY, Goji? Gojira, hey guys. Hold up a second let me finish this. Gojira's back begins to light up as he charged up for an atomic breath. Once he realized it he fired onto the mesh chest causing it to crash into the warehouse, with metal flying everywhere. Torchic got out of the mesh and looked down at the huntresses and huntsmen in training. Roman, ladies, boy, ice queen, vice, hey, Roman, always a pleasure. Now girl, if you would. The pink and brown girl curtsies her enemies with a bow, Gojira swore she looked familiar dot but Yang will have none of it, charging forth with fists raised to strike the outlaws, only to break their image as if made out of a mirror and turn just in time to see them beginning to escape in a bullred, the rest of team RWBY runs up to Yang's side, now cooled down with the end of the fight, but as the bullhead began to leave something jumped out of it, Maria began to freak out, Maria, Goji. It's the gods in a fullness. Gojira, wait what? Everyone saw as the dust settled to see a glowing yellow creature and red eyes. Team RWBY and Gam got into battle stance, all of them readying their weapons. Ruby and Yang were all of a sudden hit by an orange electric beam. Gojira, Ruby, Yang. Gojira and the girls ran at the figure, only for all of them except for Gojira to be hit by the beams as well. Gojira becomes furious and begins to charge up an atomic breath, but before he could shoot, he felt something hit him the stomach, he looked down to see a long purplish black tail with white crystals on the tip slam him into the debris of the mesh. He tried to stand back up, but he felt a force hold him down. He looked up to see two glowing crystals next to him wrapping him in electricity. Question mark colon finally after all these years. A cold female voice stated. Everyone looked up to see the dust finally settled. A woman in a black and red dress, with shoulder pads that have crystals sticking out, along with long back hair and the golden crest. She walked over to Gojira and looked him in his brown but flashing blue eyes. Everyone shut their eyes expecting the worst as they were all being held down, as well as Gojira, who was struggling to say anything as now he knows why Ozpin said she was a mutant. Question mark colon look at me. Gojira refused and kept looking down. Question mark colon I said look at me. Gojira hesitantly looked up at her. See was that so hard Goji? Gojira, who? Are you? How do you know my name? The mutant was furious that he asked that but tried to remain calm. Question mark colon really? So they really did make you forget me? It's me Goji, Astrid. Gojira. I don't know. An Astrid. Astrid violently lifted Gojira in the air, before she floated up to him. She looked furious. Gojira would be scared if he didn't notice tears streaming down her face. Astrid, I'm your sister. Everyone froze. They couldn't believe what she said, and Gojira refused to believe it. Gojira, why should I believe you? Astrid, because I know where mom is. Gojira, my mother is Ja. Astrid, that's what you think. She's alive, Gojin. Mom is alive, but not dad. If you join me, I can take you to her. Gojira could feel it, as well as Maria who could sense the mutant's hidden emotions. Maria, Goji. She's. Isn't lying. Gojira, what? Maria, she's telling the truth. She's feeling grief. Gojira looks at Anna. The two look at each other realizing there's only one way to tell the truth. Gojira, Anna do it. Anna, right. Anna tried to go into Astrid's memories only for Anna to scream in pain. Orange and green electricity began to spark from her head. Gojira turns to see Astrid's crest glowing. Astrid, that won't work on me. GMM, Anna. Gojira grew more frustrated at the woman. Gojira, first, you hurt my sisters, and now you hurt my friends. A monster like you would never be my sister. Astrid, these humans you call sisters are nothing. They aren't your family I am. She screamed. She began to bring Gojira closer to hit him. That was her biggest mistake. Gojira's body began to flash as he hit her with a large nuclear pulse pushing her back and destroying the crystals holding him. He ran over to Anna who was still holding her head. Gojira, can you open a portal? Anna, I'll need a few minutes, my head hurts too much. Maria, I can heal your aura. My wings have healing properties. Gojira, whatever you do, do it quick. Turns to Blake and Vice can you two get my sisters, and bring them her. 
I'll deal with Astrid. The two nod, Blake gives him a kiss on the cheek as a way of saying good luck before she headed over to a tired Yang. Gojira unsheathed his katana and ran over to Astrid, who was barely getting up. Gojira slashes at her, she quickly dodges and shoots electricity at him from her mouth knocking him back. He gets up and fires an atomic breath only for her to reflect it using a shield made of crystals. The beam reflect back to him causing him to have burns all over his shoulder. He starts to grow scales for better defense and slashes his claws at her agent, this time leaving her with a small cut on her cheek. She wipes the blood away, and licks it. Astrid, it's been years since anyone has been able to make me bleed. I'm impressed brother. Gojira, just shut your mouth. He roared as he released an atomic breath, but at the same time Astrid shoot her beams from her mouth. The two beams clash, with the two going back and forth with each other. Gojira was starting to lose energy, but then he noticed Anna's portal opens and everyone started to head out. He stops firing and takes the blast destroying his upper body armor, and giving him a massive wound on his chest. Biam, Goji. Maria flies down to Gojira and with the help of Anna was able to get him through the portal. Vice used an ice dust crystal and blocked Astrid from following, before everyone headed in. Gojira and Maria were the last to enter the portal. Everyone looks around to see they were in a bullhead heading to Beacon. Gojira was holding his chest as blood was pouring heavily from his wound. Everyone ran to Gojira to check on him, they would try to talk to him but everything through his ears was drowned out as his eyelids began to go heavy. Gojira has passed out, in Maria's arms. Back with Astrid she slammed her tail into the ground in frustration that her brother got away. Astrid, we'll see each other soon Gojira. She then giggles as she began to crystallize and levitate away. Extracurricular. Currently all the teams were watching Fire mop the floor with Team CDRL in Goodwitch's class. Goodwitch then walked onto the battlefield from behind Carden who clutches his ribs. Glinda. And that's the match. Carden. Lucky shot. Carden then collapses. Glinda. Well done. Miss Nikos. You should have no problem qualifying for the tournament. Paya. Thank you. Professor. Glinda. Alright. Now I know that's a tough act to follow. But we have time for one more sparring match. Glinda looks around at the observing students. Any volunteers? Miss Belladonna? You've been rather docile for the past few classes. Why don't you dash? Mercury raises his hand. Mercury, I'll do it. Glinda, Mercury, is it? Very well. Let's find you an opponent. Mercury, actually, I wanna fight him. Mercury points to Gojira, whose chest is wrapped in bandages. Gojira, me? Glinda. I'm afraid Mr. Rose has just got out of the infirmary, and hasn't fully recovered. I recommend you choose another partner. Gojira, no, it's fine. I'd be happy to oblige. The two walk down to the arena. Gojira was stretching carefully to be sure to not hurt his chest. All while Mercury seems to be sizing him up. Gojira was about to unsheathe his sword until he notices something. Gojira, no weapons. Mercury, don't need any. Gojira. Alright same here. Gojira tossed his katana over to side. The match starts when Mercury goes to make the first move, only to be knocked back by Gojira's tail. He recovers quickly and does a barrage of kicks at Gojira who had blocked them using his forearms. Ruby turns to Emerald who's sitting behind her. Ruby, hey your friend's doing really good. Emerald gives a fake smile and rolls her eyes. Once Ruby turns around. Emerald. I have no idea what Astrid and Cinder see in that fullness. So he has spines and a tail. Weird but that's not special. Her thoughts are interrupted however when Mercury lands a hard hit on Gojira's chest, not destroying his aura, but it definitely hurt Gojira a lot as Gojira's eyes began to glow blue as well as his back. Mercury goes to kick him again, but Gojira blocked it and heard what sounded like metal from the impact. Gojira quickly shook it off and knocked him back getting ready to fire an atomic breath. Right when he was about to fire Mercury says something. Mercury, I forfeit. Gojira immediately turns his beam to the ceiling, due to being unable to stop it. Gojira looked at Mercury confused, and angrily. Gojira, you forfeit? You don't even want to try? Mercury just shrugs and begins to walk away. Mercury, what's the point? We're obviously ledges apart. Emerald smirks. Mercury sneers smugly. Gojira has an annoyed and de-angered look on his face. The aura displays for a Gojira and Mercury are shown as Mercury's is changed from green to red indicating his loss, as well with Gojira's being yellow due to the hit on his chest. Glinda. Next time. 
you may want to think a little harder before choosing an opponent. Mercury, I'll be sure to do that. An alarm sounds which jolts Blake who has nodded off. Glinda, that is all for today. And remember, the dance is this weekend, but you all have your first mission on Monday. I will not accept any excuses. As everyone leaves, Mercury stops beside Emerald. Mercury, learning is so much fun. Dash. Outside, SSSN are standing at the entrance as Team RWBY walks past. Sun notices Blake and runs after her. Sun, hey, Blake. Sun grabs Blake by her shoulder. You are, doing okay? Blake, I'm fine. Sun, so I hear there's this dance going on this weekend. R. Sounds pretty lame, but you and me, I'm thinking, not as lame, huh? Blake, what? Sun, the dance, this weekend, you wanna go, or what? Blake, I don't have time for a stupid dance. And secondly I already have a boyfriend. I thought you of all people would get that. Blake walks away past her team. Sun sinks from his rejection. Dash. Blake, you what? Three fourths of Team Gam and Team RWBY were in my dorm room. With Blake sitting with her arms crossed. Ruby, we want you to go to the dance. Blake, that's ridiculous. Yang. Blake, we're worried about you. This investigation is starting to mess with your head. Vice, you can't sleep, you hardly eat. And to be honest, your grades have been suffering. Blake, you think I care about grades? People's lives are at stake. Yang puts her hand on Blake's, lowering it. Yang, we know. And we're all still trying to figure out what Torchic is up to. Hell even Team Gam is trying their best. Muaya, especially Gojira. He's been pulling too many all-nighters researching. Ruby, thanks to you and Sun, we know they're operating somewhere outside of Southeast Vale. Vice, and... The Schnee Company records singled out Vale as the primary target for dust robberies over the last few months. Yang, don't forget about their missing military tech too, Blake, but there's still unanswered questions, like who the hell that Astrid is. She was able to permanently hurt Goji. He's no longer himself because of that scar. I need to find them. Ruby. Blake. You won't be able to find anything if you can't even keep your eyes open. Yang. All we're asking is that you take it easy for one day. Vice. It will be fun. Yang and I will make sure of it. Yang, yeah. We're planning the whole event. Yang pumps her fists which causes the bed to bounce Blake. Blake, excuse me. Vice. Team CFVY's away mission lasted longer than expected. Yang, so, Vice and I were asked to pick up where they left off. And now we can make sure you have the perfect night. Vice. And once it's all over, we'll return for our search, rested and ready. Ruby, so what do you think? Blake, I think this is a colossal waste of time. Blake walks away from the group and opens the dorm door. Blake, I'll be in the library. She walks out of the room. Yang, great. Anna, we all know those two can't keep going like this. Maria, yeah Goji is just as bad. If not worse he's constantly training, and has been having nightmares. Mia. It's really been eating him up he never has time to talk to anyone. He only talks to Blake because they're doing this together. Ruby, we need someone to help them. There's a knock at the door and Vice approaches and opens it. Johnny appears at the door with a guitar. Johnny, singing Vice. Vice slams the door in his face. Johnny, oh, come on, open the door. I promise not to sing. Vice opens the door. Once she does he continues. Johnny, singing I lied. Vice Shune. Will you accompany me? To the dance on Sunday? Vice. Are you done? Johnny? Yes? Vice. No. She shuts the door in his face. Turning around, she sees the others staring at her. What? Yang? And that is why they call you the Ice Queen. Ruby finally collapses. Vice. All my life. Boys have only cared about the perks of my last name. Besides, I already have a date in mind. Ruby. Date or no date? None of this will matter if we can't get Blake and Goji to go. Dash. That night, Pyre and Jorni are sparring at their spot on the roof. Jorni appears to gain the upper hand until Pyre sweeps his legs out from under him. Pyre? Well done. Your sword plays improved immensely. Pyre helps Jorni to his feet. Jorni, I couldn't have done it without you and Goji. Pyre, so, are you ready to move on to Aura? Jorni? I'm actually thinking maybe we just skip Aura for tonight. Might go on a jog or something. Pyre, come on. I know you get frustrated, but you must keep trying. I'm sure you'll discover your semblance any day now. Goji hasn't even discovered his yet. Johnny, that's not it. 
It's just, it's dumb. Paya, what is it? She approaches Johnny and places her hand on his shoulder. Johnny, you know you can tell me. Johnny, it's, vice. Paya, oh, what about her? Johnny, I asked her to the dance and she shot me down. Big surprise, right? Paya, well, I believe the saying goes, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Johnny, that's easy for you to say. You've probably got guys clamoring over each other just to ask you out. Fira, you'd be surprised. Johnny dismisses the thought. Johnny, oh please. If you don't get a date to the dance, I'll wear a dress. Hey. He walks away. Pia drops her smile and looks rather upset. Dash. Emerald. And finally, Pia Nikos. Cinder is in her dorm room sewing a black dress as she sits on one of the beds. Emerald is sitting on the floor while looking at her scroll, and Mercury is lying on the ground and reading a comic book. Cinder, ah, the invincible girl. Mercury, she's smart, but I wouldn't say invincible. Cinder, do tell. Emerald, her semblance is polarity, but you'd never know just by watching. Mercury, after she made contact with my boots. She was able to move them around however she wanted. But she only made slight adjustments. Emerald, just enough to make it look like she's untouchable. She doesn't broadcast her power, so it puts her opponent at a disadvantage. Cinder, um, people assume that she's fated for victory, when she's really taking fate into her own hands. Interesting. Add her to the list. Mercury, you should be able to take her no problem. Cinder. It's not about overpowering the enemy. It's about taking away what power they have. And we will, in time. Mercury, I hate waiting. Cinder, don't worry, Mercury. We have a fun weekend ahead of us. Emerald, that isn't all Cinder. Cinder, what is it? Mercury, it's Astrid's brother. Cinder, ah yes the king of the monsters. He seems to be our only problem with this. From what Astrid has told us about Godzilla Faunus they have enhanced senses, strength and healing as well as the atomic breath and nuclear piles. They're normally calm, however in battle they could be brutal. Not only that but he is the son of the Lone Huntress. Emerald, well when it seems he's not as tough as we once believed. Mercury, one strong hit to the chest, and he was struggling. I guess Astrid really did a number on her bro. Emerald, I guess nobody noticed this but he looked very tired like he hasn't sleep for days. Cinder, he's probably searching for answers. Thank you too for bring me this information, we get rid of him. We could really make this go smoothly. A talk. Ruby was resting her head on her hand and staring into the distance before she is startled by someone slamming their palms on the table she is at. Vice, I need you to pick a tablecloth. Slide two squares over to Ruby, both seeming to be similar shades of white. Ruby, aren't they both the same? Vice. I don't even know why I asked. Vice walks out of the scene as Yang comes in carrying a massive sound speaker on her shoulder, which bounces her sister and the table she's moping on again to jump in the air when she drops it on the ground. Yang brushes her hands as she approaches Ruby. Yang, so, have you picked out a dress yet? Ruby, what's the point? Who cares about the dance if Blake and Goji aren't going? Yang, oh, don't worry, they're going. Vice. I thought we agreed. No doilies. Vice walks up to Yang, pointing in her face. Vice. If I don't get doilies, you don't get fog machines. The girls are interrupted by the sound of doors opening. Neptune, your dance is gonna have fog machines? Vice. We were thinking about it. Neptune, that's pretty cool. Mia, hey guys. Everyone looks to see Maria. Mia and Anna had also came to check the ballroom. Ruby, hey Maria. Maria. Hi Ruby. The two hop over to each other and wave to each other. Anna, I love what you're doing with this place. Vice slash Yang, thanks. Son, you ladies all excited for dress up? Ruby, PFFT. Yeah, right. Yang, laugh all you want. I'll be turning heads tomorrow night. Vice, addressing Sun and Neptune. What are you two wearing? Sun, you This? He gestures to his current shirtless outfit. Neptune, ignore him for he knows not what he says. Sun. Hey, I may have moved to Mistral, but I grew up in Vacuo. It's not exactly a shirt and tie kind of place. Yang slash Mia. Yeah, we noticed. Son, so, what does Blake think of all this? She's still being all, you know. Blake why? Vice. Obviously, it's even worse that Gojira and her are doing this together. Son, wait Goji too? Mia. Yeah, he's been this way since he got injured. Maria. He decided he wouldn't go to the dance because is still searching for Astrid. Ruby, 
I still can't think of a way to change their minds. Maria, same here. Goji and us haven't been getting along recently. Vice, why what's happening? Mia, he's been more angry recently, so he'll refuse talking to us. And every time we talk, we get in a fight. When he shouts I shout back. Maria, when we argue I get too scared and fly away from him. I guess I make him feel worse that way. The only one so far who could actually hold a conversation with him is Anna. Anna? That's an overstatement. I could only talk to him without having him explode and walk away. So we honestly have no clue on what to do. Yang, guys, trust me, Goji and Blake will be at the dance tomorrow. Anna come with me. Dash. The two Faunas are sitting at one of the library tables with a holographic screen in front of them. They're obviously more sleep deprived than ever, barely focusing on what they're seeing. Until a small, bright red light appears on the screen moving up and down while a trail of dust was on the floor with Gojira walking up to them looked back to Blake and shrugged Blake's eyes follow the red dot down to her hand then disappears entirely she looks behind herself obviously irritated but no one walking among the tables is her culprit turning back to the computer she starts typing on the beeping keyboard before the laser dot appears on her hand briefly prompting her to look around again and still find no one. The red point shows up on the screen, moving around in circles until Blake scowls and pounds her fists on the table. She stands up from her chair and finds the light on the floor. Gojira noticed this and began to follow her as she was following it blindly through shelves of books until both the dot and its pursuer turn the corner, only for Blake to bump, shocked and shaken out of her more animal instincts, into... Yang was waving with her left hand as her right holds the laser pointer, in a sing-song voice, all while Anna was standing next to her with her arms crossed. Yang, he loo, Blake, what are you? Yang, grabs Blake's arm we need to talk, and with that, amid Blake's single cry of surprise, Yang whisks her partner away, all while Goji tries to get away and failed as Anna uses her Ghidorah heads to pull him back with them. Blake, Yang, if you're going to tell me to stop, you may as well save your breath. Yang, I don't want you to stop. I want you to slow down. Blake, I don't have the luxury to slow down. Yang, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity. Blake, the necessity is stopping Torchic. Gojira, and I have to stop Astrid. Anna, and we all will but I want you to listen to me first. Gojira slash Blake, fine. Anna, I used to live in on the northern end of Atlas, in the mountain areas secluded from all of the Caillou hating humans. I lived with my brothers and sisters, and we always fended for ourselves. Blake, what about your parents? Anna, they in a way, abandoned us. Gojira, why? Anna, because we were sent here. She paused before looking at everyone and slowly pulled out what looked like a black metal, with a golden star. And then she put a hand on his cheek, which made Blake give a small growl. Anna, this coin is only held by Ghidorah's, it would turn black if we complete our mission we were sent here for. We were made to kill all of the Godzilla's. Gojira's eyes widen, as he got into battle stance. Anna takes a step back to calm him down. Anna, but, we didn't. We didn't want a species to go extinct. So we all agreed to just live peacefully, but one of us didn't like that. His name was King G His other names are King Ghidorah, or the one who is many. My oldest brother. He then killed most of the Ghidorah Faunus. I hid in a black hole as I was too weak to stop him. He then killed all of the Godzilla Faunus. Except for one, but one day he went against the strongest Gojin, and he lost. She locked him away in the bottom of Mount Ghi, the largest mountain of Atlas. Gojira, what? Blake, why are you telling us this? Anna, because you have an enemy worse than you can ever imagine. Torchic and Astrid may be tough, but you in no condition to fight them right now. You would be destroyed in seconds the second he wakes up. So we aren't telling you to stop training, to stop searching. We are telling you to rest. Yang, you two should just slow down. Gojira began to grit his teeth, as he held his chest. Gojira, I don't have time to rest. Blake, Yang, you don't understand we're the only ones that can do this. Yang, no, you don't understand. She turns around sharply to reveal red eyes and the sound of flames. If Roman Torchic and Astrid walked through the door, what would you do? Gojira slash Blake, fight them. Almost in sync the two blondes push the two. Anna, you'll lose. Blake, we can stop them. She tried to push Yang back, but she was too tired to do anything. Yang, you can't even stop us. 
The two blondes knock the two down. Gojira tried to get back up but his chest hurt too much. Yang then hugs her partner and crush as her eyes return to her lilac color. Yang, I'm not asking you to stop. Just please, get some rest. Not just for you, but for the people you care about. Gojira, okay. Everyone was shocked that Gojira spoke so softly. His hair we covering his eyes he looked up and gave everyone his signature smile. There will be worse enemies ahead, and you're right currently I can't do anything, for the first time I'm actually injured, I'll have a real scar. I need to rest before I could do anything. So, I'll go the dance. So Yang, Anna, he walked to, to the two and hugged them, resulting in the two blushing. Gojira, thank you. Blake, if you come too I'll give you the first dance. Blake smiles at him and nods before he leaves the room. Dash. Blake had called for the female members of Team Gam, her team, and Fyra over to the library. Ruby, ah, uh, why are we here? Mia, now you're finally gonna tell them? Blake, listen, I finally just accepted this to be okay. Vice, what's okay? Blake, when I confessed to Gojira, she talked about having his harem grow as a joke, but she wasn't joking if she said she was open to it so... She gave me this. She hands the folded paper to Yang who slowly begins to open it. Yang looked at it, then to Blake and Mia, and then to her sister and smiled. Dash. Yang, now in a short white dress with black heels, as she stands at a podium. The doors in front of her open and she flips out upon seeing who walks in. Yang, ooh, you look beautiful. Ruby groans as she looks distressed in her red dress with black lace, belt, and pumps. Ruby. Can we have a serious talk about how Vice fights in these? She tries to maintain her balance as she walks to the podium, much to her laughing sister's amusement. Maria. I personally like dresses. Yang and Ruby look at the female members of Team Gam. Maria was wearing a white and brown dress, with a light blue tiara on her head. Mia wore a black dress similar to Yang, all while Anna wore a golden dress, with emblems of a three-headed dragon on her back. Ruby. So where's Big Bro? Mia and Maria smiles as they both take a step to the side to see Gojira in a black suit, with some light blue highlights on the collar and tie. He walked in with his arms interlocked with Blake who was wearing a beautiful black, and netted dress. When Ruby and Yang saw the two they were awestruck. Ah why, wow. Yang, I told you they would come. As she finishes talking Vice walks up to them. Vice, mission accomplished. Ruby, see what now? Yang. Have fun. She proceeds to walk away and do so, with Vice going the opposite direction and leaving Ruby behind. Ruby, does that mean I can change out of these stupid things and into my hood now? Stupid lady stilts. Gojira, not enjoying yourself? Ruby, oh, no, everything's fine. I'm just not much of a fancy pantsy. Dancy girls. You know that. Gojira, hey well, you can't spend your whole life on the battlefield, even if you may want to. Ruby. Yeah, that lesson's been floating around a lot lately. Gojira, well if you think about it, fighting and dancing aren't so different. Two partners interlocked, although one wrong move on the ballroom merely leads to a swollen foot. Ruby, or a twisted ankle. Gojira, it's not every day that friends are able to come together like this. Time has a way of testing our bonds, but it's nights like these that can help keep them stronger than ever. Nights like these are ones we'll never forget. Ruby. Well, then can I dance with you? Like when we were kids. Gojira, of course, but I did promise Blake my first dance. Gojira and Blake both walk onto the dance floor. You ready? Blake, of course I am. The dance. Gojira and Blake have been dancing for the past three minutes. The two had just finishes up their dance and are now sitting at a table having a random conversation. Up until Pyre. Gojira, listen, I'm just saying it looks more like a puma. Blake, but the thing has hooks that looks like tusk, and pumas don't have tusk. Pia, hello how are you two doing? Gojira, oh hey P, enjoying the dance. Fyra, well, it's certainly lovely, but I didn't really get a date, nobody asked me out. Gojira, really? Of all people I would think at least one person to ask you. You're pretty. You're one of the smartest girls in class, and you're definitely the strongest in combat. You're literally perfect personified. Blake hit Gojira on his side, which barely hurt him, but it was enough for him to notice she was definitely not happy about that statement. All the while Fyra becomes a blushing mess from Gojira's compliment. Paya, well I was thinking since I have nobody to dance with, would you like to dance with me? Gojira, 
Of course. Hey Blake, can you tell Ruby I'll dance with her next? Blake, sure. Have fun Goji. Gojira gives her a peck on the cheek before joining Fyra on the dance floor. Paya, you're surprisingly good at this. Gojira. My mom Summer taught me how to dance for the graduation at Signal. Fyra. Well she's certainly a good dancer. Gojira then spins Fyra into the air and quickly catches her. Gojira. Yeah she is. After a few minutes Ruby walks up and takes Gojira away and begins dancing with him. Gojira. I'll see you later P. Paya. Okay. Bye Goji. Gojira. Why is everyone okay with just passing me around? Hey little Rose. How about we take this slow? Ruby. Okay. The two slow danced to the music. Gojira looked at Ruby to see her face was beet red. Gojira. Hey. Ruby. What? Gojira. Sorry. It's just I've been so busy. With hanging out with my girlfriends. Training. And finding Astrid. It's been so long since I hung out with you guys. I was starting to miss it. Ruby. Yeah. So was I. Yang. Come on. It's my turn now. Yang pulls Gojira away from Ruby. Ruby. Yang. Gojira. Ah. I'll buy you some cookies to make up for this okay. Yang. Come on Goji. Show me what you got. The music almost on cue changed into an more club-like music, similar to music that would play at juniors when the two would sneak in. Gojira. I can't thank you and Anna enough for convincing me to come. Yang. I honestly didn't do much. But if you want to thank me. How about after our missions you can take me out to juniors. Gojira. Seriously? Okay. I guess we could just beat up some guys while we're there like always. Yang. Yep. The two separated and would dance in sync to the music. Gojira looked over to the side to see Vice sitting by herself. Gojira. Did Vice go alone? Yang. Yeah. She wanted to ask someone out. But he was always busy so the two never had time to talk. Gojira. Is it okay I ask her to dance? Yang. Of course as long as you promise to take me to juniors. Gojira. Chuckle of course I will. Gojira walks over to Vice who was looking down at her dress. Gojira. Sup snowflake. Vice jumps a bit from the sudden voice. Vice. Oh oh hey Goji. Gojira. Yang told me you wanted to ask someone to the dance. And you guys didn't have time to talk or something? Vice. Why yeah. Gojira. Would you like to have a quick dance with me then? Vice smiles and grabs his hand pulling her up. Vice. Of course. Lead the way. Gojira danced with her ending with Vice giving his a quick kiss on the cheek. Then Anna, who was hesitant at first strangely, but in the end she seemed happy. He then had two more girls to dance with. Gojira walked over to Maria who was drinking some punch next to Ruby at the punch station. Gojira. Hey Maria. Maria. H. Hi Gojira. Is it my turn? Gojira. Yes it is. Maria squeals and flies into his arms, causing the two to chuckle a bit. He spinned her and flipped her, as the two danced. He noticed something change for the first time. Her wings were a blue tint. Gojira. Hey Maria what's that? Maria. Oh. My wings turn blue if a Mothra has her king. So depending on the mood of her king, it would change colors. Blue for when we're both content and red if you're stressed or in danger. So I guess it's the first time you've been calm since we got together. Gojira, Maria, I want you to know I'm very sorry for scaring you. I was too caught up with find her. There's a real chance Astrid is my sister, or at least was. So I want you to know I won't ever do that Hajin. I'll never put you through that, ever again, I promise. Maria, it's okay Goji. I understand. And thank you. I love you my king. Gojira, hey, I love you too my little queen. Maria. I'm not that small. The two finished up their dance. Maria pointed Gojira to the direction of Mia. Gojira saw Mia standing in the corner looking at her scroll. He walked up to her and laid his shoulder against the wall next to her. Mia. Hey. Gojira. Hey. Listen I. Mia. It's fine. I. I'm sorry too. Gojira. Why are you sorry? I yelled at you every time you tried to help me. I should be apologizing for hurting you. I regretted yelling every single time, but I thought it was necessary. Mia, yeah. Well I'm quite hot-headed myself. I would yell back make our relationship worse, and I did. I should have tried to calm down and talk to you not make you feel worse, and I stopped trying because I was scared. That what would happen if we kept arguing? Gojira, Mia. You know I love you. I would never want us to go down that path. So listen when I say I love you no matter what. I guess if it makes you happy it's kinda both of our fault. Mia. 
All right, she says, as she wipes a tear away. Gojira, so, you wanna dance? Mia, as nice as that is, no not really. I actually wanna do something later is that okay? Gojira, of course honorable. He kisses her on the cheek before walking away. He grabbed a cup full of punch. He then noticed two Atlas soldiers guarding Penny, who was in an amazing green dress, but at the same time they were all doing the robot. Gojira, hey Penny. Penny, oh salutations. How are you Gojira? Gojira, I'm doing great, so uh, what's with the guards? Penny, oh, they're just here because Kri wanted to take a break. Gojira, Kri, Penny, yes. I told you about her remember? Gojira, oh yeah, didn't you say I looked like her or something? Penny. Yes I would like to introduce you to her if that's okay. Gojira, of course, a friend of my friend, there's probably a close chance she'll be my friend. Penny, yes, now let's go she's outside at the balcony the last time I checked. She grabbed Gojira's hand and began to lead her outside. The two walked to the balcony to see Crew's yellow eyes staring off into the ocean. She was wearing her black and silver uniform and for the first time Gojira saw her. Her mechanical tail was swaying back and forth, as well as her dorsal spines being quite block-like. The second thing he noticed was her face. She looked almost exactly like his mother, with the exception of her bright yellow eyes and dark red line going down her cheek. Penny, hi Kru, Kru, Penny, I thought I told you to enjoy the dance. Penny, I was but I want you to meet my boyfriend. Gojira, wait what? Kru, give her a second. Penny. What? You're the first boy who is my friend? Gojira, oh. Then yeah, I guess I am. Kru, you're a Godzilla Phonus? Oh I guess you're Godzilla huh? From the docks. Gojira, yeah, my name is Gojira Serizawa Rose. It's nice to meet you. He then extended his hand. Kru, Serizawa? She used her, less robotic, looking hand to shake it. But once she did her head began to hurt. Gojira, hey are you okay? Kru, yeah of course, I'm just having a bit of a headache is all. Anyway, it's good to see another Godzilla Faunus. I used to be one before I turned into well. This. Penny, yeah from what I heard she used to be very strong. Not that she's weak of course. She was made into Remnant's Defender. Gojira, um, we should spar sometime. I want to know how far Atlas has come since the Oxygen Destroyer no longer exist. Kru, Oxygen Destroyer? Gojira, it was a bomb the only device to kill a Godzilla. A hacker used it to kill my mum. Kru, your mother? Gojira, yeah. It's better if we talk about it some other time. I don't really like remembering it that much. Kru, what was her name? Gojira, Gojin. Her name was Gojin Serizawa. My dad told me she didn't have a last name till they married though. Kru, I see. Well it was a pleasure to meet you Gojira. Penny, Oh friend Goji let's go we only have 20 minutes left of the dance. Gojira, alright. Be seeing you Kru. As the two left the balcony Kru kept staring at Gojira, as her eyes flash red. Her headache got worse as she had flashes of a female Godzilla faunus holding a baby boy, with a young girl next to her, as well as a man wrapping his arms around her shoulder. Kru, son. After a while Gojira was just sitting with his team till he noticed that Ruby was missing. He was walking around the ballroom till his bumped into someone knocking them down. He turned quickly and caught the person he almost knocked over. He looked to see a girl in completely black dress and black gloves. She had black wavy hair and amber colored eyes. Gojira, I'm really sorry for bumping into you like that. He says as he puts her back in her feet. Cinder, it's fine it was an accident after all. You're Gojira right? My teammate Mercury told me about you. Gojira. That's right I never really met his team before. Well yeah, my name is Gojira Serizawa Rose. So what's yours if you don't mind me asking? Cinder, my name is Cinderfall, nice to meet you. Gojira, hey, the pleasure is all mine. Um, he looks around and noticed that she was basically by herself. Cinder, is something wrong? Gojira, do you have a dance partner? Cinder, um, no why? Gojira holds out his hand, and she just stares at it. Gojira, well... Do you wanna dance? When he asked, she began to blush. Cinder, I don't see why not. She hesitantly grabs his hand as they began to walk over to the dance floor. Gojira, let's take it slow. I'm sorta of tired from all the dancing I had to do from before. If that's okay with you of course. Cinder, of course, I prefer slow dancing anyway. The two danced in silence, 
Cinder would sneak glances at the Godzilla faunus. She was feeling conflicted. She heard stories of the King of the Monsters, and the personalities of Godzilla's, and he didn't seem fierce, merciless, raged. He seemed to be a gentle, kind-hearted soul, the complete opposite of what she was told to fear by Salem. She thought, maybe she doesn't have to get rid of him. And maybe, Gojira, hey you all right? Your face is burning up. Cinder, it's nothing. I'm just a bit of sick is all. Gojira, we can stop if you want. Cinder, no. I mean I'm fine. Let's just keep going for a few minutes. Gojira just smiled and nodded at the girl as they kept dancing. They were about to wrap up their dance when Mercury and a girl with green hair and dark skin walk over. Gojira, oh hey guys. Mercury, sup. We just need to talk to Cinder for a moment as I was going to have a dance with her. Gojira, you told me you didn't have a dance partner? Cinder curses under her breath and lets go of Gojira. Cinder, he was dancing with Emerald beforehand. Well I'll be going then. Gojira, well you seem very interesting. We should hang out sometime. He says with a smile, Cinder and Emerald see the smile and struggle to hide their blush while Mercury cringes in disgust. Cinder smiles and kisses him on the cheek, resulting in them both blushing. Cinder, certainly, I would like that. As they walk away Gojira places his hand on his cheek, and had one thought. Gojira, Mia is gonna kill me. Time a skip. After the dance was over everyone started to head back to their dorms. Gojira was about to head out when he noticed Team RWBY. Paya, and the rest of his team were all missing. Gojira just assumed they went back to their dorms already, so he continued to walk back to his dorm. When he walked up to his door he could hear multiple whispers through the door. He knocked on the door, and he was surprised to see who opened it. It was Blake, he looked into the room to see everyone else there. Gojira, ah uh, what's happening? Mia, well some people here wanted to tell you something. Blake, Ruby, Vice, and Yang. You guys are up first, as she says that the three approaches Gojira, all with blushing faces. Gojira looks over at Yang. Gojira, is something wrong sis? Yang, I I don't. I want. I want to be more. I want to be more than that. Before Gojira could reply Yang pulls him into a deep kiss. He tried to push away but her grip was too strong, so he kissed back. Once they pull away, the two look at each other. Before he could say anything Vice pulled him back and kissed him too. She lets go of him only to be knocked over by Ruby, who used her semblance to embrace her crush. She gave him multiple packs on the cheeks. Once she stopped her face was as red as her cape. Gojira, so, you guys, Yang, love you. Yes we do, Gojira. But we're siblings? Ruby, not really. You're adopted remember? We always liked since we were kids. But when we say Mia, Blake and Maria all be with you were definitely jealous. Riss, yeah, you are certainly the most strongest person I've ever met in my life. But you're also a gentleman, and you care for your friends and family above all else. You're truly perfect. Now as for jealously some were more jealous than others. Team RWBY all look at Yang who just nervously laughing. Gojira, I'm not even surprised. And Pia do you? Pia, yes, I do. I would really enjoy our training together, and when I saw you on a date with Mia, I was just frozen. Gojira, yeah, I remember that. Speaking of which, Mia, when did you guys talk about this? Anna, they told us, immediately after Yang and I pulled you from that slump. Gojira, seriously right after? Mia, well ha, huh, it seems you harem is building, what is you have six girlfriends now? Well this really entertaining, but we'll still have one more stubborn person to confess. Mia began to push Anna, who was using her Ghidorah head to hold her back. Maria, come on Anna, just tell him what you told me. Gojira. Anna. Anna who was wearing her regular dress, put up her hood, to cover her face, but it doesn't work that well as everyone could see her red cheeks. Anna, well, I want to. I want to be queen of the monsters too. I would understand if you say no. Especially since my brother Gojira walked over to Anna, and hugged her close and whispered. Gojira, did you kill any Godzilla faunus? Anna, and no I refused he. Gojira, then why would I hate you? You're not your brother. He pulled back, and stopped whispering. After all you could help train me, to be prepared to fight him. So of course, I wouldn't reject your feelings. Anna smiled at her leader, as she kisses him on the cheek. Mia, now it's seven. Gojira, chuckles well anyway. We should all go to sleep, after all we do have our first official missions tomorrow. Ruby. Alright, 
Let's go team RWBY. Good night everyone. Love you Goji. Gojira. Hey, love you too. Paya, well, I should go back to my dorm. Good night. Love you Gojira. Gojira, love you P. As everyone leaves Mia kisses Gojira on the lips. Mia, you better be happy I gave you this. Gojira, hey. Thanks Mia. I'll be sure to take you out Hajin. Now come on girls, we're leaving first thing tomorrow. Love you girls. AMM. Love you Goji. As they say that Gojira turns off the lights and heads to bed. The Hunt PT1. Gojira had just woke up he looked over at his teammates slash girlfriends to see them all still asleep. He picked up his scroll and checked the time to see a text message from Ozpin. He sat up on his bed to read the text over. He put his scroll away and decided to wake up one of the heaviest sleepers her ever met, second to his mom Summer. First, he walked over to Anna's bed and knelt down next to her. Gojira. Anna? He nudged her slowly. Noise apparently does nothing to wake her up. The only way, is to physically move her. Anna? Hm. Goji? Gojira. Hey hun. She blushes by this. Gojira. Sorry but Ozpin wants us to meet him at his office. Could you help me wake up the rest of the girls? Anna? Of course I'll wake up Mia, you're already next to Maria after all. Anna gets out of her bed and began to walk to Mia, right after she grabbed a pillow and put it against her chest. Gojira chuckled knowing why she needs it. Gojira moves over to the sleeping Mothra Faunus. He was about to wake her up until she was woken by a loud thud in the room. Mia had just punched Anna right in the chest. Thankfully protected by the larger pillow, causing the blondie to fall back and hit Gojira's bed, which is what caused the loud thud. It was so loud Maria screamed as she woke up. She was sweating and had tears going down her face. The Gojira noticed the biggest red flag. Her wings were glowing red. Gojira, Maria what's wrong? Maria jumps out of her bed and latches her arms around Gojira's neck. Gojira felt her shake as his shoulders began to be drenched in tears. He would remember when Ruby used to have nightmares, and he began to do the same process, with him first returning her a hug. Hey. Hey it's okay, I'm here. Maria, sniff T3 he heads. Sniff G Grim Queen, Will, wake him. I I. Gojira, Maria, what are you talking about? Maria looks up at her lover before burying her head into his chest. Anna, a Ghidorah? Everyone looks at Anna. Mia, what? Gojira. Anna? It's just a dream maybe she. Maria. It was a Ghidorah. Gojira looked to Anna who was frozen in place. Anna, I, I could look into her memories and see what happens later. But you said Ozpin needed us right? Gojira, yeah. Let's get ready. The girls nod and began to put on their gear. They began to head up to Ozpin's office. Once they arrived they showed up to see Ironwood and Ozpin mid-conversation. Ironwood, they were here. Ozpin, they were here. Ironwood angrily slams his fist against Ozpin's desk. Glinder, we're very much aware of that. Thank you, James. Ironwood, fantastic. You're aware. Now are we going to do something about it or should we just stay the course and continue to ignore what's right in front of us? Gojira who's here. Ironwood turns to see Team Gam walk into the room. Ironwood, Gojira, Ozpin what are they doing here? An alert sound plays, signifying that someone else has arrived on the elevator. Ozpin, come in. Ruby Rose steps out and into the room. Ruby, sorry it took so long. Someone accidentally hit all the buttons on the elevator on the way up here. It wasn't me. Gojira, Ruby, what are you doing here? Ruby, big bro. Ozpin, thank you for coming, Ruby. How are you feeling? Ruby, okay, I guess. I'd feel better if my bad guy catching record wasn't 0 for 3. Everyone stares silently. Ruby, okay, so that's the tone we're going for, got it. Ironwood, Ruby, I feel it's appropriate to let you know that I think what you did last night is exactly what being a huntress is all about. You recognized a threat. You took action. And you did the very best you could. Ruby, thank you, sir. Gojira. Ruby? What happened? Ruby, I found some random women trespass at the CTE, yesterday during the dance. Ozpin, now. The general here has already informed us of the events that transpired last night. But now that you've rested, we were wondering if you had anything to add. Gojira. Was anyone else with her? Wait, was it Astrid? Ruby, I, I don't know. She was wearing a mask, and she never said anything to me. She didn't have any crystals, or a tail. But I know she fought with class. I don't think that was her semblance, though. Her clothing lit up whenever she attacked. Glinder, save for the glass, 
that sounds like the woman I fought the night we met Ruby and Gojira. Ironwood, embedding dust into clothing is an age-old technique. It could have been anyone. Ruby, wait. You think this girl is connected to Torchic and the White Fang? Gojira, it's definitely possible. Ozpin, but we still lack the required evidence to link the two together. Ruby, actually, I... I think I remember her saying something about a hideout, or something, in the southeast just outside the kingdom. Ospin, interesting. Glinda, I thought you said the intruder never. Ospin, thank you for your cooperation, Ruby. Why don't you go and spend some time with your team? You have a big day ahead of you. Ruby, any time. Ospin, and Miss Rose, please try and be discreet about this matter. Ruby, yes sir. She then leaves the room, the two headmasters, the professor and team Gam standing in silence until Ironwood breaks the silence. Ironwood, well there we have it. We send as many troops as we can to the southeast, find out exactly what's going on, and eradicate any forces that stand in our way. Glinda, why must your answer to everything involve a triumphant display of military bravado? You treat every situation like it's a contest of measuring D. Ospin, Glinda. Glinda, well, he does. Ospin, she's right. As much as I too would love to end this situation once and for all, we must remember that this may go beyond Vale, beyond Beacon, and if this truly is part of some master plan for which we know not the final move, we mustn't be so bold. Nor can we risk the spread of panic. Ironwood, I have served you faithfully for years. But if you mean to tell me that your plan is to really hold the defenses, and wait. Ospin, it is not. You're a general, James. So tell me. When you prepare to go to war, which do you send in first? The flag bearers, or the scouts? Ospin then turns to Gojira. Ospin, that's why we called you here, Gam, us. Ospin, yes, as we concluded before Astrid is associated with Torchic, and for the past years we've had a spy in their ranks, allowing us to stop Torchic's plans, however he would always get away. She finally got away from him, and now allowing her to finally get in contact with us. Gojira. So she knows where Astrid is? Then where? Ospin. We only know the general area, which is why I'm sending you all down to her so she can lead you there. Ironwood. Oz, you can't be serious? You're sending students to fight her. Anna, we already know who we're dealing with. After all, as king, Gojira has to do this. Glinder. Um, you all know the truth? Maria. Well we figured out two of the enemies. Mia. Astrid. Is definitely an enemy. Anna. And my brother is certainly the one who is many, as he's the only Ghidorah left considered a threat. Gojira. However we have no idea who, the Grim Queen or the mistake is. The three adults look at each other, with all of them seemingly to nod in agreement. Ospin, Salem, Gam, who? Ospin, the Grim Queen is Salem. She's the one who controls the Grim. A long time ago she was considered immortal, until we found out the truth. Kaios can kill her. Gojira. What do you mean she's immortal? And how can we kill her? Ironwood, no matter what we do, she'll live, and regenerate. However the Kaijus have a special ability that no one ever considers. It's called radiation. Gojira, radiation? My mom said Godzilla Faunus have it with their atomic breath. Ospin, yes. From all the dust you consume, you generate a dangerous thing known as radiation. It's small when you're in this form, where it's hardly considered a problem. But, Mia, but, Ironwood, but. When Gojira transformed back at the docks, he used his atomic breath, and there was radiation all over the bullet he shot down. Anna, you said radiation is harmful? How? Ospin, to put it simply, it's poison. It gets rid of your aura, and could lead to you dying if you have too much of it. But Kyofornis aren't affected by it, and in the case of Salem, the atomic breath breaks through her immortality curse. Maria, a curse? Glinder, yes, a curse. Obzin told us this a long time ago. Tell me, do you guys know how Kyofornus first appeared? Gojira, my mom told me, they were the first Faunus to ever be created, and were made to fight something stronger than gods. Ospin, precisely, they were made to kill something from outside of Remnant, to kill something that can hurt the gods. Anna, to kill Kaiser Ghidorah. According to stories, one of my ancestors landed on Remnant and started to shape it to its own needs. After it attacked the two rulers of the planet and heavily injuring them, they created creatures to fight back against the Ghidorah. So the first Godzilla, Mothra, 
and many more were created. We were warned about it when my family were dropped off here on Remnant. Mia, wait hold up. So you're telling us? You're from outer space, Gojira. She did imply it when she told me her story, but I wasn't completely sure. Maria, so what happened? Anna, according to the legend, since Ghidorahs lived outside of the gods' hands, they had to make the Kaijus live outside their control as well. So Kaijus were considering gods in their own way, because once Kaiser Ghidorah was killed, the Kaijus were guardians of Remnant. Even the rogue Ghidorahs like most of my siblings and I. Ospin, that's correct, radiation from you guys are outside of the brother god's control, so you guys overruled any curse, so you can kill Salem. Ironwood, the only issue is finding her. Ospin, which is why you geese must find Astrid and the intruders. Once we find them we can find Salem, but of course one thing at a time. So to put it simply meet up with us by, find Astrid and capture her. Gojira, of course, we won't disappoint you sir. Anna, you can count on us. Maria, we'll do our best. Mia, I've been waiting to beat up that mutant in the face for a while now. She says that as she pulls out her scythe. Glinda, now if you follow me I'll lead her to the bullhead. Maria. So when is everyone else going on their missions? Glinda, shortly after you leave, we'll send you a physical description of the spy. She'll meet you nord of outside of Forever Falls. Time Eskip. Gojira and his team had just been dropped off in front of Forever Falls. Mia, so what was the description Ajin? Maria, apparently a girl about my height. She has brown and pink hair, as well as different color eyes, and she has an umbrella? It says stop at a tree with her umbrella against it. Gojira, where have I heard that description before? Anna, I don't know. However, we should keep our eyes open for now. Mia noticed Gojira was holding onto his chest, with his hand visibly shaking and his tail just dragging against the ground. Mia, Goji, hey dot dot ah. You okay? Gojira, huh. Oh yeah, Maria, don't lie Goji. Everyone looks over to see Maria who had a sad look on her face. But the most notable thing is her wings were glowing red. Maria, you wondering what if she's your sister right? Gojira, yeah, it's just, I don't remember her at all. But every time I think about her I have a feeling of deja vu. And, I wouldn't know what to do if I find out if it's true. Maria grabs his hands, which causes him to calm down and her wings turn blue. Maria, you'll know what to do, we don't have to kill her, just capture her. Anna? Just don't stress over it too much. Okay, Mia, yeah hun, we can afford to mess up now. And plus, we'll be by your side so don't forget that. Gojira smiles. He doesn't say anything and just kisses his girlfriends on the cheek resulting in everyone having a smile plastered on their faces. The four kept walking until, Maria pulled Gojira's shoulder and pointed at a pink umbrella lying against a tree. Maria, we're here. Gojira. Whoever you are you can come out now. Gojira then heard leaves rustling, and when he look up at the tree he sees a familiar face standing on top of a branch. Gojira. Neo. Mia. Wait you know her? Gojira. Yeah, I met her back when me and my mom were nomads. She traveled with us for a bit until she went missing one morning. My mom just said she ditched us, so we left the area too. Neo then jumped down from the tree and bowed in front of Team Gam. And once she saw Gojira she smiled and hugged his right arm. Gojira, chuckles I see you're still as cute as before. So you're the spy? Neo nods happily. Anna glares at the ice cream girl, while Mia smirks. And Maria desperately trying to pull the girl off of her king. Anna, so, what's your name? Neo pulled out her scroll and typed. Neo, didn't you listen to Gojira? My name is Neapolitan, but everyone calls me Neo. Anna frowns at the short girl and her eye even twitches. Mia. So what Neo like the ice cream? Neo nods, before Maria finally pulled her off of Gojira, resulting in the two landing on their backs. Maria. Ow. Gojira smiles and helps the two back up, before turning to his old friend in a much more serious tone. Gojira. So, where is Astrid? The Hunt PT2. Neo was currently leading the team through the dense forest. The five would take down packs of Grimm every 15 minutes so it took them a while to set up camp for the night. Two hours after they woke up, they had stumbled upon a large warehouse with multiple White Fang members as well as some of Junior's men. Gojira, Neo. Is Astrid in there? Neo, yes, Torchic is planning on having Grimm breaching Vale. Once that happens, they'll send Astrid after you, 
as well as take over Vale. I was finally able to contact Ozpin so you deal with her here, and hopefully we could stop her. Gojira, do you know where she is? Neo, she should be a the far northern side of the warehouse. Possibly absorbing the dust we've been collecting. She typed on her scroll. Gojira that turns to Mia and Maria. Gojira, all right. You two follow Neo and hold off the grunts, while Anna and I head after Astrid. Clear? The two nod and kiss him on the cheek before getting ready to follow Neo. Neo smirks and gives him a quick peck on the lips. Gojira, whispers Neo. Neo giggles before she puts an illusion over the three of them disguising them as White Fang members. The three then jump into the trees and started heading to the base. Gojira sighed and unsheathed his katana. He turned to Anna who had just pulled her swords out of her fan pocket. Anna, if Astrid really is absorbing dust then this is gonna be worse than we thought. Gojira, yeah. That's why I needed backup. Anna, so why me? Why not Mia or Maria? Gojira, they're better suited for fighting humans. With Mia's ability to go through aura, and Maria's flight and speed, those two can handle it, especially with Neo on their side. But that isn't all. I know how Astrid plans on taking over Vale. Anna tilted her head as they slowly made their way to the base. Gojira, she's gonna transform, and use her crystals to constantly power her up. She heavily injured me before, even if it was in this form. I need a Ghidorah by my side. I need you to help me fight her. I need you as one if my queens. Anna, okay, I'll need some of that dust. I haven't transformed in a long time. Once I get that, I'll easily be able to transform Ajin. Gojira, great. We just need to make sure she stays away from Vale. The two snuck into the warehouse. With Anna's invisible Ghidorah heads she was able to pull away White Fang members away from their path. After a while, they came across Astrid's quarters. The two prepare their weapons. The two looked at each other before nodding as Gojira blasts the door down. It had massive crates of dust inside the massive room. However no one was there. The room did have something he noticed on a counter. It was a picture. He walked over to it and grabbed the picture before looking at it. His head started to hurt. It felt like he was burning from the inside. He fell on our high knees, with his hands clung to the picture. Anna ran over to him and helped him up. Anna, Goji what's wrong? Gojira, she. S she's really my sister. Anna looked at the picture. It was a picture of a family, but the thing that stood out was the dad was human, while the mom was a Godzilla faunus. Then there was a little boy, with a similar look to his father, but was also a Godzilla. Then there was someone holding the boy, it was a girl a few years older than him. She looked almost like her mom, but she had yellow crest on her head. They were all smiling. Gojira, I remember. Her. She. Died that night. Anna, she died. Flashback. A young Gojira was surrounded by fire. He just saw his dad die in front of him. The crazed White Fang member turned to the boy. Gojira was frozen in fear as the masked man approached him. But then his older sister jumped the White Fang member and whacked him with her long tail knocking him down. She quickly ran her younger brother and hugged him. She then put her arm in front of him and growled at the downed man. WFM, you bitch. The man snarled. Astrid. Stay behind me Goji. Her dorsal plates began to glow warring as she shoots her atomic breath at him. The man quickly jumped out of those and shot a ice dust bullet into Astrid's foot, causing her to scream in pain as her legs were frozen in place. The man then grabbed his blade, as swiftly stabbed her in the arm. Gojira watched in horror, he could do nothing but cry. The man kicked her in the chest knocking her down in front of Gojira. Gojira instinctively ran to his sister but he was knocked into the ground. Astrid, Goji, WFM, Uck shut up brat. The man kicked Astrid in the stomach, causing her to wince in pain. The man then named his gun to her head. Goji, Big. S sister. She placed a hand on Gojira's forehead. He began to lose all memory of her at that moment. Astrid, Goji. Please. Live. I love you. She was cut off by a loud bang, as she was shot in the side of the head. The man was about to finish Goji off until he was blasted in the chest. A furious Gojin ran is and pulled at her katana and began to slash at him. She continued to slash at him until he was a bloody mess. And then she blasted him with her atomic breath, leaving nothing but ash. She turned to her dazed and empty feeling son, and they embraced and cried. Flashback over. Gojira, she died. With my dad, the White Fang member shot her in the head, after he killed. How is she alive? Why am I remembering this now? 
Did she get rid of my memories? Gojira caught a familiar scent that put him on alert. Astrid, I see you remember me little brother. Anna and Gojira turn around to see Astrid standing before them. Astrid, so you should remember those humans killed me. Gojira, humans didn't kill you. It was a White Fang member. And how are you even alive? The crystals how? Astrid, Salem. She brought me back, so we can be a family agent. But I assume, you aren't here for that. Gojira and Anna looked nervous, but they quickly shook off their nerves and prepared for battle. Astrid, I see. Well, I'll get you away from these liars. I'll save you. An explosion was heard in the distance. Astrid's crystals start glowing. She summons two small crystals and slams them into Anna and Gojira who then get knocked outside. The two slowly get up on their feet. Gojira's dorsal plates began to glow. Astrid, I would love to stay here with you brother. But I have a city rebuild. She began to be surrounded by large crystals. Then they began to wrap around her. It formed a spiky white crystal mess. It began to levitate in the air. Electricity began to spark from the crystals as it began to go up in the air, causing Gojira to be hit in the chest. Astrid began to fly away in great speed towards Vale. Gojira, damn it, we're too late. Anna, try to use some of the dust. I'll call the others. Anna, got it. She ran back to the dust piles and began to open them up. She placed her hand on the dust crystals, and they all began to lose color as electricity started to spark from her eyes and wings. Gojira began to charge up his atomic breath. He shot up in the air, causing the clouds in the sky to shine blue. After a few minutes, he sees his friends run over to him. Mia, what happened? Maria, we took care of all the bad guys here. Gojira, Astrid got away. She could fucking fly. And of all the fucking times I remember. Mia, remember? Remember what? Maria, she's really your sister? Gojira, yeah. She is. She died when we're kids. She placed her hand on my forehead and I lost all of my memories of her once she died. Maria, that's... that's a Mothra technique. But I guess it makes sense your mom apparently spent a good chunk of her life in the Mothra tribe. Maybe Astrid learned a few things from your mom. Mia. So what now? Gojira, Neo, got anything? Neo, it's probably best you transform and swim over to the docks of Vale. You better hurry too, Roman breached Vale so there should be Grim there now. Gojira, you're not coming? Neo, can't. I need Roman to trust me. He even doesn't take me to any of the special meetings he has with his boss, but I know you can do it Goji. Mia, but what about Maria and I? Maria, yeah. I can't fly that far. Anna? We won't have to. Now that I can transform from using all of that dust, I could teleport us over to the breach. She opened a portal. However it's much larger than it would normally be, and the outer edges were shooting electricity out. Neo walked up to Gojira and gave him a quick peck on the lips. Neo, good luck. Gojira, thanks. We'll need it. The four members of Team Gam held hands and took a deep breath before walking into the portal. Family feud. Over in Vale, teams are WBY. JNPR, CFVY, CDRL as well as some teachers were all trying to hold off the grim that had breached Vale. Team RWBY were dealing with a pack of bow wolves, JNPR a few ursas, CFVY and CDRL two death stalkers. Johnny, where's Goji and his team? Ruby, I slash don't know. Blake, they should have been called back right? Blake yelled as she decapitated a bow wolf. Pyre, they'll be here. I know it. On cue. A large portal opened up, all the grim in the area began to shift their focus over to it and began to charge the portal. It was until blue and yellow lights began to mow down the horde. Some of the grim that started behind fighting the rest of the huntsmen and huntresses in training, started to be attacked by a flying fuanus. Nora. Heck yeah Team Gam is here. Mia began to cut down multiple bow wolves with her scythe as Maria would decapitate the ursas with her daggers as she flies by. Over with Anna and Gojira the two were blasting down Grimm with their energy attacks. Gojira cleared them a path so they can make it over to the other teams. Once they made it over to teams RWBY and JNPR, Gojira was shoulder to shoulder with Ruby who was shooting down Grimm's. Once she finished her turn to her boyfriend and gave him a bone crush crushing hug. Ruby, Goji, where were you? Gojira, it's good to see you too Ruby, and Ozpin send us to a private mission. We failed to do the main objective, but at least we took down a whole section of the White Fang. Yang, 
We're just glad you guys are safe and that you guys came. Now we're almost clear of Grimm. Professor Goodwitch prepared the wall already. Gojira, good one problem done. One more to go. Vice, wait. What do you mean by that? Before Gojira could answer, Maria yells out something. Maria, Astrid is here. Everyone looks up to see Astrid in her crystallized flying form. Just then her crystals on her body began to grow. Her skin began to turn scaly and dark blue. Everyone was blinded by a large white light, that was followed by a loud boom. Once the dust cleared all the teams looked around to see all the grim have turned to dust, but they all look up to see multiple tower-like crystals around Vale. Ruby, W what just happened? Everyone freezes as they hear a loud roar. They turn to see a giant crater on the ocean edge of Vale with many crystals of many colors pulsing and in the middle of the crater was Astrid in her Kaiyu form. Dash. Up on a roof nearby, three people were watching all of this unfold. Mercury, wow. Emerald, she did all that just by transforming. Cinder, Astrid is incredibly powerful, due to being a living incarnation of dust crystals, having God's inner cells, and being reincarnated by Salem. She should have all the power she needs to succeed. Whispers I just hope she doesn't kill her brother. I would like to be with him a bit longer. Emerald. Did you say something Cinder? Cinder. And no of course not. Now I think we should go. This building might turn into crystal soon. Dash. Back with the others. They began to evacuate everyone. While Gojira was trying to explain his plan to his girlfriends. Gojira. You guys go and evacuate all civilians from this location. Anna and I will stop her. Yang, wait what are you going to do? Paya, yes. What about you? How are you guys gonna stop her? Gojira gives them all a quick kiss on the cheek before smirking, and turning to Anna. Gojira, open up a portal, and drop me in the docks, if I want to transform without destroying everything that's how. Anna, I understand. She opened up a portal, and Gojira jumped in letting him jump into the ocean. She then closed the portal and looked back at her friends. Anna, don't worry, I'll help him. A black hole opens up behind her and she jumped backwards into it. As everyone evacuates away from the shore a straggler notices that the water began to rise. The man looks at the ocean to see three rows of spikes heading straight for the shore. Gojira burst out at the surface of the water and let out a loud catching the attention of Astrid. Astrid roared at Gojira and began to shoot green electricity from her shoulder crystals and began to throw building rubble at him. Gojira quickly slammed his tail at the rubble and bit her neck. He started to push her away from Vale. However she returned the favor and bit his shoulder and began to continuously blast him with her orange electricity from her mouth. He squinted in pain and slashed his claws at her jaw. She retaliates by shooting crystals out of the ground at him. He shoots them down but is then shot in the chest causing him to fall over into multiple buildings. He started to pick himself up until he heard something. Astrid, stay down brother. I don't want to hurt you. Her voice was more deeper than before. He wondered on how she spoke to him until he remembered, the language of the Kaiyu. Gojira, no, I'll get back up as many times as possible. I'll stop you even if that means I die. Astrid, you can't be serious. Gojira, I am. I will protect the ones I love, the innocent people of this kingdom. Astrid, humans aren't innocent. They killed me and dad. Gojira, it was the White Fang, and even they were ordered to kill him. Salem had lied to you. She's turning you into a monster. Astrid grabs Gojira by the throat and slams him with her tail causing him to fly back. Astrid, no she isn't. She gave me this power to get you back, now stay down and I'll take you back with me later. Gojira growled and his back began to glow blue. She noticed this as her crystals began to glow as well. The two beams collide, not exploding on contact but instead the two are pushing against each other. Ruby and the others had just finished evacuating everyone away from the shores and put them into bunkers. Paya, I, I didn't know he could turn into that. Blake, does he have what it takes? Wasn't he super tired last time he transformed? Maria, I trust he could do this. He's my king after all. Mia, plus. He transformed recently so now he could easily use this for without almost no issues. Yang. I've never seen him combat before. Ruby. Come on big bro. Beat her scaly butt. Vice. What is that in the sky? In the clouds. There was a large golden sphere. It had a black outline. It looked like a portal made by Anna. However the colors were reversed and almost a hundred times bigger. The clouds turned black, 
as lightning began to rain down from them. Everyone was shocked from what they see, a silhouette come out of the portal. Maria, that's Anna. Yang, what? She's huge. She's even bigger than Gojira. Paya, yeah maybe about 40 meters bigger. Mia, it makes sense Ghidorahs tend to be bigger than Godzilla's. Maria, come on guys. We need to get to the bunkers. They all began to run to the bunkers as Anna landed onto Astrid's back causing her to lose focus and let Gojira's beam overtake hers. Astrid was thrown back making her crash into some of her crystals. Anna landed next to her king showing everyone a clear look on how she looks. With a powder-like texture and a bright golden glow she looked like she was truly was an alien. Gojira dug his feet into the ground as Astrid got back up. Astrid snarled and looked at the other two kaijus before speaking. Astrid, what you guys are doing is in vain. This will be the day Gojira. This will be the day we were waiting for, to grow our own kingdom. Ikoma family wants Sajin, but you would throw it away for these humans. Anna, can't you not see Salem is lying to you? Anna begins to pulse and she shoots Astrid in the chest with three gravity beams. Astrid roared and tries to swipe at her but her hand goes through her. Astrid, what? Gojira, what the? Anna wrapped her necks around Astrid and began to bite down on her body. She then started to deliver multiple electric shocks into her. Astrid screamed in pain and blasted Anna's right head. Making her head release her and screech. Gojira, crap, she's weak to energy attacks. Gojira charged at Astrid who was still being held by Anna. Gojira's body went through Anna and he pushed Astrid down to the ground. Astrid swung her tail at Gojira's legs making him fall sideways. Anna tried to push Astrid away but she was frozen in place when green beams started to come out from her shoulder crystals. She was the thrown back into Gojira making the two fall down. She started to shoot crystals at the two, making a type of dome around them, trapping them in place but it didn't work for Anna as it goes through her. Gojira, she has fucking telekinesis. Damn it. She heals too fast. We need to find a way to stop her. Anna, she can shoot crystals at us, from her body, and the surrounding crystals. Maybe the reason she summons them has to do with her healing. Gojira, so break those and we slow down her healing? Alright. Anna you go and destroy the crystals, I'll keep her attention off you. Anna nodded and flew into the air attempting to destroy the tallest buildings. Gojira roared at his sister and blasted her with his atomic breath. Astrid created a gem-like shield reflecting the beam into the ground. Gojira roars and starts to charge at her. She charges as well. The two collided with Gojira pushing her throat back, and Astrid biting his neck, causing blood to spill. The two kept pushing each other, with the two constantly slashing and biting at each other. Gojira began to charge up. Astrid noticed this and started to charge up as well. The two released their beams point blank at each other resulting in a large explosion. From Anna's perspective she was halfway though with destroying the crystals. She looks at the large cloud of dust that appeared from the explosion only to see flashes of blue and orange. Anna, I'm almost done Goji. You'll have the upper hand soon. Anna wrapped her tails around a crystal pillar and took it down. Then there was another explosion, knocking away all the dust revealing Astrid with her left shoulder crystal cracked and Gojira with multiple fresh scars on his face and neck. Gojira huffs and puffs. It's clear he's tired. He's waiting for Astrid's powers to go down. However she almost seems perfectly fine. Astrid, this is my last warning. Just give up. You can't beat me little brother. Gojira. You don't get it do you? I won't stop till I stop you, till everyone is safe. And till I bring you back with me. Astrid, you're wasting your time. She goes to blast him, but she's hit by Anna who grabbed her neck with her tails. Anna pulled Astrid making her fall sideways. As she falls Astrid shoots a powerful energy beam at Anna's back causing the Ghidorah to scream to pain and fall to the ground. Gojira went over to Anna, whose back is currently smoking from the blast as golden blood pours for her wound. Gojira grits his teeth and picks up his queen before walking her over near the bunkers, as he realizes that she may transform due to massive wound. Anna raised her right head to speak to Gojira. Anna, Gojira. The crystals. I destroyed them, so. She should be weaker, or at least manageable now. Gojira, I'm gonna do something dangerous. I want you to teleport us into the ocean. Anna, what are you gonna do? Gojira doesn't answer. Instead gives her a small smile and, licks her face before putting her down. He nods and begins to go back to Astrid who's starting to get back up. Astrid sees Gojira heading towards her, she roars two of the crystals to shock him, 
but nothing happened she looked around to see all of Crystal's she had have been destroyed. She growls in frustration and begins to shoot beams at Gojira, only for him to walk through the pain and blasting her with his atomic breath. She was forced to go backwards as the blast kept pushing her. Once he took a deep breath to ready another beam she started to charge at him, only for his second blast to hit her agent. He bit her neck and tossed her away, making her land on her cracked shoulder crystal. Then the unthinkable happened, it shattered. Her remaining shoulder crystal and head crest began to glow a dim red. Astrid gave a bursting roar that clearly showed pain. Gojira so badly wanted to apologize, but he couldn't. He only had one thing to do. Win. She tried to use her remaining energy to shoot him down. She began to charge up another blast until Gojira swung his tail at her remaining shoulder crystal. It didn't shatter, but it let out a loud crack. Astrid released her beam and blasted him. Gojira was able to take it. However, it was clear he can't take it much longer, as his right arm is practically drenched in blood. Astrid blinded in rage from all her pain scratched her brother in the right eye. Gojira clenched his face with his remaining arm, as now he was blinded by one eye. Gojira kept his eye shut and began to ready another blast. His back began to glow brighter. Astrid panicked and began to charge up herself. Gojira began to charge at her as his atomic breath was already smoking out of his mouth. Astrid began to spark, and started to charge at him too, Anna used all of remaining energy to teleport them away, from Beacon Academy, Ospin, Ironwood, and Professor Goodwitch, all see as, what the public will know them as soon, Godzilla and the mutant disappeared from the coast, and instead in the ocean a large orange and blue explosion is seen, Ironwood, what happened, Ospin, it seems they were teleported, Glinder, who won, Ospin, isn't obvious, new ally, there he was. Gojira was currently swimming through the ocean, while pulling his unconscious sister back with him. He finally made it onto the docks. Multiple bullets landed. Team RWBY, JNPR, and the rest of GAM, came out of the bullets and ran towards Gojira carrying his unconscious sister. They all noticed many things. First Astrid was heavily injured, she was bleeding from her mouth and chest. She lost her crystals and her crest. Then Gojira. One of his arms was extremely scared and burned but was also slowly being consumed by charcoal scales. His armor was almost completely gone at this point, so he just has his school uniform on, but his shirt was completely ripped apart. His scar on his chest had luckily stayed intact, as well as his eye had healed, but his head was still bleeding. He continued to walk over to them until his body started to lose balance. RWBY, Goji. Team RWBY ran to his side and helped him up. Johnny and Ren wrapped his arms around their shoulders and began to walk him over to a bullhead. With Ospin and Glinder both waiting inside. Gojira, W wait dot take Astrid with me. Everyone looked at Gojira shocked, and Vice didn't want to allow it. Vice, she hurt you. She destroyed so much of the water side of Vale. So why do you want her here? She should be in prison. Gojira, she's Ruby, she's his sister. Yang, ah, uh, what are you talking about? We're his sisters. Ruby, his stepsisters. She's his real sister. Remember what she said to him when she attacked us? Vice. I thought she was lying though. Maria. No, she was telling the truth. Gojira, please, help her, and take her with me. I remember her. When I was a kid she wiped my memories of her. Blake. Really? Then why don't I remember her? Gojira, we'll ask her later. Just please let's help her. She's the only family I have left. Everyone reluctantly agreed and began to put the two on the bullard with the professors and team Gam. Gojira lies next to Astrid on a stretcher, and grabbed her hand. He then felt Astrid's hand grip onto his, as if it was an instinct. Gojira gave a small smile before closing his eyes and drifting to sleep. Time skip. Gojira's eyes began to open. He blinked his eyes a few times before adjusting to the darkness of the room. He sat up and began to scan the room, he then saw a second bed next to him, he examined the bed to see who was sleeping in it, he instantly realized who I was when he saw a tail with crystals on the end of it sticking out of the side of the bed, he smiles knowing that he was able to successfully able to bring her back, however, he was still a bit worried that her memory is still altered, he scratched the back of his head, but when he raised he noticed his right arm was much more, more scaly, it looked just like his Godzilla arm, except he has an extra finger, and the scales go up to his shoulder, he got up from his bed, as it seemed he wasn't connected to anything, 
It was like he was just left to rest. Gojira, damn how long have I been asleep? He stands up and walks up to the window to see the dark sky, and the bright shattered moon. He then walked over to the table next to the window and looked through a bag that had his name on it. It had some of his casual clothes, as well as his scroll. He quickly checked the time to see it was 10 p.m. He checked the date to see he's been asleep for two days. Meaning the vital tournament is close. He then heard groaning coming from Astrid's bed. He started to have a small panic attack, and wasn't sure on how to handle this. Astrid began to slowly sit up. She looked around the room. And when her and Gojira's eyes met they both froze in place, wondering who was gonna move first, and what the other might do. Gojira then noticed something about her eyes. They were no longer red. Instead they were the same shade of orange as his eyes. Gojira. Hey sis. Astrid was sorta of taken back from him calling her sis, and it seemed real as well. Astrid, why yes? Gojira, this might be bad, but I'll ask her anyway. Who killed you? Astrid's eyes widen. Astrid, it. It was the White Fang. I remember now. It wasn't a human. I died and Salem brought me back, and altered my memories so I would hate humanity. End of block 1.